It's 8 o'clock on today. Coming up, deadly storms. Overnight destructive winds, torrential downpours, and damaging hail slamming the East Coast and impacting travel across the country as the South continues to battle extreme heat. Al has your full forecast. Then, domino effect. The touching story of two families brought together by one heart. A domino transplant is when one patient is both a recipient of a transplant and then also becomes the donor for another transplant. We've got a look at the groundbreaking new surgery that saved these babies' lives and how these domino donors are paving the way for other patients. And cover story. We're taking a look at the best album covers of all time. So, who made the list and who got snubbed? Carson's got it all in Pop Start today, Tuesday, August 8th, 2023. Edward Friends in Huntington, Pennsylvania. From Glen Allen, Illinois. First time in New York. Happy 19th birthday to my son Jay. Watching in Laredo, Texas. Visiting from Rockford, Illinois. Burke, Virginia. And Vicksburg, Michigan. Grandpa. It came back for his 90th birthday. From Monroeville, Alabama. On a bucket list trip with my mom. Today's grandma's big day. She's turning 88. I'm 88. Oh, that's cool. 88. Oh, that is cool. Special birthday. That's a birthday. We're back with a story that we're so excited to share this morning on the on the gift of life that an, an, an yeah, I know it's very exciting. It's very exciting. The gift of life that an anonymous organ donor and their family so selflessly gave to save not one, but two little babies. They were part of the world's first domino heart transplant in infants at New York Presbyterian Hospital. We are going to meet these precious babies and their parents in just a moment. But first, how one heart became gold for these two families. We found out I was pregnant for the first time. It was so exciting. We were just overjoyed. Samantha and Andre Civil of Roosevelt, New Jersey were college sweethearts. Sam, a teacher, and Andre, a police officer, were preparing for the birth of their first daughter, Brooklyn, when at a routine anatomy scan, doctors noticed something wrong with the baby's heart. It was very hard. You just like don't imagine that when you find out that you're pregnant. Baby Brooklyn had an extremely rare condition. Instead of two heart valves pumping blood to the rest of the body, she only had one. The civils learned that after Brooklyn's birth, she would need a partial heart transplant to survive. It was terrifying. Um, they gave us a lot of information that we didn't quite understand. And one state away in Massapequa, New York, Nicole, herself a nurse, and James Scats were doting parents with their newborn baby girl, Mia, when at 10 days old, Nicole noticed something off with her daughter. She did this like fast breathing. I saw it and I couldn't unsee it. I was taking her to doctor after doctor and everyone kept telling me that she was fine. Call it a mother's intuition, but Nicole knew something was not fine, and soon her fears were confirmed. They realized that she had cardiomyopathy and was in heart failure. The scats were told Mia would also need a heart transplant to survive. Each baby found their way into the care of New York Presbyterian Morgan Stanley Children's Hospital, where they were both in a race against time for a new heart. Having days where you like feel like it's never going to come, it's the hardest part. Seven months into the agonizing wait, the Scats family got the call they had been waiting for. Timing was actually very serendipitous. I had received a donor offer for Mia. That was about two in the morning. I was sleeping. Nicole grabs me and she's like, James, James, Dr. Lee's on the phone. We found the donor. But in an incredible twist, the Civil family also got a call. The next morning, we reviewed Brooklyn's case. I said, well, I'm doing a heart transplant tonight, and Mia's valves actually work perfectly. Maybe we should do this as a domino. A heart domino had never been done before in babies. A domino transplant is when one patient is both a recipient of a transplant and then also becomes the donor for another transplant. So Mia would get a heart transplant, enabling her to donate the working valves from her old heart to Brooklyn. 
the SCATs did not hesitate to offer Mia's valves to Brooklyn. And then a few hours later, we were on the turnpike heading up north, and she was in surgery. After nine grueling hours, the medical team had great news. Both surgeries were a success. The moment they told us that the heart was implanted in her and was working well, I don't think there was really anything that can describe it. Soon, the families were able to meet. Words can't explain how much <laughs> no, we uh, appreciate so you guys. And two weeks later, both Mia and Brooklyn were headed home. Mia with a new heart and Brooklyn with a part of Mia's. You think about what the Scots did for us. They got such incredible news and they were able to think of somebody else in that moment. One of the nurses said that Brooklyn will always have a piece of Mia's heart. It makes it feel like we waited so long for a reason. My goodness. So joining us now, we have Nicole and James Katz along with baby Mia, who has been talking all morning. <laughs> We've got Samantha and Andre Civil here with baby Brooklyn. And also joining us, we have Dr. Mark Richmond from New York Presbyterian Morgan Stanley Children's Hospital. Welcome to all of you. Welcome. And thank you guys for thank coming you. in this morning. So is this the first time you guys have been reunited in a while then? Yes. Yep. Yeah. yeah. How does it feel? I feel like you guys obviously are forever family, forever linked. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's... It's, it's amazing. I, I feel like, you know, it's an honor to be in the same space with people who've been through a similar struggle. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's amazing seeing them again. Mm -hmm. uh, Nicole, James, was there any, any hesitation? And you as well. I didn't mean to leave you out there. <laughs> Nicole, James, Mia, was there any hesitation when the doctor said, you know what, we'd like to use part of Mia's heart to, to help another child? Mm. Uh, no, there was no, no hesitation was, at all. Never. Um, we had waited so long for that gift, so to be able to give it to somebody else was just, it made the moment that much, that much more special. Dr. Richmond, I've learned so much. This is the first time a domino heart transplant had ever been done in babies. Can you explain why this is such, really an important medical breakthrough? Yeah, the, the uh, valve transplant part, using the valves from Mia uh, to give to Brooklyn, really changes um, the treatment for children with severe valve disease. Uh, normally that, that life is multiple open heart surgeries. As they get older. Uh, as, as they, they get older yeah. because the valves don't grow with them. Mm -hmm. But now with, with freshly transplanted valves, uh, they should grow with, with Brooklyn and in the future really save these children from multiple, multiple surgeries. Here's, wow. here's the thing, Samantha, Andre, when, when you get that call, after you've already gotten the call, they call and they say, we want to try something on Brooklyn that we've never tried before. Mm -hmm. what, what did you think in that moment? Yeah, at first we were kind of overwhelmed, like absolutely Whoa. not. Um, but once we talked to her cardiologist and her oh, yeah. previous um, surgeon, we had so much trust in them and we knew that if they were saying that this was the right thing to do, um, you know, we should just go for it. And, mm -hmm. and Mia's 11 months now, right? Yeah, and yes. Brooklyn is how old? Yeah, uh, she's almost six months. Almost six months, and how is she doing? She's doing well. We clearly, she, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you could see she has Full quite the personality energy. on yeah. her. But yeah. yes, she's doing really well. We've been home for almost three months now, or just about three months post transplant, and she's just thriving at home. So we're happy. Yeah. Very happy. And how's so, Brooklyn? Yeah, same. She's doing amazing. I mean, the, the reality is, is, as we sit here and have this conversation, we, we wouldn't be here had it not been for the, the heartbreaking loss mm -hmm. um, of, a, of another family uh, who, lost, who lost a little one. What would you say uh, to, to that family who sacrificed that right. original heart for this, this domino effect? Mm -hmm. They're probably the strongest people that we ever known. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think uh, they're just remarkable that faced with such like a serious time where they lost something and uh, to give to someone else is just unbelievable. Very grateful, mm -hmm. um, very selfless and to be able to choose life in a time of such darkness is heroic. Yeah. And Unreal. two lives now. We have first birthdays coming up <laughs> pretty soon. <laughs> yes. Any jubilees planned? <laughs> yes. I know, we have a lot to celebrate. We didn't know what the first birthday would look like but this is a best case scenario. We're home, we're doing well, so. By the way, we've got, we've got a, a shot. I think we have a shot of uh, your, ex there they are. Look at there they are. They're out on the plaza to show their support for Mia and, and for Brooklyn. 
beautiful. Just, are you clapping too? That's right. She started clapping too. God bless you guys. Thank you all for Thank coming in. Keep us posted and come back. We'll have to have a first birthday party. Can we have a birthday party? Yes. Smucker's show. I know. I'm just, I'm not that. I'm not that far from. It. That's not true. <laughs> What's your name? Margaret O'Leary. Well, so and is you all your family here? Uh -huh. Yes. Wow. We guys all guys all from. Well, I'm from Ireland originally. Oh my God. Nice. 88 wow. on 88. Well, Isn't yeah. that special? Canada and America. All right. There you, you saved the best for last. <laughs> America is the best. Country. Yeah. Yes. There you go. I love it. There we go. Happy birthday. Great folks birthday. out here on the plaza. Happy birthday. Hey, by the way, this young lady. 83 as of yesterday. You uh, said I, I we, we talked on when you were 75? Yes. Well, what's your name? And Elaine. Elaine, thank you. Happy birthday. Thank you. And did you know it's National Melvin Day? Yeah. Yeah. My Hi, Craig. gosh. Hi, Craig. Are you guys from South Carolina? Yes, sir. Oh, God's country. Uh, God's it's country. National Melvin. Thank you. That's thank right. Celebrate it. What's your name? Stella. All Stella. right. Wow, you were just Melvin. <laughs> That's fantastic. Wow. I love that. What was your name again? Elaine. 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 Happy birthday. Elaine. 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 Happy National Melvin Day. Thank you. I Thank love you. That. What do we do on National Melvin we, Day? We celebrate with bourbon, of oh, course. Bourbon. Uh -huh. <laughs> I wonder what a Melvin is. <laughs> Jill's Steals and Deals is sponsored by Wells Fargo Credit Cards. Credit cards made for the way you live. That's real life ready. When the voice guy says your name, you have made it. And I'm real life ready. <laughs> it is 8.36. We are back with a special batch of sizzling summer steals and deals with much of the country feeling the heat. All this month, we are bringing you even hotter bargains. So our friend, lifestyle and commerce contributor, Jill Martin Brooks, is here to kick off two days of blowout deals. And by the way, of course, you can find all of them by scanning the QR code right over here. So glad to, I haven't had a chance to say hi. Oh, I love you. Mwah. How are you? I'm good. We have some good deals today. I mean, and, good discounts. And, and everyone's talking about fall, and I just want to say if I've learned anything over the last month, yes. let's live in the moment. Amen. We still have August, so we're bringing you a month of steel. I say deals. yes. Okay. okay. So let's start. And since it's Melvin Day, this is his favorite <laughs> favorite segment. Okay. Yeah. So let's start with the Trust MD Summer Serum and SPF 30 Face Cream Duo. Now, mm. this is if you really just want to get rid of everything in your beauty cabinet okay. and refresh. And Steals and Deals gives you that ability mm -hmm. because this is so great. It's a summer serum and the rejuvenating face cream, which has SPF for sun protection. Mm. It's also year-round, though. They have vitamin C to help with things like firming and brightening, and plant-based stem cells help to rejuvenate damaged cells, plus hyaluronic acid, 
COVID, which you know is helpful for uh, to help firms. So the retail is okay. 238. Ooh. The deal for the duo okay. is 34. And read the what? reviews on this product: 86% off. So I this swear is by serums really... this summer. I feel like they've been a game changer for my skin. And it's also great to have a routine, like mm -hmm. just to have something that you know what you're doing and try it out. And this is a great way to do it. Okay. okay. What about this? This is always a giant hit. And what's great about this is it comes in a box. Okay. You get, oh, you get three the set. pairs. Yep. It's the Velvet Eyewear Sunglass Style Box Set. Morning, these sell out quickly. These so are if cute. you like it, the retail 139. Let me see. Yeah, that's yep. a totally different look for you. It so is. There used to be a whole thing like, what's your face? Pick your sunglasses. I just who cares? No, who cares? Just pick what you like. Yeah. Wear them. Leave a pair on the car. Yeah, bring up. a pair to the beach. You just, it's nice to have a pair everywhere. So if you you're get a like set us. of three. Jill? You get a set of three, and it comes in the box. So great, giftable, and you get the pouches. So these are nine cute. options on today.com. The re the deal price is thirty nine dollars. That's seventy two percent off. Yeah. Oh, look at Do you like that. these. Hundred percent UV protection. You know what? what? Each one of those brings out a different part of your Why personality. Not? Like Play a the other bit. one was cool. You're I say cool. Yes. You're sassy. All right, done. Okay, this. Okay. What did what the mushroom this? say to the girl who wouldn't go on a date with him? <laughs> what did they say? I'm a fun guy. Ah, I get it. So the shroom Ooh, that's good. fan. No one laughed. The shroom no, fan. No, I get it. We had to think, one laugh. We had to think about the it. The shroom <laughs> fan, portable fan. The retail forty nine ninety nine. Nice. So up to ten hours of cooling on a two hour charge. It comes with the charging cord and the lanyard. Okay. So you carry it around. You could go hiking with it. I mean, this is a game this changer. This is a game changer. My mom's always hot. So like, okay. and it's a mushroom. Who doesn't love a mushroom? <laughs> okay. The retail forty nine ninety nine. The deal six. Dollars. Oh, 68% off. worth it. Yeah, and really okay. does feel cool. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, this is a set of two, always sells out. The Corksicle Classic mm -hmm. or Slim Can Cooler set of two. This is an exclusive pack for Steels and Deals. Okay. Um, the brand says it's vacuum insulated stainless steel and eliminates condensation, which keep, keeps your hands from getting too cold. Okay. This is a very well known brand. Keeps it's drinks good. chilled for up to three hours. Great for a road trip. It works. Look up the, yes, and yeah. look up the reviews on this. So, again, you get uh, a set. The retail is fifty two ninety to fifty five ninety. The set is twenty six. Okay. So that's up to fifty four percent off. That's nice. great. Okay. Nice. Okay. Kit and a summer essential. Short tees tanks and pullovers. Mm -hmm. Don't have enough time to show you everything, but okay. feel the material. Nice. It's a blend, has a spandex, These won't nice. wrinkle. It's a pull-on short, easy breezy. There's just a lot of different items that are sort of moisture wicking to get you through the summer okay. in style, but also basic. Range of sizes, the retail 49 to 115, the deal price 24 to 57, up to 51% off. All right, like now that. for all of the trendy people playing pickleball, mm -hmm. wow your pickleball friends with your new paddle. Because this is the CrossNet Elite Pickleball Paddle, okay. the retail $49.99. This is a hobby I wanna, are you in? I've done it, you know, we did it with the team. Oh, right. And you it's did. really fun. And it's a lot easier, I feel like, on your arms, and you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just a little bit easier to this do. This is something I, I actually wanna get into. Yeah. So this is $49.99. The brand says the paddle is made of high, durable fiberglass and a sturdy nice. polymer core. The deal price, you get one paddle is 25. Okay. And that's 50% off. That's a good deal. Yeah, and also, I mean, look at the grip on this. That's what I'm saying. This is a quality one. It has a great grip. I've looked them up for the holidays for folks. In okay. fact, now's the time to get it. Yeah. All right. Stack up on it. Should them. we run through one more time? Yes. yes okay. Yes. Okay. Quickly, the Trust MD Serum and SPF 30 Face Cream Duo, the Velvet Eyewear Style Box, the Shroom Fan, the Corksicle Can Cooler Set, the Kit and Ace Summer Essentials, and the CrossNet Elite Pickleball Paddle. I love it. Again, just scan that QR code or head to today.com slash deals to find these products and even more exclusive. And a reminder, today makes a commission on purchases through our links. And Jill, we're going to see you again tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow, the next day, the all next day. The, all the days. Get rid of me.
And welcome back this morning on Today's Table Series. We are leaning into the heat, firing up that grill for some delicious sandwiches. Joining us, Matt Abdu, the executive chef and owner of Pig Beach Barbecue, locations here in New York, West Palm Beach, and in two weeks, Louisville. Uh, we Ready. were all Whoa. recently at your place here in Astoria, Queens, uh, me and some of the crew, and had such a great time. Thank you. Uh, the work that Fun you do space. and your staff is incredible. Uh, today, we're going to take a little bit of that Pig Beach right. vibe for people watching to make a delicious um, summer steak sandwich. That's where right. are we starting with that? So we're starting with a chimichurri, basically translating into hodgepodge. It's a collection of usually herbs and spices and garlic and onion. So in our bowl here, we have some chopped parsley. And when you say chimichurri, in. I immediately think the steak's going to be either a skirt or flank. Yes. Something yeah. in that world. But you can put it on anything. But it works Works really, really well of the flavors of like skirt or flank are those sort of like thin, charry, fatty kind of meats. Yep. Um, so in our bowl we have chopped parsley and mint. To that, we're just going to add our quick ingredients. We got some shallots, some garlic, a little bit of chili flake. You can. I add cilantro add, to mine. You can absolutely put cilantro. I love you can put cilantro. basil. You can really put whatever in it. Yep. That's the beauty of this. Um, um, as much chili flake as you want, however spicy or hot you want it. Some gray, uh, dried oregano ground pepper. black pepper, salt. You know all the guys. Some yep. lemon zest, and then to that we're going to add lemon juice olive oil, and red wine vinegar. And Carson, if you don't mind, give that a mix for me. Ooh. Now, the great thing about this is that it'll keep in your fridge, and don't be worried. If the color starts to change a little bit on you, it's all right. It's not going to stay super bright green for too long. And you don't need to blend this. You, can you don't just, need to blend it. Just, just I like always it blend is, it. I guess you don't have to. You can. You can make like a puree out of it, whatever you want. But right there is absolutely perfect. What's the minimum time this is going to sit in the bag with the steak for um, it to ideally, realize it? Ideally, for a skirt steak or flank steak, that's something that's really, really thin, just about an hour is okay. all we're going to need. So what we're going to do is we're going to reserve half of that chimichurri, yep. pour the other half right into our zip Block bag, and then we're going to refrigerate this for an hour to overnight so that all those flavors really just get into that steak and then just let it marinate just like that. I so, love this. next step, we're going to make a Dijon A sort of thing here. Okay. So, in our bowl, we got a little bit of mayonnaise, some stone ground spicy brown mustard, again, some more garlic, yep. sugar. Sugar is just going to help kind of round out that mayonnaise and all mm -hmm. that Dijonese. Ground black pepper, salt, pepper. salt lemon. Sugar. Zest, Zest and lemon juice. Again, this mm -hmm. is just another condiment. Put this in your fridge. This will keep for a really great long time. Honestly, if you just didn't want to deal with this part, what, what could you, you just, use? You can put plain old mayonnaise on it. You just do mayonnaise and yep. mustard if you want. But this really helps round out all those incredible yeah. flavors in that sandwich. So okay. now we have our skirt steak over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to take some of our skirt steak, get our grill hook set up to hot, hot cooking on one side yep. and cooler heat on the other. It's called zone cooking. Very important step in grilling. Okay. And why I love that is because it gives you the ability to finish cooking that steak without burning it or over charring it. Cool. So next, we're going to come over. We're going to let our steak rest mm. on our cutting board. We want to slice our skirt steak Onions. against the grain. Now, you can mm. see Onions on this particular cut of meat, the lines kind of go up and down like this. Right. So when we slice it, we want to slice against the grain, Hold going the other way oh. so that the meat oh, doesn't look like the lines that are in there. How good is that, guys? This um, is Jim Curry. By the way, wrong. Matt, uh, Jacob, Recently, I thought you didn't eat meat. He, he does I'm back, meat. baby. Back. Does oh, there it is. You got it to the other side, baby. There it is. Thank you, Matt. Here we I go. Back into a carnival. Oh my this God! Come, amazing. All right, we got about 45 seconds. 45 Let's seconds. So, grilled ciabatta bread. If you don't have ciabatta bread, any sort of your favorite hoagie roll, the hamburger bun, whatever you want. It's really Make the good. sandwich is delicious. We're gonna take all this grilled chimichurri marinade, skirt steak, pile it up nice and high on our bread. We got some borson oh cheese, caramelized onions. What kind of cheese is that? It's borson cheese. It's like that garlic herb sort of spreadable cheese. Some of that Dijon. Oh, yeah. on the top, oh. and then we're going to top it off with more of that chimichurri that we reserved. Oh. Get that nice That's sauce. That's why you saved it. Wow. And then Spice. pile it up high with a some arugula. arugula. Nice little it pepper is a vegetable. Yeah, peppery, delicious. And Amazing. there you have it. Cut that up for your friends. Matt, after you learn this. Now another classic Matt, grilled after. sandwich oh, in the baby. third hour. You want to buy all these How's that meat, Jacob? The Go to today.com slash today table. And another reminder, today earns a commission from the purchases through our links.
The City Music Series on today is proudly presented to you by City. We are back with rising country star Bailey Zimmerman, and don't take our word for it. Forbes called him one of the most exciting new names in the music yeah. industry. Bailey's hit Rock in a Hard Place spent six weeks at number one on the Billboard Country Airplay chart, earned him a spot in the top 10 of Billboard's Hot 100, and his highly anticipated LP religiously, the album, it is out now. Let's go. All right. Yeah. Let's hear Put it. on some wow. pants and here let's you are. Let's it, Bailey. All right, let's get to go it. Go get it, Bailey. Yeah, let's do it. I went looking at pictures I didn't want to see. They brought back memories. You look happy, I guess. Got the life that you wanted, but it ain't with me. You would think by now that I wouldn't care. It's been a couple years, and yeah, I've had my share of other broken aparts, but I only shed real tears over hearts. And now I'm in this cold, bright light. And this don't even feel like mine Cause I don't have the only woman who believed in me religiously And now I'm in the back of the church Praying just to stop the hurt Cause I don't have the only woman who was there for me religiously Remember watching you play me our song on guitar I thought I'd marry you like I'm happier now But all of my friends know that ain't the truth And lately life's been good to me Mama's healthy and I'm helping out the whole family A lot of people know my name I made a little change But that don't mean nothing Cause now I'm in this cold dry life And this don't even feel like life Now I'm in this cold, bright light And this don't even feel like life Cause I don't have the only woman who believed in me religiously And now I'm in the back of the church Begging God just to stop the hurt The album is out it's right great. now. Great. Stick it's around. Great. Bailey's actually going to do another song for us coming nice. up in the third hour. It's all happens, Bailey. To your band. But first, the local news, weather, and these messages. I love it. This morning on the third hour of today, tackling a teacher shortage. Schools are scrambling to find and keep educators as students head back to class. What's behind the troubling trend? Then, pumpkin spice is back. Good grief. Signature fall flavor making its return in the middle of summer. Why? Plus, a sisterhood of sport. Women's flag football becoming more and more popular. All right, Amazing. question. Do you think I have a, a future in flag football? A little future? <laughs> you have abilities. <laughs> Our alley love gearing up for the game. And later, from the bear to, and just like that, even Outlander, how you can travel the destinations in your favorite TV shows. Today, 
Tuesday, August 8th, 2023. Live from Studio 1A in Rockefeller Plaza, this is the third hour of today. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the third hour of today. You're not seeing things. Uh, We're all I mean, here. Al, Chanel, Craig. Um, you guys both had a morning. nice long weekend. Welcome yeah. back. Good yeah. morning. Yeah. And you had a, you were in Martha's Vineyard. I was in Martha's Vineyard. I haven't been in over 20 years. I forgot how beautiful it is. It's yeah. just a lovely time. Deborah, that's the Edgar Town Lighthouse. Uh, went there because uh, we've got a film. Uh, this is the the view from the Edgar Town Lighthouse. You can climb wow. up to the top of it, wow. and it's just gorgeous. Is that your? And, did you film that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was the beautiful. Camera. Was the camera. That new knee of yours is serving you well. It's doing okay. <laughs> it's doing okay. And then we uh, we had a film in the uh, Martha's Vineyard African American Film Festival called uh, Gaining Ground: The Fight for Black Land, all about the fact that in the 1920s black farmers had over 20 million acres of land, yep. and now it's down to less than a million. Mm. So, uh, the, it's an important so we, story. Yeah, it's well. received well. Yeah, it, it yeah. Really that's quite was. the film festival too. By the way, I've heard. Yeah, it's lovely. I mean, they had a great. We had a great time. I love that. Right. Where, where I that? had my bachelorette party in Martha's Vineyard. Really? Oh. I didn't know that. Did, yeah. did you lose your luggage there? <laughs> um, I did not. I carried on. Hashtag too soon. Hashtag carry on. What okay, noise. I know, Where I know. So, uh, so I had a chance to go. You were there for a quick second in Birmingham, Alabama. So every year, the National Association of Black Journalists, they have a conference. You network, you fellowship, sure. you have panels and workshops. Um, so this year was held in Birmingham. And very fittingly, um, I had the chance to interview um, one of the survivors of the 1963 bombing of Birmingham 16th oh. Street Baptist Church. Um, Janice Wesley Kelsey was also there. Um, they're both there in yellow. I'm the survivor. Her name is Sarah Collins Rudolph. For so long, we've heard about the four little girls who right. were killed in that bombing. Well, there was a fifth little girl, mm -hmm. and after decades, she's finally decided uh, to share her story. So it was a powerful, mm -hmm. a powerful interview um, with both of those women. So we're going to try to have more on that coming up a little oh, later. Terrific. A really good weekend. Uh, you're st you're clearly still in summer. Oh yeah, with that, with that beach trip. But <laughs> in some parts of the country, in fact, my nephews. I just got a picture. The from, pictures. My nephews are going back to school today. <laughs> That's Lots of kids going back I to know. school. I, I would get people would comment on social media like, "Your kids are still in school at the end of June." It's like, yes, but they're also right. not starting again until right. September. Right. And, to and, and we're that. talking about it this morning because yet this year, so many classrooms are looking a little different as districts all over the country are struggling to fill teacher vacancies. We've talked about this, but this year it's worse than ever. So let's go to NBC's Maggie Vespa. She joins us from Chicago with a closer look. Maggie, good morning. Hey guys, good morning. Yeah, a little on the ground perspective here outside Chase Elementary in Chicago. We just had a teacher walk by headed into this building. She asked why we were here. We told her and she went, you know what? I've been teaching for 23 years and she goes, it's been getting harder every year. And then she pointed at us and she said, there is a reason for that shortage here in Illinois. It's actually so bad. The governor is proposing a three year pilot program to try to recruit and retain new teachers. I mean, suffice it to say it is a serious problem playing out in districts across the country country. As students head back to school for the start of another year, many districts nationwide are scrambling to find qualified teachers for every classroom. Some 51,000 teachers quit in May of this year, impacting kids and their families. He got a letter from the school saying that he doesn't have a teacher, that he may have one before school starts. Teachers qualified in subjects like science, math, and special ed are in especially short supply. We're losing 300,000 teachers a year, and we're not getting enough people coming into the profession. Concerns over school safety are a factor, along with post-pandemic burnout. Teacher pay has also stagnated, while the cost of a four-year degree has skyrocketed. Every teacher I know is working two to three jobs. We're doing DoorDash, we're doing Uber, we're doing waitressing. In states like Florida, some teachers say political battles over education have become too much. I quit my teaching job because of the banning of books, the low pay, the treatment of LGBTQ young people, staff and adults, the whitewashing of black history in America. For dedicated professionals, it's often a difficult and emotional choice. It killed me to leave my kids. Those are my kids. Administrators are looking for solutions. And then the temperature going down. Including so-called grow your own programs that pay apprentice teachers and recruit candidates who might not have a traditional teaching background. Now we're going to support you by paying you while you're training. You're an employee from day one, so you're, the loyalty is built in. 
In Maryland, grant money allows aides and support staff at this school for special needs kids to attend college and become educators. We could go to college full time and get a degree fully paid for, tuition, books, all that good stuff and really in my dream field, which is special education. We New pathways Maryland, into the profession at a moment that requires creative solutions. And speaking of being creative, it turns out more and more districts across the country guys are pivoting to four day school weeks. In fact, one study shows that is now the new normal in 850 districts across the country. That's up from 650 in 2020. And experts say, you know, among the pros, it definitely cuts costs. Attendance goes up and as does morale. But they say a big con is that a lot of studies show it contributes to learning loss among students, particularly in English and math. But we talked about this earlier in the show. A lot of districts, a lot of administrators say, hey, they have to change something. The status quo isn't working. And these teacher shortages, they say, are proof of that. Mm. Guys. All right, it's a, it's a national crisis. Yeah. How about pay, national... them more, pay them more and, and pay some them some, some respect? Just pay yeah. them pay more and pay them respect. respect. That's yeah, that's... That'll go a long way. All right, thank, thank you, you Maggie. Maggie. All right, so it may uh, certainly feel like summer, but nothing says fall like back to school. And now there's another sure sign the new season is coming because, Al, Pumpkin spice, it's back. Why? And here with all the buzz is NBC News anchor Joe Fryer. You brought props it's this prop. morning. You know what? I just I have two on. words for you. Pumpkin everything. Al. <laughs> oh, very <laughs> nice. Pumpkin this is everything. Very nice. Got that at home goods. I Pumpkin bought it, everything. Bought it last wow, night. Look at that. That's great. Great. They're oh. already <laughs> decked out. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. But what I appreciate the gift. Pumpkin? Like it or not, and, the gift. and I think we know for Al, it is a nod. Pumpkin spice is already coming back. There are reports that <laughs> Starbucks is going to bring the PSL back earlier, and many other companies PSL. are jumping on the early fall bandwagon. <laughs> PSL. Even though summer temps are blistering, nationwide an autumn trend is already brewing. The return of the pumpkin spice latte. First one of the season, let's try it out. The seasonal fall drink falling earlier on the calendar, sparking that yearly debate. Iced pumpkin spice latte. No, what? no, she's asking me for pumpkin. It's Ever? August. Pumpkin spice is hitting the stores already. I'm out. Experts say pumpkin flavored products generate $500 million yearly in the U.S., which may explain why some companies seemingly start fall earlier and earlier every year. FYI, the PSL, Starbucks Pumpkin Spice Latte, generates hundreds of millions in sales alone. When the pumpkin spice latte arrives, you know it's fall time period and there's something nostalgic about fall. Peter Dukes created the iconic PSL, the coffee giant's top seasonal beverage, in 2003, making this the 20th anniversary. Maybe some people want to hold on to summer a little bit longer. Uh, they're not quite ready for, for fall. Food blogger Marky Devo says the Starbucks fall menu could drop as early as August 24th, six days earlier than last year. And it's not the only company jumping on the fall bandwagon. Duncan exclusively tells NBC News the launch date for its fall menu is next Wednesday, August 16th. Krispy Kreme and Whole Foods are introducing their own pumpkin spice products in early August, along with 7-Eleven, which I visited last night. You know, it's a scam, right? What? Pumpkin spice latte. No pumpkin in it, just pumpkin flavor. Mm. The debate over pumpkin spice, even spicing up the banter here at Today. I hate pumpkin spice latte. What don't there's you no like about it? Yeah. Okay, there's no pumpkin in it. It's no. chemicals, it's artificial flavoring. There, it, it just, it, why? I need something to cleanse my palate. Oh, I don't know, battery acid? There's no pumpkin in it, there's no spice, <laughs> there's berry a latte, stop it! But for the naysayers who say it's way too early, Starbucks and other coffee chains typically offer iced versions of the fall treats that make for the perfect transition to say goodbye to the sweltering summer and hello to cooler temps ahead. So we asked Starbucks to confirm that reported August 24th fall release date. The company was unable to let us know. Because they were Remember, gagging. All these companies are doing this a good month and a half before the fall equinox. We already have these are Krispy Kreme. They came out with the pumpkin donuts yesterday. Mm. Everything else fall flavored here. They're already out. And here's sure. the deal. This right here, I went to Home Goods last night we went. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. They already Thanks. had all this stuff in the front oh, display wow. right now. Wow. These candles? Including, these are pumpkin spice candles, oh, so you can't drink them, but they're actual really good. candles. Candles. 
It's again. a really, it's cute. Another, yeah. Just, I just, I'm just growing not up, I don't remember Melissa pumpkin Smoke. spice even being a thing. It wasn't a thing. No. It wasn't it a thing. It started about 20 years ago, really. Well, that's right. But my thing is, like, I love fall. Like, I used to live, when I lived up in, in Boston, we'd go to Salem, Massachusetts, like, leading up to, you know, end sure. of August, September. Uh -huh. And then it just smelled like those fall spices. Yeah, sure. but they were real. Which is what this they were reminds real me of. But it's still just it's too, too soon. soon. Yes. But I think people love to love this season, right? Fall so, begins so September 23rd. It's like at 249. Christmas in July. I mean, Stop it. It's a good donut. Joe, thank you. And listen, thank you, you like Joe. Went and got candles for us. And I, I like the fall tie. Very nice. And thank you for the gift. I'm going to put it, it in lovely. Al's car. Thank you. <laughs> like in, in the back window when yeah. Al drives down the street. <laughs>
So is the shoulder good or bad? So this is this is great for travelers, right? Okay. Um, if you're going to carry the bag, you want to have that good upright posture. Distribute the load. And also, if you're carrying anything like this, you're distributing the load equally on both sides. Okay. But the better option is do the squat pickup. So let's oh, place that I bag down. You right. And you're going to have a flat back. You're going to grab the smaller oh, strap. So don't do this. Okay. Obviously not in your heels, but this is great. I just got stuck in Atlanta Airport, the world's busiest airport, yes. so I watched all these people holding <laughs> bags and walking with really poor yes. posture. Is so, crossbody, does that help? Crossbody does help, but okay. with bags like this, you want to squat, put it down on a clean spot on the floor okay. in line, in those long TSA lines, yes. and then go ahead and lift it up. So you'll get the so benefit hold it the whole time. of a workout. You okay. don't stress your body with the added compression and you don't end up in your destination with okay. new aches and pains. But obviously sure. this type of bag is probably better. This is the alternate. This. You're going to put the bag, heavy bags. Ladies were guilty of this with our heavy purses. Put yep. it on the rolling bag. No weight is being carried on you. That's okay. why I carry a rolling bag, just to put exactly. the, the, my backpack sure. or whatever. It's and so speaking, much easier. Speaking of backpacks, a lot of kids, a lot of adults use backpacks, uh, especially traveling. What should we be looking for in a backpack and how should we be wearing it? So it's also back to school. So this is a good option of picking your backpack. You want something with that's lightweight but sturdy material. You want multiple pockets to disperse the load. You want wide and padded or contoured uh, straps. Mm -hmm. I'm changing you want this chest year. straps if, yep. you, if they okay. come with them, especially if you're going to carry heavy weights and you want a mm -hmm. padded back with a breathable mesh. Mm -hmm. okay. Those we, protect you. Let's look at Sophia here. Now she's got her backpack. What, what's, what's she doing right or wrong? So this is the do, the don't excuse me <laughs> she is only using one strap which mm -hmm. is not ideal she's going to create muscle imbalances and neck pains and shoulder pains. Cool way to hold back. this <laughs> yeah. is a thin backpack so right. if there's any books in the edges they're actually going to poke her in the back oh. if they shift around in the bag mm -hmm. we want to tighten up the straps here so this weight needs to be closer to her spine to avoid the compression uh -huh. in her spine and all the aches and pains that your kids are going to complain and both about straps on correct so with Blake here he is doing it correctly. A backpack was made with go, two Blake. straps. Go, Good job. He's using both straps. He needs to apply this chest strap. Oh. It keeps the straps in close and tight and keeps the weight closer to him. Mm -hmm. With multiple uh, pockets around, you're going to disperse the load. Yeah. And this, the core of this weight. And should weight, you be checking your kids to make sure they're not overloading these Yes, things? correct. So, But the core of this weight should be closer to the back. Mm -hmm. If he's got heavy books, they're closer towards the back of the I backpack, okay. not further away because oh, it's going to pull him. Oh. So if I pull him this way, he has to slide forward. That's really and it's really a helpful. good idea to check it. My daughter was complaining this past school year. Her back was hurting. And I'm like, oh, what's going wow. on? Then I picked up her backpack, and I'm like, girl, like, why do you have all this stuff in your yeah. bag? Mm -hmm. So it's not Great a bad idea to check. Thank Fantastic you, guys. Tips. Thank great. you. All right. Still ahead, how your favorite summer shows can inspire your next vacation whether you're a foodie like the bear or love fashion like and just like that we are doing the planning for you but first we're taking you behind the scenes of women's flag football with one inspiring athlete our Allie Love is here to share uh, the story Hi, good morning Allie and we are back in just 60 seconds
Now, for most of us, flag football brings back memories of gym class from grade school, perhaps. It's a game that's really similar to traditional football, but flags are pulled from players instead of tackling. So the sport has recently gained national and even international attention after the NFL changed its annual Pro Bowl format to flag football instead. And our own Allie Love got to try it out. Were you playing some flag football? Oh, we're going to check that out. I'm excited because I feel like most of us will enjoy this story. Good morning, everyone. Guess what? We're talking about the NFL League and how they're hoping to highlight flag football as a safer, more inclusive alternative to traditional football. So I connected with Deanna Flores, captain and quarterback of Mexico's women's national flag team, to try it out. Let's go ahead and take a look. <laughs> You may have seen Deanna Flores and this year's flag football Super Bowl ad called Run With It. We sent the message of unity, of breaking barriers, women empowerment, and a message of love for the sport. Sprinting through life is something the Mexican flag football star is used to. How did you get into flag football? I started playing with girls that were probably like 16 or 17 years old while I was eight. But that was the only way for me to be able to play flex. Eight year old, where did you get that confidence? I am super lucky to have a family that have always supported me. It didn't matter if flag football was seen as a sport for boys back then. They knew that this was my passion. That passion landed Deanna a spot on the Mexican national roster at the age of 16. Since then, it has been nine years full of growth, experiences, joy, and I'm so happy to see what we have achieved. Flag football is one of the world's fastest growing sports. You have millions of folks around the world participating. You need no equipment, it's accessible. Why is accessibility to sport important to today's youth? It gives them the opportunity to try it. It is fun to play, it is fun to watch, it is inclusive, it is for men, women. You can play it a co-ed format. The International Federation of American Flag Football League is made up of seven countries. It is super competitive to be here to qualify for it, the World Cup, which is going to be in 2024. Playing at this level takes grit. How do you psych yourself up to step out on the field and give it your best? For me, the best weapon is hard work. We can turn the impossible to possible, and that's what we do every time we are together on the field. At just 25 years old, Deanna is one of flag football's most recognizable faces, serving as a sports global ambassador. And come 2028, she may have another honor to add to her lengthy list of accolades. Flag football potentially being a part of the Olympics. I mean, how does that sound? We hope to receive good news this year from the IOC. That will be just a dream come true because as an athlete, your highest dream is to represent your country. I love it. We talked about all these things, and the thing that really gets you emotional is the potential of flat football being in the Olympics. Because I am proud to see what we have achieved, but for sure the future is right for flat football. <laughs> I'm getting emotional too. I'm like going to cry. I'm like... <sighs> <laughs> In a little bit, you're gonna take me through some drills. Can I handle it? <laughs> you will be able to. You're gonna love it. I promise. Thank you, promise. <laughs> After a quick change, I joined Team Mexico, who were warming up for their afternoon game against Panama. All right. Good. 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 Yeah. All right, question. Do you think I have a, a future in flag football? A little future? <laughs> you have abilities. All you need is like the focus and the willpower to do it. So, we got it all. Thank you so much. I love it. Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. Okay, pull on those so hard. Really hard. But, I mean, while my future in flag football is definitely still up in the air, <laughs> just this week, Deanna got some really great news. She became flag football athlete to sign to Under Armour, the first flag football athlete to sign to Under Armour. Also, earlier this year, she became the first flag football player whose items in the Pro Football Hall of Fame oh, wow. with her jersey that she wore during that Super Bowl ad that we just saw in that spot. And now, if you're wondering about the tournament at all, the USA football national team wound up defeating Team Mexico 
Mexico. Ooh. It's a little bit of a rivalry there, uh -huh. so there's a lot to watch. We're excited to see what happens as we get closer to Women's Flag Football World Cup. Next you know, That's flag fun. my son has played flag football for the past few years, and it's a great sport for parents who are skittish about letting their kids yes. play like actual. Yeah, because yeah. they're not they're getting all. tackled with right. this. Yeah. 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 Wow. It's but a lot still safer. throwing kids. And, and so much less equipment. So yes. Yeah. It, it the is entry successful. level is so much lower. Mm -hmm. I love that. I think fun. perhaps maybe you stick to, to Peloton. Look at this one. I knew Craig, I knew Craig was going to come <laughs> with something. I, tried, I caught the ball. The reason I caught the ball is because specifically I knew if I sat next to Craig, he, he was going to say, why well, didn't yeah. you catch that? You didn't catch that. Well. Ooh, a I new did. category, flag Peloton. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> all right. Holly, Thank thanks Allie. so much. Coming up, we've got a travel itinerary for all the you TV bingers. How to take a beach vacation just like the summer I turned pretty or Outlander's 18th century Scotland. We've got something for everybody. Then later, we're heading to the kitchen with the secret ingredient to the perfect BLT oh, right with Matt Abdu. Now, that's what I'm talking about. Yummy. Forget about PSL. I'm talking BLT. <laughs> Bam! Third hour today is right back. Good morning, everybody. Here's what's happening in your neck of the woods. Oh, you deserve to be celebrated. Way to go, Reynolds. Oh, Al. Al, you're all of our heroes. Yeah. Y'all love Al Roker. If you are still looking to book that final summer getaway, we are helping you plan this morning with a little inspiration from your favorite TV show. And here with the ideas is Misty Bellis, Vice President of Global PR at Virtuoso. Misty, good morning. Good morning. Hi, Misty. Hey, Misty. I, I love this segment because we watch these shows and you feel like you're a part of them. You get so invested in it. So it's it's nice to be able to try to plan a trip around it. Yeah, um, And the first one, Craig, you and I were just talking about, I need to start watching The Bear. Oh, it's such a great show. You absolutely have to watch. Um, in addition to sort of complicated family dynamics, it's all about the food scene in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And when you visit the first place, you have to go is the original Mr. Beef. It serves as the inspiration for the show. Mm. Mm. And while you're there, enjoy the incredible culinary scene that Chicago has. Uh, you can do your own sort of foodie tour, just like uh, Chef Sydney did. Mm -hmm. So head to um, Kasama, which is a Michelin starred Filipino restaurant, mm. or to Avec, which is more of a neighborhood restaurant, or public and quality meats. Or if you have a sweet tooth, head to Rosser's Bakery. Because Ooh. if you've seen the show, there is this beautiful display of colorful donuts that it serves as the inspiration for Marcus, and that's where you will find them. Mm -hmm. um, and if you need some really good reasons to go visit, well, there's lots of food festivals coming up in Chicago this fall, including the Taste of Chicago, which, which is, is huge. It is, yeah, September yeah. 8th through the 10th, it mm -hmm. will be going on. Oof. And while you're there, we recommend staying at the Pendry Hotel in Chicago. Oh, I like the Pendry. Mm. Yeah, beautiful, architecturally, just mm, gorgeous. Uh, rates are going to start there at about two ninety five a night. Or if you want to stay at the Navy Pier, look to the Sable Hotel, mm -hmm. and that's going to run you about starting at two ninety nine a night. All right, let's head to New York City for uh, and just like that. And just like that, we're talking about Carrie Bradshaw one more time. <laughs> so if you're a true fan of the show, you absolutely have to go by Carrie's apartment, which is at sixty six. Perry Street in oh. the village. 
So you can stroll by, you can take a picture on the stoop, but just be cool because it's actually somebody's house. Yeah, oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, there is that. that. Exactly. Don't, uh, don't go ask for a cup of coffee or anything. <laughs> so uh, visit that, or if you really want to have the and just like that experience, you can go dine at Benoit, which is the Alain Ducasse restaurant where she and Aiden reconnect this season. Oh, I'm sorry for the spoiler. No, I know. Yeah, like, I need, I need to catch up. That's fine. <laughs> and if you really want to have the experience, go have a drink at the Baccarat Hotel Bar. Oh, that's my, that's, I love the Baccarat. I do too. It's, it's one my, of my Who aren't you fancy? <laughs> no, I, think, oh, I, mean, I love the Baccarat. Yeah, they give you a great corporate rate there. Oh, oh, the corporate <laughs> rate. Oh. It's so, so stylish, so chic. So, yeah, go uh, go have a drink it's there. A or if you really want to treat yourself, go have a stay it's there. It's going to start at about 945 oh. a night. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh Craig, it's, it's my it's favorite place. Oh, maybe they, maybe I can get something on Groupon. Sorry, Would you like me to move on? Please do. Okay, let's do the summer I turned pretty. That's another one that I feel like I need to catch up on. So, but this is a fictional place, but you can still find a place with some beach vibes, right? Well, actually, it's filmed all over Wilmington, North Carolina. So they film a lot of shows down there. They do, yeah. So you'll recognize it from a number of, of shows. Um, but head to Wrightsville Beach in particular because that's where they filmed all the beach scenes there. Mm. It's a beautiful little beach there. Mm -hmm. Or head to the Carolina Boardwalk, which is where you see the amusement park and the, the carnival, the arcade mm -hmm. there. And while you're there, stay at the Sea Witch Inn, which is right there at the boardwalk, just steps away oh, from looks the sweet. beach. It does and look rates are going to start there at about 179 and Really quickly okay. here, Misty, this last one, Outlander. This is one of your favorite oh, shows. Oh, yeah. If, Dylan it, loves if it comes the, with Sam Hewen, yeah. I'm in. <laughs> Dylan loves the main actor. Yeah. Is it true that of the requests you get, this, this is the show that, that people most want to go and live? Yes, absolutely. This is the one I get the most questions about. How can I go have the Outlander experience? Oh, does it include yeah. time travel? <laughs> <laughs> Not quite, but uh, you'll probably feel like you're stepping back in time. But no, it, I mean, it's Scotland, so it's a beautiful place to visit mm. anyway. But make sure you visit the stones, because while they don't exist in Inverness, mm. and they probably have no time travel associated with mm -hmm. them, they are based on real stones really? called the Calame Standing Stones. Okay. They're in the oh. Outer Hebrides, which is way north and way west. Um, so it's a little bit of a trek to get there, but they date back between 3,000 and 5,000 wow, years, so wow. they really do seem mystical. And you can stay at Mid Hope Castle as well, mm -hmm. which is Lollybrock, mm -hmm. which is the mm -hmm. uh, Jamie Fraser fun. family yeah. home. Oh, that's amazing. So you can go and visit that. And then last but not least. Oh, we're out of, we're out of time, Mr. Oh, oh we, we need a time machine. <laughs> yes, <exactly. laughs> we do need a time machine. Oh, can you this imagine staying there? there? Thank you so much. Ooh, I want to stay there. Know, let's plan a trip. All right, done. Okay. Thank uh, you, we want to mention that Misty is a paid employee of Virtuoso, which represents the Pendry and the Baccarat Hotel. This morning in our series Today Table, we are putting a tasty twist on a classic sandwich, the BLT. And here to show us how to do it is Matt Abdu, the executive chef and owner of Pig Beach BBQ with a new location opening soon in Louisville. That's, That's right. right. Get ready, Louisville. We're coming. That's right. Just scan the QR code to get all the ingredients you need. Matt, you are making a, a, a twist with the BLT, but it's your grandmother's secret. secret. My mom. Your, your mom's Italian okay. marinade. So when we were growing up, mom had that old Tupperware container. It had mm -hmm. like the red on top and the white oh, on the yeah. bottom or maybe vice versa, right? 
right? <laughs> you marinated everything in it. Sure. So she made her Italian marinade. Uh, Mr. Roke, if you don't mind, dump all that stuff in there. We got parsley, mm -hmm. oregano, um, chili flakes, salt, pepper, garlic, all onion. All the things. All the things. And to that, we're going to round out this marinade with a little bit of red wine vinegar, okay. extra virgin olive oil, and then a little bit of honey for sweetness. Okay. Okay. Oh, I have a little yeah, bit yeah. of sweetness. Just a little bit of honey um, just to kind of round out the sweetness in that marinade. What'd you say, Dylan? What was in the bowl? Not uh, nothing. Oh, it's empty. Yeah, it's no. empty. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, some <laughs> some water just to kind of finish it out. If you guys have ever made those vinaigrettes, you should whisk that up. Yes. Water. Yes. Yes. So we're gonna let that happen. Now uh -huh. over here, we got some chicken, boneless, skinless chicken breast. Mm -hmm. I got a little piece Come of plastic on. wrap on this so I can touch it without touching it. Oh. And we're just gonna butterfly it open so that it's nice and thin. This is gonna make it cook faster Ooh. and more okay. even. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're gonna open that up and then we're gonna put it in a Ziploc bag. We're gonna right. take mom's Italian marinade. Okay. We're gonna dump it over that chicken. We're gonna let this marinade for one hour to overnight in your fridge. Okay. You can use this marinade on more than just chicken, really whatever you're feeling, put it on it, let it marinate, it's going to be delicious. Everybody's talking about the, the, the sauce. Well, that's what we're doing next. So, Mr. Alcott, real quick, in this bowl, we have mayonnaise. So, herb mayonnaise is what we're making for this. You can Ooh. use this on anything that you like, put mayonnaise on. we got shallots, okay. we got thyme, garlic, lemon juice, lemon zest, black pepper, salt, all the good stuff. Mix Yum. it up, put it in your fridge until you're ready to use it. Put it on any sandwich you want to make. Yeah. Right. All right. That last. Um, it'll last a very long time in your fridge. You don't have to worry about it. Mayonnaise is pretty. It's pretty stable. It's gonna. It's gonna last pretty. Probably at least a week or more mm -hmm. um, until those herbs start kind of turning colors on you. Right, so you marinate so, it. Even if you just do a couple hours, is it enough to get it the is, flavor? It is. It is. For okay. when you cut, it, especially when you cut it this thin. Because it's okay. so thin. So yep. So we're gonna our grill set up to nice and hot heat. I love to do what's called zone cooking. One side of your grill really hot, the other side kind of on low or off almost. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that if you get a really nice char, but it's still not finished cooking yet, right. smells you good. You can put it to the low side, okay. close the lid, and let it finish cooking to hundred. 65 degrees. Okay. Now it's time to build our sandwich. We have some griddled Texas toast, Ooh, which is just a good toast. Yeah. White bread, a big heaping dollop of that herb mayonnaise sure. on the top mm. and bottom. I like this hydroponic lettuce that we have here, a little butterhead lettuce. Tastes, yeah. Um, pro tip whenever you're doing tomatoes and avocado, yes. always hit them with a little bit of olive oil, salt, and pepper. Oh. It's going to make the flavors really pop so much better. Okay. Never knew that. Build up our tomatoes oh. on the bottom. Bunch of bacon, as much or as little as you like. Oh my gosh. We're going to take that chicken. You could slice it or just leave mm. it whole. Mm -hmm. Top it with these avocados. It's just so Matt. Why not, right? Those two, wow. the marinade and the herb and the mayo. Sauce. It and it's just a way of taking a classic sandwich and just kind of oh. elevating with mom's Italian marinade, that herb mayonnaise on there. Well, you turned a lunch into a dinner. Yeah. Well, well, this is great. Yeah. Breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Put a fried egg on it. It's every oh meal of the day. Uh-oh. All right. Here we go. go. Matt, thank you so oh, much. Thank you. And don't forget, you can buy the ingredients for mm. this recipe by scanning the QR code or head to today.com slash table, today table. And we also have to mention today earns a commission from purchases through the QR code or links on today.com. This is delicious. Unbelievable. Thank you. All right. Up next, you want some music? Yes. Yeah. So you know, with our food, we have a live performance from Rising Country Star. We say Rising, but he's a star. He's here. <laughs> Bailey Zimmerman, right after this. Mm. I miss what you put in there. Yeah. Oh, that is yeah. Series on today is proudly presented to you by City. Our next guest is a star in the making. Bailey Zimmerman burst into the scene in 2020 after posting a video showcasing his talent on TikTok. Well, guess what? Since then, he's gone on to release hits like Rock in a Hard Place, which reached the top 10 on the Billboard Hot 100. Show. And back in May, Bailey released his LP titled Religiously, the album. He is here in Studio 1A to perform for us. Is it true that you didn't even know that you could sing until 2020? <laughs> 
Yeah, I'd sing in my truck and in the shower, but I didn't think it was good. You know, I didn't think I could actually sing. Yeah, I just I just kind of went along with songs like everybody else, you know, in the truck and thought everybody could do that. And, and look at you now. And That's look it. at you now. I know. It's I don't crazy. want to waste any more time. Here's Bailey Zimmerman with Rock and a Hard Place. Let's go. We've been swinging and missing It ain't broke yet, but damn, it needs fixing Been a while since your kiss felt like kissing It's just different We've been talking about forever since we've been together Something about her makes you think we're better off with all this, but we're caught in between a rock and a hard place. Red wine and mistakes, tears rolling down your face. I walked out that door, that's when I lost it. Midnight in Austin, damn, I'm exhausted. What the hell's this all for? Is this where it been? Or it breaks between a rock and a hard place. Before the record, Chief, throwing in the towel takes some effort. So I'd rather ride it out for better weather. Thank you guys for having me. Woo! All right. We've been talking about this Let's forever go. since we've hey. been together. Wow. You're oh, like one of our new favorites. Man, guys. that's awesome. You're so oh. Like this whole moment is not lost on you. Yeah. Oh, it's crazy. That's it's right. awesome. Crazy. And congratulations. You just, brought your, just brought your first house. Hey, let's go. That's all right. Let's yeah. do it. Oh, Bailey. Religiously, man. the album is out now. We'll be right back. You're going to remember us when you're big, right? <laughs> All right, I'm here, baby. All right, yes. Let's go. Uh -huh.
that does it for us for today, but don't miss a very special guest tomorrow, rapper J Jeezy Jenkins joining us. Jeezy! Jeezy. I love Live it. in studio. And his visit comes as we are celebrating 50 years of hip-hop born right here in New York City. Up next on Hoda and Jenna, we'll have a closer look at the fashion inspired by hip-hop. We'll see you back here tomorrow, everybody. Have a good day. Have a good Bye. day. Bye-bye. Bye. Today, we're celebrating 50 years of hip hop with the woman behind some of its biggest fashion statements, June Ambrose. Then from planning your next vacation to proofreading and more, we'll show you how to make the most of AI. Plus yummy back to school snacks your hungry kids will devour. So it's today with Hoda and Jenna. It all starts right now. I should have brought my higher heels. I was going to wear flats. Hey, everyone, it's Tuesday. It is August the 8th. Hoda is off. So look who we have with us the lovely Chanel Jones. Good morning. Hi. How are you? I'm good. It's been too long. I know. I feel like sometimes we see each other in passing, but now I get to talk. To we you. used How to get you? together and like. I know. Have a drink we'll have here to do or there. Summer has been summering, which is a good thing. But when fall comes, we'll we'll We're connect. Unite. Yeah. Can we please do it? Okay. Yes. You have been summering in a really, really cool way. I tried something new this year. So my kids, like your kids, they went to sleepaway camp. Yeah. And so as opposed to for the them? first time ever, they were all at a sleepaway camp. I have two 11-year-olds and a 14-year-old. And so I thought, okay, if they're going to go away, maybe I should too. And so you so went to your own I went by camp. myself. So first I went and visited my cousin out in L.A. And then I checked myself into like a wellness retreat for just two or three days. No phones are allowed except when you're in your room. And it was transformational. Because I keep using the word transformational, but it really was, well, Jenna. Well, you were alone. By myself. I would text at night to let everybody know I was fine. And it was weird at first, like going to dinner and not having a cell phone or a book or a magazine. Where do you look? Do you, you know what I mean? Like, what do you wait, do? Why did you have brought a book? I should have. Yeah. But I just didn't think about it. I've never done it before. Yeah. So I remember sitting there and then like, at first I'm like, you know, I just don't even know where to put my no, gaze. I know. But I think by day three, I could go, I can sit down. I, I'm okay being by myself. Yeah. You know, there's some people who go to restaurants by themselves, go to the movies by themselves. Have you done that? I'm not normally that person. And you're, it's gonna, gonna be interesting because you have twins. Mm -hmm. I'm a twin. And when you have a partner for life, mm. like I was so used to, even if I had a bad dream, running into my sister's bedroom. I never thought about she that. She was my partner and then mm. I met Henry really young mm. and so you know so you've never really had to do it alone so to speak I went on I've done one trip by myself and I've traveled for work all the time solo. and so have I yeah. this is just the first time I've done it for where pleasure. I'm not for pleasure I'm not visiting anybody I did massages I took a, a class on uh, mindfulness and stress management cool. I took another meditation class I mean all the things I thought you know what let me just be open to it and I feel Rejuvenated. You know what's so interesting is silence. Like you probably didn't talk very much. I didn't talk because you're by yourself. I mean, there are times where, you know, I'm in a master class and you talk with the lady over here yeah. or, you know, so you kind of and then have you go interaction. Next, right. But no, you're on your own. And I really, really, really needed it. Did it make you want to start like going out to dinner by yourself and stuff um, or not that far? Not that far. <laughs> but I do think I'm now OK with being quiet, which, you know, it's, it's a work in progress. And I also think. I have clarity. I think sometimes, you know, Oprah always says, when you don't know what to do, be still. Yeah. I think sometimes, even if you can't travel anywhere, totally. you don't have to take a flight, even if it's just going outside, putting your phone, leave it in the house, and just be still yeah. until it's a, almost uncomfortable. It's amazing the clarity that comes Wait, with that. It's so true because yeah. when we're so busy you running around, it. doing this, doing that, meeting to meeting to Zoom, you don't even know how your body feels, how you feel. Like about an assessment. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they sometimes they say, or, you know, maybe you think better in the shower, or yeah. sometimes you get your best ideas when you're sleeping. I think it's because your body has a moment to just be still. So cheers to being still. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Should I say? I yeah. love you. I'm yeah, so I'm happy for you. I want to, you've inspired <laughs> me.
I don't go know where I'm going, but I'm yeah. going. Um, okay, so delivering bad news. Mm -hmm. I just heard about this. You explain it. Well, first of all, how do you feel when you have to sit down with somebody and be like, I mean, I'm not good at it. Yeah, I will. I learned in my little meditation class that I am, I think they call it like a fauna or some word I've never heard of where I will make myself uncomfortable to make you comfortable. Yeah, totally. If I have to give you bad news or if I don't really want to take this class, but I'm going to do it anyway, I'll still take it because I don't want you to be upset You're with me. You're a people pleaser yes. a little bit. Me yes. too. Well, okay, some folks are hiring actors. Do you remember Cameo? So this is where certain stars will say, happy birthday, yeah, Jenna. Totally. And I, I can pay for the celebrity to do that, right? Yes. Okay. okay, so usually it was like good news, celebrating right. somebody's birthday, graduation. You're having a baby. Totally. Yeah. Now people are using it to break up with I people. I can't believe it. To I divorce guess I people. In the past three years, Cameo says it received thousands of requests using the words divorce. Oh, my God. Which seems... So crazy. That seems so cool. I, I guess if you're ready to get divorced, you're like, you know what? Here. Yeah, but I feel Push like play. you owe the person you married. Maybe it depends on the terms. That's true. Maybe it's someone scorned. That's true. Right. Um, <laughs> break up and I'm sorry. So here's an example. Okay. Here's an example of right. comedian Jaron Myers delivering a breakup video. Take a look. Hey, Ethan, last week you met a girl named Morgan, and she wanted you to know uh, that she's just not interested, man. And you had told her that I'm your favorite comedian, and so she hired me on Cameo to break the news that would hopefully uh, hit a little softer. And so I'm really sorry, man. There's someone out there for you. It's just not Morgan, you know? And if you need cheered up, you can listen to my podcast, Things I Learned Last Night. Uh, but thanks for being a fan, man. Uh, I really hope that you find somebody. Just not Morgan. Leave that girl alone. I don't even know how I feel right now. I don't either. How does that make you feel? Well, at <laughs> first, when we were talking about it, I'm like, that is the like cheapest thing you could possibly do. But okay. it seems like Morgan was trying to make the guy feel better by hiring his favorite comedian. But then that would make me feel worse because I'm thinking, wow, what a sweet person you are. So if you actually really love me, what would you do? Oh, like that's you'd like hire him to say happy anniversary. <laughs> <Very thoughtful. laughs> I, wow. But also, do you remember when um, Carrie on Sex in the City dated that dude that broke up with her on a post-it post note? Yes, that was iconic. This takes post-it notes and like, raises it. If you it. can't even use your own voice to say I'm sorry, but we got to break up. Where are we going? Jenna? But I think you're right about situational. Like it depends on the situation. I had a couple boyfriends I would have loved to have broken up with on camera. Right, and they kind of did you wrong. Yeah, they yeah. did. Yeah, and, and I'm still thinking about something. <laughs> Well, or something. You could be right. Anyway, well, hopefully I don't get any of those. <laughs> the I'm sorry is kind of sweet. Yeah. Like if you get, I don't know. I don't carrot know. top. Yeah. Oh, I was about to. <laughs> if you, you know get funny, carrot top. I was about to say Janet, but I don't think Janet's going on cameo. No, Janet's because not going Because if Janet is like, hey, you know, your friend is sorry, I would forgive them. Yeah, but Janet ain't on cameo. She's not on cameo. No, but well, carrot top then, would Don't be. send it to me. Okay. Carrot um, top. Gal Gadot Love plays, her. Okay, she's the coolest. She plays the in intelligence operative in the new action packs spy thriller, mm. Heart of Stone. It's out on Netflix. I love her. She's like at Wonder a, Woman, she had me at hello. She also is just like can do, she's like the female Tom Cruise. I like love she that. She does all these incredible stunts. I didn't realize she has three daughters. Well, she does. Yeah. She has three daughters. And in a recent interview, she discussed the empowering messages of fearlessness she hopes to install and in instill in her three daughters. I love that. I mean, I don't even know. I mean, I love my mom. She's Wonder Woman to me. Yeah. Um, but imagine like as you're growing up and you realize that your mom is that woman like do, you know what do I mean? all those stunts that's pretty awesome so that's she said awesome. she just hopes to teach her girls simply to love themselves i love that you know what i've noticed um you know i have a daughter and i have two sons but i think we and dylan has talked about this a lot we lean so hard into making sure our girls feel loved that i think we still have to remember about our boys too they need it too i said that exact Thing. Really? Uh, yeah, when we were having the meeting, that's what I said. I oh, said, see, look at that. And and Maria Shriver, actually, our guru, mm -hmm. both of our gurus, mm -hmm. said she feels like boys and men in this country have so much pressure on them that, that they're in crisis. We almost forget. Yeah. We, we're, and again, we want to empower our girls. But we have to build up our boys too, totally. right? It has to, and so my goal with two boys and a girl is to try to do that simultaneously, right? Yeah. And so the things that Claire needs to know, you do that. And then the boys, the same thing. So that 
they are gentlemen yeah. and kind. Oh, yeah. I teach to open the door, like all, all the, the kind of Kansas and Texas things. Absolutely. That, you know, open the door. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. I try for both of them. Oh, yeah. But also, I also want to teach Hal, who is my little man, that it's okay to feel. To feel. Like, he looked so nervous at his birthday party. Aww. He met up with a little, like. Wait, how old is he now? He just turned four. Four I years. Know. I can't believe it. I know. It's it's sort of time for me to have another baby. Is it time? Yeah, but do you want another? Can I, we announce it now? Well, I'm not. I mean, don't no, go No, not on. now, but I'm saying, do you think? I'd like <gasps> to have another baby. Listen, but no, but, him, no, but, no, but no, too, you're going no, too far. No, I'm not going too you're far. You're going too far. Anytime you talk to a woman and she's like, well, yeah, No, but Henry would not. No, but Henry. It's happening. No, 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 we're not. It's, we're not. Henry, Henry, no. Henry, Henry doesn't want Henry anymore? put his foot down. He really? says we have three healthy babies. I'm 41. I had, I like, some a little health stuff with him. If you haven't met Henry, he is so darn cool. Like, he's so, you know how much I love him. I know. I just think he's the nicest guy. He loves guy. you, too. And so I kind of feel like, if you're like, Henry, Well, I do feel like women usually have the advantage exactly. in that area. So if you want a fourth. But, well, I told Henry, because there was a four-year spread between Poppy and Hal. Okay, wait, so you have four-year spread. And then there was a two-year spread. Two so years. I'm right and then about the time I should be having, like, I should be having a baby right now. I, like now. Right like this moment. Like you should just go home. Let's, I'll, I'll no, hold no, it down. having it. Actually having it. Well, we're a little late, but we can catch up. Okay, but I, I'm not going to. So this to. is what you do. You go on a solitary vacation, get clear, okay. and then come back and get busy. And, and, and talk my husband into it. I'm kidding. I mean, oh I'm not, gosh. but I'm kidding. Are we on TV? I love TV? babies. I know. I'm so sorry. Um, okay. This is what happens when we haven't seen each other in so long, we almost forget. <laughs> totally. Okay, coming up next, you're invited to a friend's party. Can you ask the guest to see the guest list before uh, you go? We are hashing out the girl code after this. I love this segment. <laughs> girl code. Okay, Chanel, are you ready to solve some female when friendship dilemmas? When you and Hoda do this, we'll literally be around the, the, the television <laughs> listening and talking back to the screen. So I'm honored to sit next to you during well, this time. We are so happy because it's time for Girl Code. All right, here's the first question. Okay. I want you to answer this one. Okay. My girlfriend is throwing a party. She made the Evite list private. Can I ask to see the guest list before I RSVP? Mm, I think they're okay. If it's you, like the girlfriend, a real girlfriend, then you're like, girl. Yeah, who's, who's coming? coming? If it's one, maybe a colleague or someone, you know, you're in her circle, but you're not in her inner circle. You just have to go with Grace and enjoy yourself. She's inviting you, just go. I agree. Yeah. If it's a really good friend, you can be like, what are you wearing? And who's going to be there? If Savannah's throwing a party yeah. or if Hoda's throwing yeah. a party, you, you can go. ask who's coming. Yeah. But if you're just invited to an acquaintance party, then it's you just best go. Not. Yeah. I agree. Okay, next up. Here we go. My girlfriend asked me to help her plan a dinner date with our friend group. After throwing around some possible dates, the group landed on a date Ooh. I can't attend. When I informed the group, she said, sorry, we'll miss you. Am I upset? Am I right to be upset? I don't know. Here's the thing. When, I don't know how big the friend group is, okay. but it's probably more than three. Let's say when, five. Five. When you're getting five girls together, it's going to be impossible to find a date. But There's, don't you feel like sometimes it's like, guys, but I want to be there. Well, then just text and tell the truth. Mm, I think so, too. Or you could have Carrot Top on Cameo say... <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you could have Carrot Top be like, hey, y'all, it's me, Carrot Top. Your Can friend you wants please, to be at the party. I have a feeling for some reason somebody here is going to book Carrot Top. He's going to be here within the next four or five days. In that case, I would say that's a good time to use Cameo. 
sure things are said in jest. Yeah. So even though you probably really wish you could go, maybe you should, I don't know, I would try not to leave her out. Okay, that's right. Yeah. So, but also, here's the thing. They probably have no idea she wants to come. Mm. You got to speak what's on your I mind. Agree. Otherwise, you can't be mad because I agree. people can't read your mind. I agree. Okay. Okay. Here's the last one. My friend and I are planning to vacation together. She wants to party big every night while I want to stay in sometimes. But I can't leave her alone. Oh. How do I handle it? That's a good one. I think here's the thing. Okay. I think you can say, I want to party, but I also want to sleep. I want both. I want both. Yes. Can we can we agree? Can That's we, fair. Yeah. Me, what kind of friend is not going to let you do? I don't know. There are some who are just like, ah, every single night, 4 a.m. But how can they do 4 a.m. every single night? Now, I know that's an aside. It gets a little harder. Aren't they tired? Yeah, I went to a conference this weekend or last weekend, and we got home one night at like 3 in the morning. What? I slept for two days after that. <laughs> I was on... I, I was not here yesterday. Wait, what, did you take a sick day? No, I, I knew. Uh, Chanel? I, no, no. I, <laughs> did you take a sick I day because you partied? Because you partied? But the, the point of the story is that it took me two days to recover. Wait, where, where it used to be, I could just get up and go to class. What do you do till three in the morning? That's the thing. I just had a great time. <laughs> yes, girl. At a bar or a club? A club? A club. Uh, did you go to a club or a bar? Can you hop around and do a little bit of both? You did all the I above? I say yes. I say after coming from my me time, it was time to get after it. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And again, I'm here for that, too. It's all moderation. Yeah. But if you have a girlfriend who likes to party like crazy, you just have to say, listen. Yeah, because you, there's no way you could have gone out the next no. night. One night. Yeah. One night So only. I feel like we got to have some confidence. I feel like we would be good girlfriends. We could totally go on a trip together. <laughs> or we could go solo. Or we could invite Carrot Top. It's up to you. All right, okay. If you've got a girl code <laughs> question, tell us all about it at hodaandjenna.com. Just hit the connect button. All right, I'm happy about this next yes. one. I'm happy I'm here today. Up next, the woman behind the fashion of some of hip hop's biggest stars, right after this. Jay-Z, Missy Elliott, Diddy, Busta Rhymes, all big stars who helped shape the evolution, shape the evolution of hip hop, which is celebrating its 50th anniversary oh, this God. week. Isn't that crazy? And not only has hip hop made a lasting impact on music and pop culture, but also fashion. And there was one woman behind many of the looks that are iconic today, costume designer June Ambrose. We're gonna chat with June in just a moment, but first, check out her story. Jay-Z, Diddy, and Missy Elliott. When these rappers first hit the scene in the 1990s, they dominated sound waves and wowed audiences with stunning visuals in their music videos. And the mastermind behind their most memorable looks? Costume designer June Ambrose. For making Jay-Z a suit fit for a boss in the video for Feeling It, to transforming Busta Rhymes for his Grammy-nominated song, Put Your Hands Where My Eyes Can See. June collaborated with artists to create looks that built their personas. The thought process behind creating these outfits was just to be fashion forward thinkers. June, she always understood it when it came to me. I could tell June the most craziest thing in the world. Once, June will get a million things that will fit within that one thing that you gave her as an example. She's the dawn of all dawns. June grew up in the Bronx, New York, 
where she studied theater in high school. Her background in costume design allowed her to understand its importance in character development, an approach that would guide her throughout her career. In the beginning, she designed the outfits herself because most fashion houses weren't willing to collaborate with hip-hop artists. But as hip-hop gained mainstream popularity, elements from her looks, like Diddy and Mace's shiny suits in the 1997 music video for Feel So Good, appeared on designer runways the following year. Today, June is the creative director of Puma, where she continues to influence style. The one thing about June is that she figured out how to be timeless. A timeless great. There was nothing greater than June. So her impact on hip-hop and fashion goes beyond anything that we could possibly describe in words. How amazing. We are so lucky to have you here today. I told Thank you, when you. you walked in, I went like this. No, that watching that made me emotional. My, you know what did, I, it made my, you emotional? Next year makes 30 years I've been in business, yeah. That's amazing. And you keep raising the bar, and even all those years ago, what I admired about you, each artist still looked, looked like an individual. Same mind, oh, yeah. but you were able to make each artist their own. How did you do that? Where did you get that inspiration from? You want to from? capture their artistic persona, but not have them abandon who they are. You know, the integrity of who they are as people really allows them to be the stars when you're building the look and the costumes around that. I just put, you know, looks to the lyrics. Looks I mean, to the lyrics. And by the way, looks to the lyrics that are iconic because all of us that grew up in the 80s and 90s yeah. can remember those looks from those music videos because it's all we watch. We had to be impactful. We mm. had to be intentional. Mm. I love punctuation. <laughs> You know, one of the things that I read about you this morning, which I just delighted in, and also was kind of in awe of, is that when you were dressing Diddy in that red suit, mm -hmm. which we saw and we all remember, he was like, I'm not into this. Oh, mm. no. I had to make two versions of those suits, by the way. Really? Yeah. I mean, Puff is very fashion forward and intuitive, but this particular thing, because he was in his hip hop artistic persona, not like the executive, because mm -hmm. he was an yeah, a &R I know. So I had to really get him to understand this is a character, darling. Mm -hmm. And I used to come in like Edith Head with big glasses like Edna from The Incredibles. Mm -hmm. And I would be very like intentional, very forceful, very direct. And I said, I put my career on it. The shiny suit is it. So I made a leather version because he was like, I don't know about this lady. And then I made the metallic leather one. Mm -hmm. And when we saw the first take on camera, you knew. And he and game he on. Game said, on. And he said afterwards, I mean, first of all, it kind of so changed your career, but it, it, it shows that you're not scared of taking risks. No. I mean, I, I'm always very, I tap into my AI all the time, my authentic intelligence. <laughs> Which is the most yeah. important guy, yeah. by the way. Yeah, it's like when you're in the universe, you know, you want to, I trust my gut, and I'm looking mm -hmm. to align with other stars and planets. And that's how I approach it. I'm very, like, methodical about it. I'm very, I'm very intentional about it. It's too important. And we wanted to shift, you know, the perspective of how people looked at hip hop culture. So it's hip hop culture. Mm, hip hop culture. So what does it yeah. feel like, or what did it feel like, and it continues, where you have this idea, you sketch it, you make it happen, and then you see it everywhere. Mm. Like Jay-Z's outfit, that suit, or the, mm -hmm. you know, the puffy suits, or the Missy Elliott video. Yeah. Like people emulated it, they dress like it, you see it on the runways. What does that feel like when you know it started in here? Well, I always go into jobs knowing that it's bigger than me, and it's not about me. Mm. And it's really about capturing the audience influencing them and still having the sense of relatability you know and that's like when you see that happening when you see the culture kind of gravitating to things that are very aspirational then you know you're doing something right in life I planted so many seeds in the 90s that I'm now seeing come to fruition it gives me it gives me pause it makes it keeps me humble it's it, it's at every turn I'm so grateful for it. all of my celebrity muses do you do you feel like that, that little girl in the Bronx could have ever dreamed this yes. would you could, dream, you could <laughs> I was so very Anxious. I was so precocious. I was so curious. Mm -hmm. And my curiosity has really gotten me to where I am now. I'm always looking to learn something new, experience something new, and really make a difference in people's lives. And that's really my intention all along the way, was to celebrate who I think we ultimately are. We're all superstars mm -hmm. in our own right. You know, Amen. that confidence is, is what I love about. I'm like, wait, hold that thought. Yeah, she's Stay not right there. there. <laughs> so June is going to share the stories behind some of her most famous looks, including Beyonce, Missy Elliott, Janet Jackson. And so much more <laughs> right after this. Oh, so good.
We are back with costume oh, designer June Ambrose, who created some of the most iconic looks in hip hop from Jay-Z to Busta Rhymes right. to much, much more. So now she's going to share the stories behind some of her most memorable creations. This is a treat. I know. Yes, we feel like cool. we're kind of living history okay. here. I love okay. talking shop. Let's start with Beyonce and Jay-Z. Okay. You um, helped with a video. We can't say, say the, the name. name. <laughs> But remember, it was at the Louvre, and it was fab, and we all remember it. Uh -huh. Talk about these looks. That night at the museum, Ooh. I mean, it was wonderful. Beyonce stylist was with her. I had Jay, and we were literally, like, just coming together look after look. We had, like, ten looks in this video. Mm. And we spent the night there, and I wanted something that was super you artistic. You spent the night in the museum? Oh, yeah. We came in right as it closed, and we stayed till sunup the next day. Is that, morning. like, when they'll let the crews come in and yeah, do their exactly. thing? exactly. I mean, I, wow. I, I have a picture of myself in front of the Mona Lisa. Do you know how yeah. that is? I mean, look at like, this. Like, in the middle of the night. Oh, yeah, and it's such an iconic shot because Jay in his double-breasted suit that yeah. had this beautiful, rich color palette. Who knew that, you know, it was going to be such an iconic moment, but the two of them complimenting oh. each other, it was such a great collaboration. But when we took our shirts off and started wearing suits with no shirts, yeah, totally. that moment happened in Jamaica when we were shooting content for the tour. And I remember when we did it, not only was it because it was hot, yeah. but it was so provocative and rogue. Yeah. And, you know, Jay was just... He was in that energy. He was feeling like that Rasta kind of rude boy. I love it. Kind of, and I love it, it. every artist started saying, "Oh, is that what's going now?" I love but it. But we've been doing this from the inception. I've worked with Jay for almost thirty years now, and you know, in terms of like from suits to button-down shirts and jeans, just kind of really kind of taking that consumer and growing them. Mm. They're looking for us to lead them in that trendy way. It's true. So Let's cool. talk about Missy Elliott oh, yeah. in the video for the rain super duper fly. Uh, <laughs> what's the story behind? We remember this. The, I mean, how many? Even now, if I put on a rain remember this? suit, I'm like, doo, 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 totally. You know I, mean? I love that people still talk about oh, this. Yeah. I love that this is a Halloween costume. I love that I was behind her in this shot, Doing pumping what? her. No, up. you were not. Oh yeah, when I designed this suit. You know, it was my first time playing with like inner tubing and playing with something that was a little bit more, um, it had had to have performance attitude. It was very tricky to produce. And like, and I was taking luxury fabric and, you know, creating sportswear silhouettes and, wow. you know, and it was just difficult. The suit kept deflating <laughs> and, and, and it worked to my benefit. So like, wow. because it kind of because had as movement. it deflated, it allowed her movement the to come shimmer, through. Shimmer. Yeah. But I had to be bicycle tube. We took it to the gas station. No, you did not. How else was I going to blow this up? And like, it was like, I didn't wow. think about any of this oh my as we were building this. Now, when you think about it, we do these music videos in five days when people have movies that they have yeah. two months to prep. Yeah. My jobs, I have the most six to seven days to prep a job wow. with big costumes and big ideas. It's not easy no. from inception of sketching it to putting it on the board to building it out and then having you figure out all the kinks and fittings it's not a is a, not a big window oh my gosh all it's that. amazing okay um tell us about designing all these looks for Buster Rhymes and Janet Jackson oh this is one of my most favorite videos because not because it was the most expensive but this was a four million dollar music video wow was it and four million yeah it was a very expensive a lot of CGI we did all of it on blue screen the post work was insane um I loved building this look for Buster for so many reasons because I had him in a cat suit first so we giggled the whole entire time because <laughs> of the silver foundation was like a cat suit. And in the world of hip hop, to really get an artist to play these characters, I mean, totally. he was like a little kid in a candy store. <laughs> and all the pieces were modular and they were built and formed. We had several fittings for this. Janet Stylus worked on her piece and built her look out based on me saying, I want s and I want it to be like really edgy. Mm -hmm. We wanted something. The director, Hype Williams, was very specific about color. Mm -hmm. And we just had a, just a really great time working on this project. But we couldn't see it because we were all on green screen. Mm -hmm. So when we finally saw the finished product, it it was just like magical. Delighted. It took with a long it. time, a lot of color correcting, a lot of. It was it was a big undertaking. I had a big marching band in this video too. Yes, well. I remember I it. You remember Do you remember that, the yeah. marching you know, band? I'm sitting here staring at you because we're talking about the anniversary of hip hop. But you know what? Kudos to you and what yeah, you've totally. given and putting out put out in the universe. And not and just video. for hip hop, but now for all of for culture, culture. because you. you've made some major changes. I mean, we talked about it, it in the piece. It makes me very proud when you see the artists that are really, you know, today how they're really enjoying all of the fruit of the early yeah. artists, you know, the fact that we were able to lay that blueprint down and mm. give them creative license to feel free creatively yeah. 
it, it's, it's a beautiful thing to see the high fashion design houses are embracing totally. hip hop culture. Finally, it right? It wasn't like that in the beginning. No. It's really nice to kind of see it all, you know, us all live in one world yeah. and one zeitgeist. Yeah, so that's it's nice. Well, thank be. you for being here. June, oh, you, thank you you're for iconic. Hat, oh my gosh. When she came and sat on the couch, I'm like, can I stare at you? Let me I just, know. Let me just look at we're you. We're still, by the way, <laughs> we've been commercial. cut, but we're trying not to go to commercial because we want to go to the commercial so we can just stare at Okay, yeah. We have girl crush. Next, planning a vacation and don't know where to. Okay, there are apps for that. We'll show you how it works after this. Now I can stare at you. I know. Now back to it. Okay, we've been hearing a lot about AI lately or artificial intelligence. And although it may sound like a crazy sci-fi movie, there are ways that it can really help in your daily life. Everything from improving your writing to planning a vacation. And here to tell us more about it is digital lifestyle expert, Carrie Noblock. Carly? Yeah. Good Carly, morning, Carly. Hi. I answer to all names. No problem. Okay, um, so yeah. let's talk a little bit, like, what is AI? Some of us that are slightly mm, hesitant skeptical. about it. Why, what's the good part of it? Yeah, absolutely. So AI is basically a computer that's been taught by a human being to think and learn. And the way that I see it is like, you know, a lot of people are hand-wringing about where all this technology is going, mm -hmm. but there's so many really cool things that are coming out that are here to assist us. They call it augmented intelligence. So it's not taking over, it's just helping us be better. So there's like home designs, which is an app that can help you with interior mm -hmm. and landscape architecture. Mm -hmm. There's Ahara, which is about nutrition, there's Milo, which helps busy parents schedule. So a lot of like high-end services that people wouldn't have access to That's a fair can now point. be free, yeah. affordable. Yeah. That's Good a fair way to point. think about it. I was just telling Jenna during the commercial break, let's say, for example, you know, you have trouble writing or you've never been the best writer. You're self-conscious about your writing. Yes. Perhaps this can help. Yeah, I love that. And I know, you know, we, we were talking just before the break about Grammarly. It's a popular spell check and grammar app. They're now using um, generative AI to do writing for you. So it's going to help correct your writing, but also help you write. And um, I'm just going to do a demo, if we can, okay. of this um, email. So let's say you're a shop owner and you get, there's the email, uh, and a, a customer is angry about something. Okay. okay so uh, Grammarly Go is going to basically read and interpret the context of the email. So it's going to pop up and say, this person wants an update and they sound frustrated. So it knows the context of what's oh, in this my email. Goodness. Doesn't that seem scary? Then it's going to help me write an entire response. So again, anyone who struggles Can with- Can we see the response? Yeah. So right, uh, mm, right here, it says- uh, it's not showing up. Oh, that's okay. It, okay. Anyway, it says, I'm. It, it basically wrote like a very long, like a three paragraph email. You can tell it to make it shorter or make it more professional or make it more empathic. So anyone who's it's so up. crazy to me that and that artificial intelligence would understand empathy. Empathy, yes, right. emotion. Are. It's it doesn't really understand it. It's just read a lot of literature and it wow. knows what empathic language sounds okay. like. Okay. Wow. Um, yes. 
Okay, so how can you use um, this next app to help you plan a trip, for yeah, example? Yeah, so this is Bard. This is Google's chatbot, similar to ChatGPT, which you've okay. heard a lot about. So it knows how language works, and it knows how to make a co have a conversation with you. So you ask it questions, it gives you answers. So this, I basically created a prompt here where it says, please be my travel agent. I want to go to Los Angeles for the weekend. Uh, I want to stay by the beach. So I'm giving it all the information I would give to a travel agent. And uh, can we, we see that, guys, yeah. up on the screen? Can I tell you something as you pull this up? Yes. We did this for spring break last year. And oh, you did? Yeah, because everybody was talking about it. My husband's a techie guy. He was like, well, let's do it for something that's not like writing. Yeah. Let's just do a trip. So we told him, we, we told it. We were going to Panama, and my husband wanted to surf. I wanted to go to the beach. Like, And it was like, here are some places where you can go surfing. This day is probably the best if you're a beginner. This is, So we literally yeah. used did it. Did you use the itinerary? And you can tweak it. You can say, is this the right beach for a beginner surfer? And it will read, spit like, yeah, out the information. Be smoother for if you have children. What? That is crazy. OK. Yeah. Um, All right, so well, what about people that are making videos for social content? Yeah, a lot of people have to make videos where they talk on camera and they struggle with it. It's hard to keep eye contact. It's hard to remember all your lines. And you flub the take. And you got to start all over. So Captions is an app that I have pulled up here. We actually, I actually made a small video. And I'm going to show you one of the features. Is called Called AI eye contact. Okay. So they're going to pull this up and basically um, that's what the app looks like. And then we should have a side by side of me in the original video looking oh, off to the I side and then see on the right hand side oh, wow. it fixed Wait, it my moves eye line. Your eye line? It Wait, moves the, the, my eye line. What? So now I can look at a script and deliver content and it fixes it so it looks like I was looking directly at the camera. Wow. That's... Do you remember when we were doing the show on, in Zoom boxes totally. and we were trying to do scripts and we were kind of looking totally. off to the side? Totally. We could have yeah. used this. Wait, there's one. One more magic trick from okay. this app. Now it took my video, it makes a clone of my voice, and it dubbed it into Spanish. We have that also. Hey, chicos, estoy súper emocionado de estar aquí en el programa hoy hablando con ustedes sobre inteligencia artificial. Vamos a meterle. I do not wow. know how to speak Spanish for the record. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's wild. Isn't that crazy? The implications of that are kind of are huge. I huge. Know. And a little scary. I mean, well, saving a little bit yeah. wow. scary, but also really incredible. Well, you and can then, reach more people with your yeah, message. For yeah. sure. And then lastly, this is an app called Seeing AI from Microsoft. I'm going to take a picture of you lovely oh. ladies, and it's going to say... Two women sitting on a chair. Two women sitting on a chair, and then I'll take a picture. A TV studio with a camera and a couple of people Listen, standing in front of the wall. If you're, That's amazing. That if you're blind, if is you're, it, if you're yes. any kind of visual impairment, it helps see the world around you. It can recognize currency, That's magnificent. so it knows if you've gotten. Uh, you know, incorrect change. It and so it wow. basically can just help you navigate the world. That is so cool. Thank you, Carly. Very wow. cool. Coming up, y'all, snacks to throw in your kids' backpack. All right, we have some tasty treats to satisfy all their cravings. Coming up next. <laughs> as we get ready to send those kids back to school, we need to start thinking about the snacks that we're going to put in their lunch bag. Right, so here are some great options to satisfy those sweet and savory cravings is the founder of The Goods Mart, Rachel Krupa. Good morning. Hi, Rachel. Hi. Thank you for okay. having me back on. Let's jump in. Jump in. And Chanel's going to be in for a treat. Okay, you're yummy. Obsessed with so you. this yeah. is, it's fair and square. And it is a cheesy, crunchy cracker that you're never going to believe what the key ingredient is. What is it? Green banana flower. I've never even heard of green banana flower. I know. Flour. So it is a superfood that
that has tons of prebiotics. So it's a gut-friendly cracker that's also gluten-free, dairy-free, nut-free. So it's good for kids with allergies. You can yep. take it to school, and it helps your gut. Yum. Yes, it is incredible. Okay, you're obsessed with these snacks. Oh, Queen is one of my favorite. It is the first gluten-free, peanut butter-filled pretzel. Mm. And so you get that sweet, savory mm. combination. So how is it a little healthier for us than, let's say, the it's average gluten -free. thing? It's oh, gluten-free. It's gluten-free, but, like, it was created by a mom, and she has three boys, and she is a stickler for ingredients. Mm. And so if you look at the front of the packaging, you'll see that there's an ingredient transparency seal. Mm. So if you go to their website, you're going to be able to see where all the ingredients come from and where they're sourced. I Amazing. love that. So it's You know what? So you need incredible. to take some of those to Dylan. This is delicious. It Aren't is. they delicious? Sure. Yeah. It is. Um, okay, tell us about this butter, which is good for kids with nut allergies. And so, yeah, so if you have a nut allergy oak my house family, you, boy, oh, okay this is for you it is incredible it is again the world's first oat based bread it mm. tastes like a cinnamon graham cracker oh my gosh that's good i would eat right? that with a spoon in a jar mm. because it is maple syrup it's olive oil it is cinnamon mm. It is on that flavor. <laughs> Here we go. And then there's that. Yeah. And so it is incredible. It's again Yum. female founded, top eight allergen free, yeah. so school friendly. Oh my gosh, that's so good. This Give that great. to your boys. I know, they've never had it. Okay, go, go ahead. Back to school is not the same without candy. Mm -hmm. And so this is Tidbit. And Tidbits was also created by a mom after learning that an average American consumes eight pounds of sugar in a year. Oh, not gosh. sugar. Let me rephrase that. Candy. I believe that. Eight pounds of, eight candy, pounds of candy in a year. And kids even eat more. So she created Tidbits because Tidbits mm. is four grams of sugar in a bag made with real fruit juices. Oh my gosh. And no GMO has Not Wait, that's delicious. These right? All really Prebiotic. good. Prebiotic. Okay, Look cookies. Right. Cookie yes. Joy Day is one of my favorite cookies right now. It reminds me of a chewy chocolate chip cookie that we had right. back in the day. Yeah. But made with the help of top doctors, dietitians, and chefs. Amy, the founder, is a colon cancer thriver, oh and her family experiences diabetes. So as a mom, she wanted to create a cookie that she felt great about. Giving her okay. kids. In one cookie, if you look at the nutritionals, there is one and a half grams of sugar. One five, and a half? Yes, right. five carbs we gotta get and these two to, and a half. We gotta get these to, to Hoda. Yes, Okay. Yum. and so it is oh, incredible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So a great li low glycemic option. Okay. Last but certainly not me, this is for us. This yes. is our back okay. to school. Oh my gosh, I wanna this take yours. This is Cheers. top and bottle, and it is a coffee latte. And so it was created by two moms. Mm. It tastes like a milkshake, doesn't it? Oh my gosh, it? I, want I yeah. love this. Did you just drink it with your cookie? It. It's lightly sweetened with dates, <laughs> made on. with direct trade and organic coffee. And what I love is that make they make all their oat milks in-house. Oh my gosh, so they have this is milk, delicious. Milk, so there's no gums or dairy. Oh my gosh. Find all of these things. Because Rachel owns a market. This is Rachel, awesome. you're amazing. Cheers. Oh, cheers. Guilt free. Yes, and Guilt parents free. are going to be cheering for their kids going back to school. We'll mm -hmm. be back right after this. This is, good. This is delicious. Thank you for hanging you. out it's with a me today. Um, tomorrow, we're going to get grilling with Chef David Rose. And you want to dress like your favorite celeb? Well, we're going to show you how to get the look. Okay, today's Tuesday. Today's Tuesday. We're going to just chill. Remember, like you said, get some clarity. I enjoyed those and snacks, by the way. I know, me I'm too. I'm going to go get clear and have some more snacks. Me too. Let's eat.
Mishama Bailey has become one of America's most distinguished chefs. She's working in kitchens from France to right here in New York City, but it was her love of Southern cooking that lured her back to the South. We're gonna cook with her in a minute, but first, a look at her culinary journey. All these breakfast items are real improvement. Like, they really kind of boost up the menu in a really good way. And it's so happy. Mashama Bailey has much to be happy about these days. At 48, Chef Bailey's career is booming, a double James Beard award winner, including Outstanding Chef. Her debut restaurant, The Gray, in Savannah, Georgia, is a destination, and she recently opened two more eateries in Austin, Texas. We connected with this city just like we connected with Savannah. Austin was a good fit. A New York City girl who spent her formative years in Georgia. Chef Bailey is a French-trained chef who leans hard into her Southern roots. My mom is Southern and spent a lot of summers there. I've been pretending to be Southern all my life, you know? I just love, I love the camaraderie of the South. I love my family's history and I love how it shines through in food. And it was that time spent in her grandmother's kitchen which made Chef Bailey fall in love with cooking. She could turn something out of nothing. She always had a pot on the stove. It came from so much love, and it didn't really come from like this an abundance of having. It was like what she had, she shared. And I really tried to embody that. After an internship in France and a short stint as a personal chef, she landed a sous chef position in New York City. My most transformative time, me becoming serious about this profession, was my time at Prune. I think working for Gabrielle Hamilton was very eye-opening. Her food was very comforting, very classic. And I thought that I was becoming not only a better chef in that environment, but a better person. And in a male-dominated field, it was mostly women who impacted Chef Bailey's culinary journey until she partnered with Jono Morisano in The Gray. When I met Jono, it was kind of serendipitous. It was like, oh wait, I lived in Savannah as a kid. I want to move to the South. I want to be an executive chef at a restaurant. Okay, let's go see what this is about. But the location Jono chose for their joint venture gave Chef Bailey some pause. I've never seen a Jim Crow era bus station before. It was segregated, it has a dark history, but me standing in the segregated waiting room for colored people, I felt like there was some good vibrations in that space and I felt like I was gonna do good things there and I wanted to try. They chronicled that journey together in their memoir, Black, White, and the Gray, the story of an unexpected friendship and a beloved restaurant. Ticket, order fire, meatball, clam, and a fish toast. And that beloved restaurant, featured in Netflix's Chef's Table, continues to delight diners with fresh southern ingredients along with special touches from Chef Bailey's childhood. After the guests have dinner, we clear their plates and we give them a thrill. Locals would come in and be like, what? You know what a thrill is, what? That made me feel good because they understand that I have roots here. It's a little part of my history on the plate. Oh okay. my God, we're so excited that you're here. I'm just so in awe of what you've what you've created. Um, it's like roots and wings, man. You have it all. Yeah. You said your mom didn't want you to become a chef initially. No, or my father. They yeah. both thought that it was domesticated positions, oh. and they just felt like I was going to be broke for the rest of my life. So, <laughs> so now, like, now, what do they think? <laughs> they think uh, they they're very proud. Oh. Very proud. You very know, proud. I, I, what I love is that you're what. First of all, you brought us these thrills, thrill. yeah, which we want, yep, but yep, you yep. learned all of. Your, your love of cooking from your grandma. Yeah. Yeah, because it was, you know, we didn't mm. have much. Oh and we, um, well, let me tell you what a thrill well, is. Yes, yeah, tell us. So a thrill is something that women from the neighborhoods in Savannah mm. would make for the children of the neighborhoods in Savannah. And usually made of very inexpensive ingredients like Kool-Aid, sugar, water, yeah. maybe like 
if you spent 25 cent on a thrill instead of 10 cent, mm -hmm. then you would have fruit cocktail in it or something oh, like a nice uh -huh. surprise. Yeah, yeah. But it was, I mean, the Savannah summers are brutal yeah. and they last forever. And so it's really nice mm -hmm. in the summertime when mm -hmm. the humidity is high and the heat is high that you can actually have something to cool so you what, off. What's in this one? That's a grapefruit, pink grapefruit it's thrill. It's delicious. So it's um, some grapefruit juice and um, this is not, we don't do Kool-Aid at the restaurant. Well, just just to clarify. <laughs> <laughs> we had a feeling you did. Sir James Bird, Bird winning shop. So it's just grapefruit juice, a little bit of syrup, uh, simple syrup, sugar and water, and um, some ginger. <laughs> food from po' boys to beignets and every single thing in between. Yeah, and of course one of the most legendary restaurants here is Commander's Palace. This woman right here, Meg Bickford, is the executive chef who is not only creating unforgettable food but lasting memories. Take a look. <laughs> only in New Orleans is your meal accompanied by a three-piece band and a second line through the restaurant. Or at least that's the tradition at world famous Commander's Palace. Opened in 1893, it's a New Orleans institution. Chefs from Paul Prudhomme to Imre Lagasse have created staples in the kitchen. But now there's a new top chef at the helm. That's the Hushangale Eggs Benedict. Meg Bickford made history in 2020 when she was named the first female executive chef of Commander's after starting her culinary journey back there in 2008. I started as a garmage cook. Um, I was working hot apps and salads um, straight out of culinary school. And food has always been her biggest motivation. I grew up in a big South Louisiana family. My family, we grieved over food, we celebrated over food. I just knew that that needed to be a big part of my life. So beautiful. Her culinary style is inspired by the rich culture around her. Louisiana is a sportsman's paradise, right? So what we have access to, produce and seafood and game, is kind of unmatched. We in this industry are so lucky to be here because the city celebrates what we do just so wholeheartedly. The same way that the city celebrates music. Set her aside on this pickup. Every day, Chef Meg brings her leadership skills to the table. This restaurant is a place of learning. Hey, hey. Chef, what can I do for you? Chef Meg has this kind of grit in her hustle. She listens to her team. She celebrates their, their accomplishments. But if she sees a deficiency, she's going to nurture that. She's really one of the best role models that I could have ever asked for. Um, she's always encouraging me to uh, try new things and to just do better. And it really is a recipe for success. I want to create a memory for someone that when they think about it or they smell bread pudding, it brings them here. They could just be in this moment and be here and let us worry about everything else. And you just sit and enjoy. Um, can we just toast? Royalty! Can we toast? It's about time. The first <laughs> female chef of you Commanders. Do you made this cocktail for us. I what, did. Is, what is this called, This Meg? is the Tequila Mockingbird number two. 
Right? Okay. So oh. super simple but fantastic. We like that pun. And great for this kind of weather. Cheers to you. Mm. Thank you, ladies. Oh my God, man. Tequila, May. lemoncello, a little Ooh. Angostura bitters. Oh. Come on. Let's put this down so you know, can get to I like work. my big girl cocktails, right? That's a big I girl do, cocktail. I do, I do. All right, what are you cooking up for us, man? So we're going to do uh, Louis Armstrong eggs. So okay. this is one of my all-time favorite brunch dishes at Commander's. Looks like you put the Trinity in there. Is we that put right? Trinity in there, of right. course. All great things start with that. Um, we're going in with some garlic. That's a lot. Hit it, it is. Girl. Going in with jalapeno, a lot again. And we're going to cook all this down until it's opaque, right? So okay. a little translucent. Okay. Then we're going to add one of my favorite ingredients to our red beans. What? Pickled pork. Ooh, How do you so pickle it? We don't know what pickled pork <laughs> means. So it's kind of like salted pork, okay? okay? So it's going to season a lot of this pot. So we're not going to actually season our beans until they're nice and tender. I'll help you stir. Thank you. Into that go our red beans. So you, those are uncooked. You just plop them in. Right? You I soaked them overnight. Yeah, exactly so right. Done. So they don't take, you know, all day to cook. What's but going they on with that broth? What is that? Ooh. That's some chicken stock, chicken right? Stock. So we're building lots of flavors Look here with our oh. trinity, with our garlic, with our jalapenos, our chicken stock, our pickled pork. We're going to let this cook for hours and hours and hours. Hours. Right? Okay. So okay. we're moving on. Bye. So we so have here. Little cake? What's in there? This is a dirty rice cake. So we've got Trinity, again, lots of garlic, house made smoked on Dewey sausage, and our po Louisiana popcorn rice. Okay? Yes. Form that into a cake. We're going to go over here. Wait, what, what are you putting that? on there? This is our red beans. Oh. We pureed them super, super look at that. smooth. Amazing. Right? So look they're nice plating and velvety. It. Wait, look what's happening. Yes. Look at right? that, Jenna. Yes. Are yes. you seeing it? And this is rice. taking too long, so we're going to move on. Okay. We've got our beautiful crispy rice cake Ooh. here. Now, you said there's an egg. What's happening? There's the poached egg. So the poached it. It's brunch, honey. We're all about the Girl. eggs. Now, Same what's this delicious sauce on top? Yeah. So over here, we have mm, um, that. Hollandaise. hollandaise. Look, look, look. Our hollandaise is studded with smoky house-made mm. tasso. Mm. Here, we'll share. You want to share? Yeah, let's share. And we're going to do some. Wait, is there more? Beautiful green onions right Come on, on top. Meg. Come on. Meg, this is Meg. delicious. Good, right? Meg. Mm. Oh my God. I'm mm. so glad y'all mm. enjoy it. I mean, mm. that is amazing. Oh my. The best part about brunch at Commander's, yeah. outside of the food and the cocktails and the service and all the environment, is the second line. But you can't do it without your own second line umbrella. Oh my Wait, gosh. No. What? Wait. So, no, you didn't. Jenna! Uh -huh. Oh my God. I've always wanted Wait. one of these. Come on. Thank you, Meg. Oda. Are you kidding? <laughs> Oh my God! Personal. Second line in we style. love you, man. Thank you, Meg. We and to love get you. these delicious recipes, head to day.com/slash food. Okay, you know that in that moment, Hoda, where you take a bite of something mm -hmm. so delicious, you can actually taste the love that went into it. Well, that is the kind of food that Harlem chef Tammy Treadwell makes, and her cooking is just part of what draws the crowds in. Take a look. That's love. Wait till you taste that. Right in the heart of Harlem in a 15 square foot food truck. I got four po boys here. Yes, that's me. You'll find po boys, shrimp and grits, and a whole lot of good vibes. I tell people all the time on my corner on 125th Street, there's nothing but love. Love and Harlem are two things that are part of Chef Tammy Treadwell's DNA. In this neighborhood that's in every part of who you are. We are sitting in the Harlem Rose Garden. This is like so surreal because I've often said I'm that flower or that rose that will break through the concrete. No matter what you pour on me, I'm gonna emerge stronger and stronger. Throughout Tammy's sometimes challenging life, food has been what she calls her love language. I cannot talk about food without talking about my grandmother because her spirit is with me everywhere I go. I got my love of cooking from hanging around in the kitchen with her, not wanting to go outside because she was cooking and I wanted to be first in line to get the plate. There was a lot of people in my house. <laughs> After surviving cancer and getting laid off from her job, Tammy felt a calling to feed people. I'm taking care of all the flavors. In 2016, she broke through the male-dominated food truck industry and opened Harlem Seafood Soul. The idea that you had, like, all the things you had to overcome in your life. At your core, are you an optimist? Unbelievably. We live in a world of possibilities. I'll show you it can be done. Then in March of 2020, the unthinkable happened. Tammy was forced to shut her truck down. Then her husband, Greg, passed away from COVID. What did you lose that day? I lost 
my best friend. We had 38 amazing years mm -hmm. together. One thing I know for sure is that man loved me. I have never had a doubt that his love was real. There's a period in between fetal position mm -hmm. and standing up. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And there's mm -hmm. something that happens in that moment where it changes. What made you say, it's time to get out from under these covers? Mm -hmm. I started seeing the faces of the people in my family. They were looking at me for the first time like they were very concerned. Every time I would hit a wall emotionally, where I felt like, you know, I'm, today, I, today is not the day. I'm gonna lay back down today. Mm -hmm. And my granddaughter would say to me, Grandma, mm -hmm. when are you going to cook for the people again? <laughs> this time I looked at her like, hmm. you know, that's a good question. You know what we love about you is that you're not only sharing your love through your food, you're also sharing your love through helping others. Mm -hmm. That was the only motivation I had to cook, was to do something for someone else. I had to put my grief on the mm. side and move forward. Mm. And that's what I did. When, when the doors opened, <laughs> and did you wonder, are they gonna remember me? Yeah, I stood there for a little while like, Okay, I know y'all smell me. <laughs> I literally turned around um, to, I guess, stir the grits or do something, and when I turned back around, there was a line holding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There was a line, and there had to be, you know, at least a dozen people standing yes. in line, and they were waiting for me, <laughs> and they were smiling, and they were like, where you been? Oh. And we're glad to see you back here. Harlem is a village. That's how I was always raised to believe. There's a lot of love in this life. Mm. Just wait till you get the experience. Wait. Let's go. All right. Yes, let's go. Today, just shy of 60 and after a lifetime of hardship, Chef Tammy says she's in her prime and she'll remain on that corner as long as the community allows her to stay. Jenna, I'm gonna give you a little tip. Thank you. Stay careful. ready. I have worked so hard for so many years and now I get to do what makes me happy. Is she, she's amazing. We oh. love her oh. so much. Is it difficult to, to make this walk? One block is over three years of work and grace. This moment for Martha Gilreath has been years in the making. Where did you live? Uh, right on that side, right by these columns is where I'd usually stay. So this was your roof? It's dark and it's kind of chilly and it's, it's dismal. After years of addiction and homelessness, Martha is finding gratitude in this second chance. It's surreal. A lot of it was really, really rough. 
and ugly, and it just gets more beautiful every day now. My childhood was unbelievable, and I have five siblings. My parents have been married 43 years. We always had fun, and there was so much love. Someone hearing that would wonder, what happened? I thought people that were alcoholics or addicts came from a certain background. Girls like me who went to Cotillion and went to a good high school don't end up like that. And the truth is, this thing that I have, it, it doesn't care. It started, someone had some cocaine in a party, and I thought, this is fun, and it was scary, and it was exciting. Eventually, that progression looks like for me going to harder drugs and violence and homelessness and jails and hospitals. I was in active addiction for 16 years. And then at some point, you wake up living under the bridge. It's the scariest, because you're never safe. When did you make that decision where I'm willing to put in that work? I'm gonna turn it around. I think that the willingness to put in the work and then a moment of grace have to align. And I called my friend, Jesse, and I asked her if I could come home. I cannot live like this anymore. In December of 2019, Martha entered into a recovery center in Charleston, South Carolina, and that's where everything changed. Food for so long for a lot of us is survival. And so when people start to get sober and they start to enjoy food again, there was a kid there turning 21 in rehab. Someone had told me that he loved cheesecake, loved cheesecake, so I'll make a cheesecake. You know, I, I can figure that out. And then I see him with his new friends, and he is smiling. After watching this kid enjoy the cake, I, I'd never had any direction. I'd never followed anything through, and I said, I'm going to go to culinary school. So Martha returned to New Orleans in September of 2020 and received a scholarship to Noki, the New Orleans Culinary and Hospitality Institute, just one block from where she once lived underneath the bridge. It was very scary, but also it required all of the same things that sobriety requires of me. Following direction, patience, taking your time, doing it someone else's way. And it was through baking where Martha thrived. Defying all odds, she graduated as valedictorian of her class. When you look at, at who she's become, in the kitchen and out, what do you think? Pride. I'm really, really proud of her and really excited for her and not too surprised, honestly. It's everything that's inside of her that, that's come out. In the years since graduation, Martha has become an executive chef at a local restaurant and has started her own pop-up bakery called Nolita. We're gonna do a play on a morning roll. Yeah. Beautiful color, oh, and it's really goodness. fragrant. Oh my gosh! That's amazing. And one of the chefs that has always inspired Martha is restaurateur and Food Network host, Guy Fieri. He's about bringing joy. Mm -hmm. He wants to make people's experiences and lives better all around food. And Guy had a special message for Martha. Chef Martha, your buddy Guy Fieri here. You are a warrior. You have been through it all. And to just think that I make you happy and I make you smile, that you love food and enjoy it the way I do, well, my sister from another mister, I look forward to meeting you. I make it through New Orleans. I'm coming to Nolita. I'll be looking for you. <laughs> a lot of surreal things have happened to me lately, but that's at the top of the list. <laughs> Thank you for that. What's next for you? I don't know. And I think that's the exciting part. I, you know, one day, I hope Nolita becomes brick and mortar. What food does for us is its service to making memories. And so if someone could come in Nolita and then 10 years from then say, well, that's where my dad used to take me. I just want to keep being hopeful and grateful. If there are any parents watching, I just want them to know that their babies can still come home. There is always hope.
It's a sisterhood of restaurants with a purpose, run by young women finding inspiration in their own stories. Chef Zyla Cadillo taps into her Mexican heritage to create her cuisine. My restaurant is Etheria. It is a mezcal bar with vegan-inspired Mexican dishes. Chef Shinari Freeman leans into her southern roots for recipes. My restaurant is called Caden. It is southern soul food, plant-based focus. And Chef Amara Garib, daughter of an Ecuadorian mother and an Egyptian father, gets her inspiration from her father, who operated a pizza parlor. My restaurant is called Soda Club. It's a wine bar, and it's a plant-based uh, Italian fresh pasta. Did you catch this detail? All three skipped the animal products, but not the flavor. Look, I have to say, when you hear Italian food, when you hear Mexican food, when you hear soul food, I mean, there's a lot of cheese in those. There's a lot of meat in those. I'm Mexican. I grew up with my mom making Mexican food. How is it to make these particular types of food plant-based? For soul food, one thing you have to definitely focus on is the flavor profile. So just playing around with textures a lot, uh, different flavors, cooking techniques. I think the Italian food, you just stick with fresh pasta, you can't go wrong. Mexican people are indigenous people, and a lot of the food is from nature and from the gum. So I feel like it easily translated to being vegan. Raise your hand if you're a vegan. Okay, so Amira, you're not. What was this process like? I mean, were you like missing the cheese at all on top of a pasta or no? It's really easy to just cover something in cheese and it's delicious. <laughs> and then it tastes good. <laughs> yeah. It was more challenging because I was just trying to find substitutes to make it more traditional, but not traditional at the same time. We yeah. also have a group chat where one of us will be like, this is a whack cheese, don't use it, or this yeah. is a really good one, you should try it out, <laughs> stuff like that. You're all under 30 and you have the titles of executive chef at restaurants in New York City. I mean, how cool is that? It's pretty cool. <laughs> <Same>. <laughs> How's this been to go through together? Better than going alone. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. We're able to learn a lot from each other mm. um, and also learn a lot about ourselves, how we cook, and how to run restaurants. Their boss had full faith they could do just that. Ravi Darasi, founder and CEO of Overthrow Hospitality, who owns all the restaurants, decided to give them a shot at starting their own culinary concepts when they were working at the company in different positions. Was it this purposeful decision to give three women of color this opportunity to be executive chefs of New York City restaurants? I think subconsciously intentional, mm. if that makes sense. Mm. They were already in the company and the best suited for these positions. Over 65% of our 300 some odd employees were women and people of color. So we made the very clear decision to put more people of color in places of authority. So as they're hiring, they see through the lens of their selves. Of course, a taste test had to be part of this assignment to see how they stand up to the real thing. First, plant-based Italian from the Soda Club. So where should I start? Definitely with the ravioli. With the ravioli, okay. That's my favorite, yeah. That is amazing. You good? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm having a moment. Next, vegan-inspired Mexican food from Eteria. The mango salsa looks delicious. It was so good. Oh my goodness. And finally, I had to try a dish getting rave reviews. Fried lasagna, a soul food favorite at Cadence. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm blown away. <laughs>
apple pot pies. Yes. Can you imagine a riff on the chicken pot pie? I love it, but it's, it's sweet, not savory, sweet. right? It's a Can dessert. I ask you first, how's your leg? Did you my leg's all better. You had a surgery? Yeah, my Achilles. Yeah, okay. Don't ever hurt your Achilles, please. Uh, yes, <laughs> but you're all good. Okay. Yeah, I'm all good. So the apples, you need 12 to 13 gorgeous autumnal apples. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're using Granny Smith's and Rome's. Uh, peel them, cut them into like six pieces. Mm -hmm. Add lemon juice yeah. to stop the discoloration and add flavor. Oh, okay. A third of a cup of sugar and a little bit of salt. Just mm. kosher quarter, salt. Yeah, kosher salt, three quarters of a teaspoon, and allspice, which okay. has a very nice flavor. Half a teaspoon. You can stir that up All some. Right. And then you saute half of them in a pan. Add two mm. tablespoons of flour. Mm. Oh yes, a third of a cup of bourbon. Mm. That's good. That's <laughs> He's good. Like, yeah, well you a little bit more won't hurt. And you cook that up until it thickens just slightly. Mm -hmm. And then add okay. this. I guess it's cooking. Yeah. Is it hot? It's yeah. cooking. Yeah, it's a little too. So you wanted to get it like a thickened up sauce well, it'll, kind of. It'll, the, it'll thicken up in yeah. the oven. Will it absorb too. that ultimately? Uh, oh, yeah. Ultimately, okay. it will absorb it. You add that to your other apples. Mm -hmm. This is half and a half of the apples. Mm -hmm. Can I and stop then, Okay. Off mm -hmm. and then these stir all together. Ooh, yum! Oh my God. Spoon them into. <laughs> oh, stop it! <laughs> he just added more. Spoon Boom. those into a pot pie dish. Oh, that's cute. You see this cute? And this okay. is one no, serving. So uh, you didn't put the pastry under, I know. Uh, no, no, no. Pot pies always have the pastry on. <laughs> top. Oh, that's right. That's right. You no. Know? So here's a square of puff pastry, just mm. like that. Can you pre-buy that or? It's store oh, yeah, yeah. It's a store, but you can buy it. They, there's very good home uh, frozen, frozen puff. Make a vent hole in the top or two, mm -hmm. and put that easy. like that, and then egg wash. Mm -hmm. Just a uh, wow, softly eggs. beaten egg. Yeah, the beautiful color, beautiful. isn't it? Uh, these are farm eggs, really, really great. When do these things sit in water? I see water sometimes in these well, pans. Oh, no, not here. No, no, not here. You don't want to do, okay. because you want this to, to uh, puff up, and the finished dessert will look like that. Top, How long in the oven? Top with 375 for about uh, 40 minutes. Okay, yum. And so delicious. A really cute uh, single-serving dessert. Oh, that's now, easier than it, Martha, actually. Oh, my gosh. I would never these are that. awesome, by this the way. This is my happy place. Oh, my right God. Here. No. It's very impressive. We can't even talk. Yeah. So now, delicious. do you know what this is? Do you know what that is? Granny Smith apple? I don't know what that is. Do you know what that is? A I'm afraid an apple? This is a quince. But it's oh. sort of a cross between an apple and a pear. Oh, OK. But oh, it's yeah. not edible it's uncooked. Apple. It's really, oh. they're very sour, very hard, very fibrous. So we cut them into uh, five quinces. We cut them, take the pits out, peel them, mm -hmm. and poach them in a wonderful syrup of maple syrup. Mm -hmm. Here we go, Half yeah. uh, one cup of maple syrup. Mm -hmm. And about a quart of water. Watch Carson try to put bourbon in. A that. vanilla bean. <laughs> I already did. Boy, this is you have to split the vanilla bean. It's a little oh. hard over here. Oh, that's cool. And let the vanilla bean and scrape it. You want to get all those seeds out. Do you know how to do that? No. Yeah, see the Never seeds? Done that. Those oh, are vanilla wow. bean seeds, oh, see? Good. And you leave the thing in. But then you yeah. put the seeds in. And poach all of these until they're tender. <laughs> Look what they look the color they. Why turn. did you take the seeds out and then you put them back in? No, no, no seeds. Oh, okay. I thought you no, put no, them in there. No, no the okay. vanilla bean seeds. Yeah, that's what yeah. I mean. Yeah. Oh okay. no, because that's the flavor. Oh, okay. Now here are your cooked quince. Wow. And you add to this cooked quince just a little bit of the reduced poaching liquid, mm -hmm. and is that the one the liquid from your pot? Yes. Okay. And you boil it down, yeah. and you uh, add two teaspoons of cornstarch. Mm. Cornstarch will again thicken the juices. So you don't have a very runny dessert. Okay. And these, <laughs> that Woodford Reserve is going to love you. That's a good bourbon I love them. too. That's made right down in Kentucky. Mm. I know. Yeah. My people. Okay. So now this goes right into your baking dish. Okay. Let's do all that. All thicken up. And this is the topping, which is flour, oh. cornmeal. And you can just oh, I love that. Put this it's just all a crumble. Over the top. Yeah, it's oh. sort of a crumble. Mm -hmm. All over the top like this. Had a quince in your this life? You know, taste oh, it. You're you. gonna I love it. This is fantastic. Yeah, Have you tasted it? Think what do you think, guys? You love it? So good. Yeah, someday yeah, my quince will come. This is a quince <laughs> crumble. I don't think I've ever had a quince, Martha. Oh, it is We're so having our first good. Quince. Have you had a quince before? I, I grew. Oh, no, you oh, I grew yeah. quinces. I've never heard of it. It's been a best quince year too. Really beautiful. Really good. Put this all over the top. 
and sprinkle your almonds, sliced almonds on top of this. Today.com slash food is where you go. Yes. Mm -hmm. Pick up Martha's book. It's yeah. fantastic. We and ran out of time. Book number, book number 100. Have you written your tell-all yet? It's coming. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. It'll be a good one. Uh, Thanks, <laughs> Martha. I bet it'll tell some tales, Martha. And cranberry. So don't, don't forget the cranberry skillet cake. That looks so good. And the recipes are on the website. And fruit desserts is out right now. Delicious. Thank you, Thank Martha. You. Thank you. Mm. Great Martha Stewart. She's making one of her favorites. It's a classic fish burger. And with more than 50 cookbooks full of recipes, for you to say this is one of your personal favorites, I mean, it's got to be good, Martha. Well, I I really like the fish hake. It's a an expensive fish compared hake. hake. Huh. And uh, it's a member of the codfish family, and, and it's a wonderful white fish. And when you cut it up into nice little cubes like this, it comes like that. That's a, uh -huh. that's a fillet. Mm. Um, just Is it like a halibut? I've never heard of hake. No, no, it's, it's lighter than a halibut. Okay. Uh, and, and as I say, less expensive. Breadcrumbs. Uh -huh. Nice, fresh breadcrumbs. So just take a white loaf and grind it up in the food processor. Okay. Two eggs. Yeah. Mm, really easy. Are those eggs from your farm? Yes, they are. Of course they are. <laughs> yes, they are. The, oh, the hens are laying really well right now because of you just warm use, like, weather. By the way, can you use the boxed uh, uh, Italian breadcrumbs or panko or something like that? Uh, work, yes, or? you could. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. okay. I, but, I know you make uh, everything fresh. Though. But so this is a delicious and a little bit of cayenne pepper, which is very nice. Did you catch the hake in your little lake out there? <laughs> no, the no, hake is a saltwater fish. Okay. Not a fresh. How come one? you don't have a saltwater pond? Um, well, I'm so sorry, but in Maine I do. <laughs> okay. In Maine I do. In Maine you do. Oh, okay. okay. Well, well, then don't apologize if you have one. Incredible. A teaspoon of salt. Yep. Some. Some freshly um, ground ch uh, chopped chives. Right from the garden, no oh, doubt. Yes. And uh, don't forget capers. Yeah. Capers. Ooh, about are those a, crushed capers? A quarter of a cup mm -hmm. of chopped capers. Chopped mm -hmm. capers, okay. Rinse them on, out of the jar and then... Uh, How about some and, uh, mayo? Are you going to bind oh, this thing? Definitely. You're making like a crab cake, basically. It here. is. It's like a crab cake, but it's a burger. This because we're not going to... Amazing. Yeah. And here's the mayo. We have so our taster. Chanel's already finished. Oh my gosh, I'm almost oh, finished. Oh, this oh, is oh, phenomenal. What do you good. think, guys? It's so good. It's so good. Oh, Carson, wait until you try this. Why don't we eat more fish burgers in America? I don't know. Oh, it's not that be. hard to make. No, no, it's not hard at all. And it's all. a nice alternative to red meat. Uh -huh. exactly. It is. Or chicken. It uh -huh. is. And, or turkey. Right. Turkey burgers are good, too. They're one of my favorites. So this is a very nice mixture. Um, make the burgers. The nice way to make them uniform in size is to use a little ring like this, yep. like a biscuit ring. Okay. And uh, just take some of the nice mixture mm -hmm. and put mm -hmm. it in here, pack it. Mm -hmm. And I, I like to put this on parchment paper and chill it before I oh. um, oh, actually that, cook mm -hmm. the burgers. Look at that perfect burger. That's ideal. See how nice? Yeah. So I have, some, at home, I have some that are already chilled. Okay. Yum. And they're going to go and why, right Why do we chill a, it, Martha? Why, a little why? olive oil. Why do you chill yeah. the burger? They hold their shape. Just hold oh, it together. Hold it together. Oh. Yeah, because the breadcrumbs and the mayo, it, it all Got it. gets mm. a little bit uh, firmer. It's a cold plunge. It's all the rage. And then just brown these. Yeah. Uh, and it takes about good. eight minutes or ten minutes to cook. I gotta go back to the hake. How come I don't see hake well, at the, my you. local market? Is but it? you're not asking. You haven't looked. Oh, you have to ask for it. Yes, ask for it's it. It's there. What do they hold stuff They're, in the back? No, no, they have the salmon. And they have the cod. Right. I know they that. have I see the that. halibut. That's right. And some of these. Just are ask for the halibut. Dollars a, a okay. pound now. For the halibut. Just for the halibut. And now this is this one of the one of the garnishes is pickled onions. Yeah. So this is Japanese rice wine vinegar. Okay. A little bit of sugar and mm -hmm. a little bit of salt. It's like a sake. Almost. A red, a red mm -hmm. onion, sliced, mm. peeled and sliced. You make and it. just let that stay for oh a day or two, and look what happens. It look pickles right up. Pickle. Yummy. Wow. See how pretty. What other sort of toppings you like to put oh, on your fish? Oh well, burger? I like I like the onions. First, a little mayo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can. They're not yeah, ready. Yeah, I'm just kind of. So you're not ready. They really aren't. I thought they'd no. be sticky. This is a mustard part, mayo, a, a mustard. buttered, a buttered brioche bun, Ugh. mustard mayo. So add about a couple tablespoons of. Dijon mm. mustard to your oh, mayo. Of course you would. It's so and good. And the brioche get that bun. ready, and Carson, then put a couple Perfect. pickled onions I'm on. Idea. Carson, how pretty try these are. Let me, while I have you, let me ask you just two quick business questions okay. here. Uh, book number one hundred, I believe, is in the workshop. <laughs> autobiography. I'm, I'm running home right after this to to take more pictures. My hundred favorite recipes will be my hundredth wow. book. Wow. Oh, and I'm we learned a little bit about you too and your uh, past. And oh yes, and a lot of a lot of you historic were a pictures. Never a Marine. Okay. No. <laughs> Always a Girl Scout. Okay, right. Yes, definitely a Girl Scout. And how about the Roku show, Martha and, Cooks? Oh, gosh, we're doing that. Um, we have so many wonderful shows on Roku now. We They have my whole library, yeah, too. That's um, nice. On channel 448. Mm -hmm. I live at 48. <laughs>
Right. I lived at 48 well, Turkey Hill me, Road. Well, don't and tell I people your at, address, Martha. Well, I lived at 48. Just, I'm just not like rent lean it? I'm not, yeah, two houses, both okay, numbers. I'm going to edit that out. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> don't edit ridiculous. it out. 448. Well, they don't question. know where it is. I'll take care of it on the West Coast, it's, but we're, it's you're in, in trouble now. It, it's, in, it's in Hudson, New York. No, no, yes, no, all right, just keep telling people. Has Snoop Dogg moved in yet? You're going to need his help here. No, not yet, but he, yeah, his bodyguard, Tiny, is this Tiny, Tiny, of course. Martha, as always, thank you so much. Thank you. Are you enjoying it? This is Let's kick off the outdoor cooking season. Who better than America's favorite lifestyle maven, Martha Stewart. She's out with a, a new book. It's a guide to all things grilling. It's called What Else But Martha Stewart's Grilling. Yes. The 95th cookbook. Yeah, well, 95th book. 95th yeah. book. Lots of those are cookbooks. But grilling, it's it's the season. The weather has finally gotten beautiful. Yes. And, uh, and people really like to cook outdoors. I enjoy cooking outdoors as yes. well. Yes. Do you have a grill less. like this, a charcoal? I, or? I'm a gas guy. You're a gas guy. Because it's faster for me. Okay. Got the small kids. I'm just trying to get in, get out. Right. But I know you love charcoal. I love, I love real hard charcoal, the kind the jewelers use. It gets up to 900 degrees. I like it really hot, and I really like pure. So I don't want to use any starter. Don't use those starter fluids. Okay. You know, start with you know. But How do you keep your grates clean? I mean, well, your... first, of course, put your grill away clean. Every okay. time you use it, use a brush like this. Scrub that grate so it's nice and clean. Okay. You can use a little bit of oil on a piece of paper towel and a, and a tong like this and yeah. clean, your, clean your grill. And then you cook. Now, this chicken has been cooking for, oh, about 20 minutes. You want chicken that's for the first the first recipe, you want the chicken 165 degrees. 165, you yes. need your outdoor thermometer. Yes, sure yes. You, you have your little th re instant read there thermometer and you just use that. All right, let's get then, cooking here, Mark. Okay, let's so this, this chicken. is chicken with green chili dressing. It is so delicious. Once it's cooked, you make a dressing of cilantro, uh, zest of lime, juice of one lime, olive oil, and we can make this dressing ahead of time. Oh, yes. Okay. And you can say it actually gets better ahead of time. Some scallions, some serrano peppers. That's your dressing. That's pretty simple. And, oh, it's so simple. How long do you marinate? Um, well, you don't marinate. This is cooked on the grill, oh. just salt and pepper. Okay. And then you put the dressing on after it's cooked. Oh. And there it is. And everybody's going to have a taste. You're going to have a taste of this. You're going to love it. They're already this. tasting now. Oh, yeah. What's the verdict, now, Carson Daly? What do you think? Oh, I mean, Fantastic. come on. Chicken, Martha. good. What can't you do? It's amazing. The next thing is the Korean uh, skirt oh, yeah. steak. That's the best. And now these are, it's sort of like a skirt steak, but it is a uh, short rib cut in the flank style. See this? See how beautiful I love this ribs. Is? They're my favorite to yes. cook on the grill, but so traditional instead of ribs the long take ribs, yes. This is cut in a, a, the opposite oh, direction, and boy, is it good. This is marinated. And the marinade is soy sauce. Not marinade, no, no, marinade. Mar marinade. Marinade. <laughs> and it's, uh, it is rice vinegar, sesame seeds, white or black, soy sauce, scallion, a little bit of light brown sugar, and freshly grated um, ginger and garlic. Okay. You want to grate a little ginger? Yes, ma'am. 
how uh, how much ginger do we use? Well, you just just grate it like that. Yep. You know, a lot. Go back and forth. Yes. And then you don't be afraid, all... Melvin. Just grate it. I'm grating it. I'm yeah. grating it. Martha, is that enough? <laughs> yeah, that's good. And okay. put that all in there. Yep. And then your short ribs go right in here. Those short ribs go right in here, and you put them on the grill. How long? How long? Uh, I do this overnight or okay. a couple hours before. So if you're if you're a late night, you know if you you want to come home and cook, yes, these should be marinated o- overnight. What's the verdict on the short ribs? So, I, my yeah. favorite. It's really good. Really they are all Very marinated. Nice. Clean plate club. And then you just put these three minutes aside. I'll do that for you. Yep, you do that. I'll make myself useful here. Three minutes aside. Oh, yeah, nice and flat. All right. Yes, ma'am. And you can also use these protective gloves. Burn these have a little bit of silicon on them. So if you want to pick oh, stuff look up. Look at Guthrie helping out there. That's oh, right. Good. Do the we, got a, we got a burner over Five here. Five minutes aside. Yeah. Oh, okay. We got okay. about 20 yeah. minutes on this okay. side. Okay. The others, yeah, do it that way. Yeah. Uh oh, yeah, that's I got pretty, there just in time. Pretty well done. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so this is served on lettuce leaves oh, with kimchi and the, um, the wonderful um, fermented chili down. sauce. Do you like that? And scallions and cucumber. It's and really this is one. so, so delicious. That's how you serve it. All right. What so do you think? I'm a big fan of uh, creation. And then grilled there. salmon is oh. my favorite because I love light salads in the summertime. And a grilled salmon, this is a salmon that's been overcooked. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. Oh, that's, fine. That is so beautiful. Look how nice. Use one of these baskets for doing fish. Cooking fish can be a bit intimidating on the grill. It, it, I yeah, find that it falls apart. Yeah, or, but this is this great, why you have one great of those. basket. Yeah. Use one of your yeah. this is Martha Stewart basket. It is, but uh, but uh, you can find these in uh, other brands too. What's in the salmon salad and really then quickly? Salmon salad is the, is the uh, salmon that's been cooked with a little bit of lemon zest. Always squeeze wow. fresh lemon juice over it. Flake it up. You want to flake it up or you can stir. I'll stir it. Yes, ma'am. There. And there's a great dressing. Do you like anchovy? I, I do, in moderation. Oh, good. <laughs> so there's, there's a dressing with olive oil, anchovy, a little mustard, salt, and pepper. Just pour that all over the whole thing. Whole thing, whole bottle? Yep. Okay. And then flake the salmon into big flakes. Al, what's the verdict? This is terrific. Delicious. Like a salmon Where'd you get these eggs? Martha. Martha, Martha, those those, are, those, eggs those, right those are eggs right at. Fresh. You can find all the recipes today.com slash Martha Stewart Stewart for Martha's yeah. book. Yep. Today.com slash shop. We're back today, food. We're heading to this 4th of July weekend. We have called in the expert to sweeten the celebration. Martha Stewart's here. She's going to show us how to make a sour cherry pie with three different spins on the crust. Is that right? right? Exactly. Sour cherries can be hard to find in the grocery store, no? Well, they're, they all, it's a very short season. Okay. So maybe two weeks, three weeks at the most. All right. And most of them come from places like New York State or Michigan, and they're beautiful. 
They're like little rubies, oh. and but you have to pit them. Okay. Because otherwise, your family or your friends will break their teeth. They have already. These have already been. Yeah, pitted, this is so this is a silly little pitter. Okay, that there's is a not better, the pitter you want. No, because there's a better pitter that I don't have with me, and it, it does multiples at, at the okay. same time. So, oh. this is aren't the they good? Today's show pitter, we won't be. Using that. <laughs> okay. And so here is. The f it's the pits, exactly. <laughs> so this is the first crust with a nice fluted edge. Always make your pastry cold, cold butter, cold flour, okay. cold water, and then uh, roll it out, keep cold it heart. chilled. Fill it with the filling, which is sugar, a little bit of flour, a little bit of butter, and this is the crumb topping. Mm. This is, is this the easiest of the toppings, Martha, the crumb topping? Yeah, very easy. It's just butter, flour, uh, brown sugar, and a pinch of salt. And so you just crumble the crumble over the top of the pie, bake it hot, like in a 400 degree oven. It is so good. I love Let's a crumble. See. Yeah, isn't it great? So yeah, yummy. crumble, crisp, yeah. whatever you want to call it. But it put a lot on because it really does yeah. enhance the sourness of those delicious cherries. Okay. Now here is a very cute topping. This is the solid crust pie. Okay. And this is you cut the you cut the a little. If you have a round cookie cutter, you can do that. Yeah. But you can also use a pastry cutter like that to cut the rounds. This lets the steam escape, oh. and your crust will get nice and crispy. Do you have a favorite? Top, a favorite crust top? No, no, no I make all of these. Okay, all you're agnostic these. when it and comes to And now the, okay. this is the most complicated. You roll out your dough and you uh, lattice top. Mm. The lattice top. Lattice top. That, that looks intimidating. So you can fake it and oh, just put it good. over, put them one way and then the other way. But if you're very particular, you can actually oh, weave wow. the lattice, see? What's the hardest part about it? The weaving or getting the pieces to be Rolling uniform? it out, rolling yeah. it out, and then cutting it with a little pastry wheel like this. Oh, yeah. How's what's, that? Would you like that pastry wheel? No, that's no. Yeah. There's, there's, no, there's, why'd you ask? Because you, you knew what she was going to say. Because Martha and I have been together a long time. There are, I know there, are better, there are better pastry I'm wheels. I'm just stirring the pot. Yeah. But, it, a but it spoon. works. It works. It don't, you know. And so now remember, this one has to go way under here. Okay. So Because you're going to weave it. And say. do you bake, bake the pies off for the same amount of time regardless of uh, the, the crust topping? No. Some of them take a little longer than okay. others, like the solid crust will take a little longer than the lattice. But look how pretty when you really weave it. Okay. I want really to talk good. This lemonade is what? This, this. Well, this is sour cherry lemonade. Oh. Very so sour. you can put your sour cherries, make a make a uh, syrup a of, of the sour cherries. Well, that's good. And, and that's you refreshing. mix it with lemon and orange and a little bit of mint, and that is so good. Sour cherries are just one of my favorite fruits. Martha Stewart, you're one of our favorite people. And here, this is for you. Oh, Martha made me cherry pie, y'all. So Martha, these cute napkins. So cool. Did you make these uh, too? Yes, these are these are bandanas, and then you can stencil the names on them. Oh. That is. So Recipes today.com slash food. We are back with Today Food, the one, the only, Martha Stewart. Martha, Martha, yeah. Martha. We all know she's the queen of decorating, cake baking, <laughs> and gardening. Well, now she's sharing an up-close and personal look at her many talents and interesting stories. She's got a new show. I cannot get over this title. Martha Gets Down and Dirty. 
Take a look. The best use of a chainsaw I ever heard, though. A couple was getting divorced, and they could not decide about what to do with their home furnishings. And the wife just said, OK, well, you take half of everything. And she went away, and her husband used the chainsaw and cut everything in half. <laughs> So That's it's a feel-good show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Didn't bode well for the dog. Yeah. Martha, good morning. You're out in uh, your, your, your house out there in the country. We love it. So how'd you come up with this title? I mean, I think we knew you were down and dirty, we deep did down know. inside. But everybody else thinks of you as like the queen well, of clean. Well, I am the queen of, queen of clean inside the house, but out in the garden, it is kind of dirty. You're working in the dirt, right? <laughs> yeah. So it gets me a chance to just, just kind of be myself and, and, uh, and show all the great gardening tips, how to grow things, how to cook things outdoors. And, uh, and today we're grilling all kinds of fantastic uh, sausages, um, which which I know Al Roker would really like. Mm. And the guests on our show are fantastic. We have Kim Kardashian. Tiffany Haddish is a hoot. Mm -hmm. And there's some guy called Al Roker. Oh, Al Roker, Roker you on the show, it. too. I, yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I forgot because it was and during the pandemic. But yes, I, we were talking about yep. the, the rub. Yep, and he, and he does a great rub. <laughs> so, oh, barbecue rub. Barbecue and, rub. They did say it was yeah. Martha down and, and dirty. Bar barbecue rub. Yeah. <laughs> well, Martha, tell yeah, us about these. the show's on Discovery Plus. Yeah, okay. Tell us about these dogs you're grilling. Like, it, is there an art to it? Oh, well, all kinds of dogs. You know, if you're going to have a grilling party, why not make it really interesting? Not just hot dogs, but special all-beef hot dogs, kielbasa, uh, Ooh, a Greek sausage we just found Ooh. called called uh, Lucanico. It's it's a combination of uh, meat and uh, oregano and lemon, mm. and we have beautiful cheddar bratwurst. Oh, These are so yum. pretty. And, uh, and then, of course, don't forget the rolls. The rolls have to be uh, beautifully buttered. Uh, before you put them on the grill oh, and no. grill make sure yeah. you don't burn stuff. Yeah. You know, Al Roker, he's he's also a proponent of not burning stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, if the flame is up high like that, just move the stuff or spray it with a, a little spray bottle. But get your your rolls nicely, just slightly charred. Mm -hmm. And the condiments, oh my gosh, look at all the condiments we have on here. Bread and butter pickles, French mustard. Mm -hmm. um, this is the, uh, you know, the baseball stadium mustard, of course. Mm -hmm. Chopped onions, red relish, green relish, sauerkraut, my favorite, mm. sour cream. Uh, you have um, uh, spicy mustard, tomatoes chopped up, and this is fantastic, a, a beet horseradish mustard. Oh, wow. so, horseradish. And bacon and dill pickles. Yum. And doesn't that make your mouth water? Don't you want Looks one good. of these right now? I wish you were here. Martha, uh-oh, uh -oh, uh -oh, Maybe you ought to close the lid, Martha, just to kind of knock that fire down. Yeah, that's yeah, a good for idea. For one second, you're right. And I love this grill dome. This is a custom colored. You can get it any color you uh -oh. want. I love mm. this. So you, yeah, you can have it match your house, your backyard, whatever. It's a really clever, clever thing. Yeah. Oh, so there let's it goes. Uh, let that hey, cool Martha, down a little bit. Hey, Martha, yeah. what's your per describe how you would prepare your perfect hot dog? What What are your condiments? What do you like on yours? Oh well, let's let's get one right here. Here's a hot dog. And on a buttered bun, and I would put first, I like French mustard, so mm -hmm. I would put a nice mm -hmm. Dijon mustard on. Oh, yum. I love relish, mm -hmm. and I would put relish. Do you know I have a hot dog at every hot dog stand? It's called a Martha dog. What? And, uh, and every place is a little bit different from, yeah, Rutz Hut has a Martha dog, uh, Raleigh's in Fairfield has a Martha what? dog, uh, the great hot dogs, the hot dog place in California and L.A. has a oh, hot Pink's? dog called the Martha dog. Oh, yeah. Pink's, yeah, I have a, does Al Roker have a hot dog at Pink's? I do not, I do you not. You have a Roker dog. I'm not Martha Stewart, oh, well, come on. I think, I think, I think you should be working on that one now, because those are very famous. Uh -huh. And so that's what I have, pickles, and I love bacon on Mine too. Oh, I'm wow. gonna put a piece of bacon in oh, there. That's a good one. So there there's you go. my hot that's dog. A good one. Well, I love and Martha. Martha, <laughs> Martha, one more thing. What do you call them when it gets really crispy? When your dogs get really crispy? Oh, snappies. 
these snappies. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. And I right. love those. Yeah, um, Rawley's is famous for snappers, as well as Rutt Hut. Rutt's Hut is also uh, famous for snappers. Okay. That really? you get, you know, snaps, snappers, you put in hot oil first. Oh, you know, you, oh, you fry right. them a little What's bit. What's happening to that Martha, that's yeah, the yeah, scene. Okay. 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 Well, I just opened it a little flame going on. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All, right. All right, Martha, okay. thank you so no, much. No, this is good. <laughs> okay. Today, food and your special invitation to one of Ina Park's mm, dinner parties mm -hmm. is happening right here in our studio. Ina is showing us simple ways to make your table stand out, something that she does so well. She's got a new show out, guys. It's really cool. It's called Be My Guest. Uh, and look who already got an invite. Really? Yeah, Willie got in. I know. Ina promises us, too. You were eventually. totally invited. Okay, we're totally we invited. to be. Do you, how, what do you, how do you like the show? It's so much fun to do, I can't tell you. I love the connection with people. Yeah. And especially coming out of COVID. It's just so wonderful. And some people, it's you know, well, some people like Julianne Moore, you kind of just met we, for the first time. We we were Instagram buddies, but yeah. we never actually met, and oh. we just so connected. It was just incredible. Oh, mm -hmm. that's so fun. All right, <laughs> okay, well, we'll await our invitation, but until that time, <laughs> okay, you we're totally going to make our, di our, our dinner party. You're going to okay. teach us how to set the table. Do you believe in a big dinner table, a big the dinner party The first thing about a dinner no? party is it can be four people. Four? It okay. doesn't have to be 12. It's overwhelming, even for me. Mm -hmm. So so I'm going to set a table for four. A table okay. for, for four. You. So I have a round cloth on the bottom. Okay. okay. And Stop. then I put, you want to grab the yeah. end of this? Uh -huh. okay. So was this a runner? Mm -hmm. um, no, it's just a, a square of fabric, oh, actually. Oh, okay. Oh, that's and it? It's right in the middle. Mm -hmm. Right on top. And it just drapes on top. Right. Okay. okay. Perfect. And then plates. Yeah. Okay. And do you do like a color theme or? I just, I, yeah, try and, try and, so you want to put the plates uh -huh. around? Yes, I charge? Will. Okay. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm in, in charge work. of plates. Okay. <laughs> now, okay. what's two, you said over and 12 napkins? is too many people? Is that 20. the story? It's for too you? exhausting. It's exhausting. It's exhausting. It's just too exhausting. Okay. So napkins uh -huh. for everybody. Okay. You said there's no, you right, do sorry. have a color theme going. I do. Yes. Yeah, I do. Okay, yeah. Where do the napkins go? Left side. Left side. And they fold in like that. Perfect. Okay. I'm glad I can show you something. I know. Of course you can. Yeah. Now, can you use your like everyday old plates? Or uh, how do you like? Let's say you're like I have white plates. How can I yeah. jazz it up? I mix them up. I just oh, mix oh, them up. Oh, you do? That's I cute. do different chairs. I do different. So you know what? Okay. I'll uh -huh. show you one. Okay. The knife goes here. on the right. Yeah. That goes on the spoon. right. Okay. And then everybody wonders about the forks. Yeah. yeah. You do the first fork that you're going to use a salad fork first, and the dinner fork second. So oh, so the outside is the salad in. But board. interesting, you didn't put it on the napkin. I just I I like put the it on the napkin. Ah, oh, I nice. like so you can pick up okay. the napkin without moving the silverware. Okay. Okay. How's okay. that? Okay, so we get okay. the silverware set up. And then up. glasses. All right, mm -hmm. do that. We I'll do this. We gotta I'm in charge of And the then glasses. Work. I do kind of okay. glasses there. Yeah. It, this is the wine glass, the water glass, wine. That's wine. Okay. If, if you're serving white wine. Okay. You want a bigger one if you're serving red wine. Okay. And so for the centerpiece, you know, you can do something Wait, as simple as this. Uh -huh. Oh, bowl of lemon. easy. Get it at the grocery store. Oh, easy. that's cute. Right look at the, the, by the way, I don't know if you did on purpose. Color. You guys are matching, number one. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's the colors of the Ukrainian flag. Yeah, so did we? Look at <laughs> this whole entire yeah, theme is happening. But I'll show you another one that's what? really easy, too. Okay, okay what? Which is flowers. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. It's not so easy to do a flower arrangement, but if you do lots of bud vases, oh, you can move beautiful. them around until they're perfect. Yeah, okay. I, I do not know how to do a flower arrangement, I, but this is cute. You know what? Cute. They're hard. I don't either. Here, I'll get yeah. the last two. Okay. okay. And, and so now you've got like these fanciful kind of dancing flowers. I love middle. it. So your and guests are about to walk into your house. Right. What vibe are you setting? So when they open the door, what's the feeling? Right here. Yeah. Okay. Right here. Perfect. Okay. okay. Anywhere. You said you like music playing. I like when, when people arrive yeah. that there's music playing because yeah. it's not that moment when yeah. you arrive and it's quiet and you think, yes. did I, I arrive on the wrong oh, day? Yes. You're like, <laughs> loud okay? or not loud? Just, Just background -y? Background kind okay. of okay. bouncy. Oh, wait, we have a question for you, Ina. Yeah. Are you one of those folks that splits up couples at a dinner party or do you put them next to each other? I like them near each other. I, near, near but, but not, not next. I like, I like boy, boy, okay. girl, girl. So you're, everybody's sitting next to a boy and a girl. And lastly, for oh. the food, you only have a couple of seconds, but yep. you say make it simple make it simple what like how uh, what I do is I go to a, a, an Italian store yeah. or an Italian restaurant and get a lasagna I'm getting the lasagna and, and oh I love it and you said, it I can is. even I order takeout like if you, you set your table nicely right. you can make do a it. salad okay I assemble know. dessert Order it out. You're brilliant. We love know. you. Okay, should we start with the first sip and spill? We've got your uh -oh. favorite Cosmos. Okay. <laughs> okay, here we go. We're starting with Cosmos? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Be honest. What is Jeffrey's most annoying dinner party habit? 
Oh, well, he doesn't have any. There you go. <laughs> he doesn't. Okay. okay. He's just, there's nothing annoying nothing about Jeffrey. Spill. I know nothing is spilled. But can we right. sip anyway? Yes, we, we can. Okay, anyway. great. <laughs> now, what is this drink? It's what? a Cosmo. Yeah. What do you mean? <laughs> I know, but I didn't know if it was a special. I have no idea, but. <laughs> mm. Mm. Oh my God, yummy. Okay, sip or spill. Wow. Okay. And make Cosmos the way you do. Perfect. Oh, wow. absolutely perfect. Okay. 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 So make this is a really easy dinner that you can get on the table. The first thing is you order out a lasagna. I know. This makes it us feel so much better. But you put it in your own dish. Okay. So you're not serving it in some, you know, cardboard Can I tell carton. you that when I first cooked for my mother-in-law, yes. the whole dinner was from this restaurant close and to us. Did you, did you, right? Do you have to confess, I know, no, when no. they ask you? No. When they say, how did you make I'm, that? I'm what so you glad you like it. Yeah. That's it. Okay, got it. Got it. Okay. That? All right. Okay. Let's, okay so, so, let's... so we're going to start with um, Caesar dressing. Okay. So I, I just always like to make sure that the lettuce is really Cold? clean. Okay. No, that it's clean. So it's ice water. Okay. And then I do what I do is I cut it up. Uh huh. Um, and then like put it in a um, salad spinner. So what it gets if you nice extra and water out. I love a salad spinner, but, but if, if you, you don't, don't have one, this is what you do. What? You put it in a huge towel. Oh, a towel, Are just like our baby. <gasps> Wait, what? And you shake. No, you don't. And you watch what out. You, okay. Oh, oh you I'm, beat I'm, it? And you, <laughs> oh, you flip it around? You flip it around. You really? make a salad spinner out of it. I feel like Hogan did that with a bra during Mardi Gras. You're so sick. Because the salad, the dressing will stick to dry or lettuce. Okay. Okay. All right. So let's go make the dressing. Okay. Let's make okay. the dressing. So, so that's make... really the only thing we're making is the dressing. And you don't even have to turn the oven on. How's that? I, I'm so into everything. Okay. okay. So Caesar dressing is garlic and egg yolk. Wait, can you just look at this egg yolk? Look at this egg yolk. Isn't that what? Amazing? Wait, why? Why is it it's, orange? Why is it red? Because it's really good egg yolk. Okay. That, did okay. you bring this egg from no, the No. Your guys did it. Okay. So one egg yolk. Everything mm -hmm. has to be room temperature because you're, what you're basically doing is making like a mayonnaise. Is that great? Okay. Two, two teaspoons of gray poupon. Okay. <laughs> you know my favorite. Okay, how much two, salt? Two teaspoons. Two, 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 full, two teaspoons. full teaspoons. Okay. Half a teaspoon of pepper. One. Just mm. like that. That looks that. beautiful. Okay. Um, six to ten, eight to ten anchovy fillets. What if you don't like anchovies? I'll tell you what. You won't notice them in the oh, final dressing. Oh, put them in anyway. Okay. Put them in anyway. It. You'll be really surprised. I think that if end, it's clean. If you, if and it's a half a cup of freshly squeezed lemon juice. Half, half a cup must of lemon be, juice. Must be freshly squeezed. Fresh squeezed. Okay. What else? Do we need this? Yeah, in two seconds. So. Hold on, I'm putting you in charge okay, of this. Oh, you turn it on and okay. you puree it. Puree it, okay. okay. Got and it. And then you've got three quarters of a cup Dry of olive oil, okay. three quarters of a cup of canola oil. Mix all of Mix them together. Why do you do, do that? that? Because the olive oil has great flavor and the canola oil is light. Okay. So, okay. Do I and then turn it off? This is the, nope, leave it right oh, on. I'm scared. And then what you're going to do, like making mayonnaise, you just pour it in really slowly. And I'm going to put you in charge of this. Okay, I'm in charge. That? I'll keep You're doing You're in charge it. of that? Okay. okay. Pour it in really and what about slowly. And it gets absorbed. Yeah, you made these croutons? I made these croutons. They're, They're so good. Made from focaccia. But you know what? You can buy them at the store, too. You're making me feel That's so good like, about myself. Nobody will know. Should I do this? Put it right in. And this Parmesan? Parmesan cheese. Just so you can hear. Okay. Is that good enough? Um, well, we have to okay, okay, see so if we can get enough. it. Oh, not too fast. Oh, okay. Too fast. It has to be really slow. <laughs> this looks nice. So we toss that together, and we're going to put the dressing on it. So this is easy. The meal is the um, lasagna and the salad. And then for dessert, it's completely assembled. Mm. How's that? Okay, so you just take okay. this as is. Take that, uh, take okay. that off. Okay. We're going to put in. The dessert you just cheese. buy. Half right? a cup of Parmesan cheese. Okay. And then turn it again. on. And it's done. How's it's that? It's done? It's done. That was so That was By it. the way, look how delicious. And it's really that like. Looks. How do you get this? I don't, I don't know. know. Nobody knows. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to do a quick round of sip and spill. I'm going to just. I think it might already have dressing on it over there. I don't know. Okay, we got it. We're good. We're good. All right, one more sip and spill. Okay, ready? The dressing. Who was the best dinner party guest you've ever had? The best dinner party guest. Wow. Um, well, Taylor Swift came for dinner. She was pretty great. Wait, <laughs> that did was she fun. Sing? No, she's okay. just wonderful. But she's cool. What about she's... the worst? Oh God. The worst. <laughs> I'm not telling. Okay, good. I, I think it. I'm gonna have to sip. sip. This is I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna try that salad down here. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ina. This looks super wow. duper yummy. Wow, wow that's, that's got it. So dessert is vanilla Wait, ice cream. There. I'm gonna show you how to do this. Vanilla ice cream. Yes. Mm -hmm. With limoncello on it. Mm. And you just buy all the. You just buy all the ingredients. Look at that. Vanilla ice cream. Can I pour a little of this? Pour a little lemon cello and biscotti that I you mean, bought wait, what? at amazing. a bakery. And For that's dessert, and yummy. everybody will lose their minds. I know, and oh, this is so, so easy. Good. <laughs>
about these recipes, Ina, is they're easy, you could do it quickly. And everything's in one and pot everything's very in one often. Pot. Yeah. All one right. thing about you, though, mm -hmm. you're, you are precise. Yeah. Like, you seem so Extremely. chill. Yes. And you're not, like, that's why your books, everybody loves them, because you've easy. done the testing. Yes. Okay. Oh, not only over and over and over again, but I've given the recipe to somebody on my staff and watched them make it. Okay. So I see what somebody's going to do with the recipe, and they're, they, they're like, should I cut it straight across or chop it? At, Oh, so and that's I'm like, so smart. Oh, so Let me add that. Details. You add that ah. detail to it okay, so okay. that I know. So okay. should I put so this large making, chicken in the pot? We're making chicken um, in a pot with orzo. Okay. So it's all in one pot. So the first thing I want to do is brown the chicken. So okay. in order to brown a chicken, you just want to make sure it's really dry. Oh, Otherwise dry it, it steams. Okay. Uh -huh. Exactly. So let's, Oh, it really needs a Yeah, see how towel. when it's wet, it well, just, yeah. Yeah, yeah, just like that. See, okay. 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 And then we can put put it in the pot. Okay. And you want it nice and brown because that, that caramelization really makes a difference. Whoa! Oh, sorry, did I burn you? <laughs> no. I burned myself. I'm sorry. I did burn but you. You know what I love? The first thing you said was, did I burn you, even though you were on fire? Right. We're, we're okay. Okay, everybody's No good. fire I alarms. I burned a national treasure! <laughs> okay. So uh, this is going to brown, and then I'll turn it over and later. Okay. But, okay. Are, are these leeks? These are leaks. And the thing That's about leaks, leaks I know. Good. First thing with leeks, you don't want to take the green part off, because they're, they're kind of tough. So just like that. Okay. And then you want to make sure that they're really, really clean because they grow in dirt oh. so you don't want to let them get too um, you want to make sure they're really clean okay so what you do is chop them up like this kind of fine and then you know you do a lot and put them in water and just let the sand come out of it oh and then, that's what you're doing and then yeah. you take them out I like how you and clean you, everything and you, yeah you want to make you sure you have food, to right? all good. Do you know and then the you dry them diuretic they are amazing. Oh. <laughs> yes, good to know. No, anyone who's trying to lose weight always eats leek oh, soup. I had no Not idea. Kidding. Try it. Is that, that's, is that, that true. still a thing, or yes. is that a seventies so fad? Forget no. the chicken. Forget now. the carrots. Just eat leeks. <laughs> okay. Make soup. Okay. Okay. So the leeks are delicious, delicious though. Mm -hmm. um, so we saute um, mm -hmm. carrots and fennel and celery okay. and the leeks all in a pot like mm -hmm. this, and then, then we're going to take that. The chicken that so we browned. So you just browned it, right? Just That's browned all. it. Okay. All I did was brown it. Didn't cook it. Just because it, it looks yeah. better and it's and yeah. it's going to taste better. Put that brown Plain chicken beautiful. right back in. It already in. smells amazing. So and then we, first we put in um, saffron. Saffron. Well, saffron. I didn't realize the that's what saffron crocuses. looks like. Isn't that, oh. that smell fabulous? That's mm. what it looks like. And it's expensive because it is the stamens of crocuses. What is a crocus? A crocus is a flower. Oh. A little flower. Did Chicken you know that? Chicken sock goes in. There's stamen in a crocus? <laughs> I didn't you, want to you'd know, the... you'd know a crocus if you saw one. Okay. okay. So if you, you met pour, one, right? Pour so that on. Pour, that's just right. chicken stock? And then we're going to put water on. That whole water pot? Uh, exactly. Mm -hmm. So this is, it's going to cook in this pot. Yeah. And then... We need salt and pepper. This is a great kind uh, of thick of soup. Okay. You put it's, a lot well, it's in, actually right? going to end up being soup and orzo. So the orzo is going to absorb okay. all the all liquid. That. So this. Okay. Now we have one other thing to What's flavor this? it. It's an herb bundle. So I've got okay. thyme, parsley, and you tie it. And, and you could put it in, but then you'd have to fish it all out. So you tie so it. I tie it. it. Just I tie, tie it with a string. This so it flavors so it, smart. and then you can take the whole thing out before you have serve you it. Have you ever made an herb bundle, Hoda? <laughs> no, I'm herb? so excited. Ho Hoda's made an herb bundle oh, now. Oh my gosh. Right? The whole so thing So that in. whole thing goes right in. And that in. just kind of flavors That's it. it. Now this goes in the oven. Top, oh, top on it or okay. not? Um, it goes in the oven with a lid. With a lid, okay. For um, at 350 degrees. Okay. And it's going to. And then this is for about an hour and 15 minutes. And then when this comes out, yeah. I put the orzo. Well, you in. The orzo take the orzo. Like a rice, and right? just, uh -huh. It's pasta actually, but oh. it looks like rice. Mm. And you just put the lid on. And do you cook it for again? twenty minutes? No, and it just sits. Wait, you don't put it back in the oven. Don't put it back in the oven. Don't need to cook it. Can I sneak mm -hmm. over here? Come over here. What you end up with? And you end up with mm. with soup and orzo, and it's it's not soup. It's dinner. And the oh chicken, and you it pull is the chicken dinner. Apart. Mm. Wait, does Jeffrey like this recipe? He loves it. <laughs> Anything that has to do with chicken soup, he loves. You know what else oh is in your book that we just what? have to mention? It's the biscuits. And my girl, biscuits mm. have Dip to go it. with it. Oh god, right? The biscuits. Good idea. Cheddar biscuits. They're pretty good, aren't they? They are the oh best god. biscuit I've ever had. The best one. audience in the world. Oh my god, we love you so much, you guys. And you can get this recipe at today.com/food. Oh my god. And check out Ina's new book. I bet a lot of people will go to dinners. It's a great holiday. They gift as well at today.com slash book.
Comfort food is our Shepherd's favorite. Shepherd's pie. pie. Hoda's yeah. only been eating shepherd's pie for the last three days, so this is perfect. I heard that. I heard that about you. Now, this is classically <laughs> made with lamb. It's made with lamb and potatoes on top. Yeah. It's like, but okay. we're doing it with potatoes and beef because, yeah. yeah. Why not? You know what I'm saying? You could do it with we chicken or do turkey. It. You, yeah, you decide. You could go vegan and make well, this Well, she is vegan, but she can have the potatoes. <laughs> yeah, so we're... I just ate broccoli for one day. What, yeah. you, what about last night? Did you have any meat? <laughs> Did you have meat last I had night? Two bites. Oh, I love this. It's take. over. Are you two on the phone with each other? Like, what did you just eat? So, so <laughs> let, let's make something. Okay. Let's make something that you can't eat, and okay. then we'll talk about how <laughs> you can eat it. She can eat it. She can eat the potatoes. Okay, perfect. So let's start with potatoes. Potatoes in water, salt, and then when they're. Yeah. Would you like me to do this? Yeah, get in there. Okay. Is this and then sweet? yeah, and then we rice them once they're rice cooked, them. You drain I've never and rice and you that. can overcook potatoes for mash. It's you okay. don't want to get super this mushy. Thing. Just look tender. Garlic look at this. Huge. Let's see it. Let's see how satisfying that's going to be when it squeezes through. And it matches like, your oh. outfit. I mean, this is just oh. all in one. And look at that. Wow. Look at that rice job. Oh. Oh, 12 out of 10. Oh, that's yeah. cool. That's satisfying. My god. Isn't I've it? never seen one this big. And you could rice for Christmas? Any and you could rice any vegetables like this. So then we move on once we're excited about the oh, ricer. Geez. We, people. We, we, just a, did, we just did an infomercial for our ricer. <laughs> okay, so here's the potatoes. <laughs> yes, okay, I feel like we're at a there sleepover. Mil is there milk? milk, sour cream, butter, potatoes, mix. Okay. Now mix. you could sub in coconut milk. Okay. Oh, we'll do that for Hoda. <laughs> and Let's coconut oil, and you could do a mashed potato. She, actually, it's so funny that you brought this. Do you know her obsession with anything coconut? No, I didn't. I she genuinely didn't. She usually likes to put this on her skin. <laughs> All right, let's continue. Okay. So we, now we've got to make the rest of the pie. I love this. So come. over here, we, yeah, right, this on? is where we cooked the beef, took it out. Oh, oh, you can add it. all those vegetables. Oh, okay, you got And it. this is the base of the shepherd's pie. Look, this okay. is actually where the two worlds meet. You're doing Did the mashed potato. Oh, smell that. Perfect. Smell that. Is right? that rosemary? It's fresh thyme thrown in there and we just let that kind of crackle and fry and mm. soften we get oh, a little salt in there oh, and this i mean is what I, this just, looks just, like look what's happening mix it in there oh, with look. the peas mm. stock and a little red wine vinegar for a little acidity okay is Wait, this why you rice this cuz it makes it so smooth exactly and then Alex, you don't get the are lumps these cooked peas no, yeah, they're in. they're frozen. Oh, for, we're going uh, frozen. In, so I just frozen. leave them. I put them in frozen. Yeah. Well, you defrost and defrost. drain and throw them really? in throw stock. Them in stock. Little red wine vinegar. Red and wine these vinegar. are the two halves of the chef. Look, Look at this. Wait, we're I'm doing nothing. Looking. By the way, I'm gonna leave because you two have this. Okay, so now you mix all this up, and then what? And oh, then look. we come over come. here, come. and here's your mix that you just made. Okay. Yum. A layer of mash with cheese on the oh, bottom. Look at this. Wow. The meat on the top, right on top, like a little mashed potato mm -hmm. and cheese sandwich. And then you take more mash and, and put it on top. And then all the mash oh. and cheese goes on top, mm. and that's our little like mashed potato sandwich. Oh. And by the way, in my house growing up, lasagna was an appetizer for Thanksgiving, just what? to give you some wait, idea. What? Oh, wait, I might try that this year. What so are you doing for Thanksgiving? I always cook a ton of stuff, but if you need a break from leftovers, a comfort meal like mm -hmm. this in the freezer yes. that you introduce in between all your Thanksgiving leftovers can I'm kind so of be like... So, Alex, we like your portion sizes. Yeah, that's look, for one here, look at by this. the pool in your this, bikini. Can I have a fork? Yeah. <laughs> here, we'll I love yeah, this. Okay, there you go. Ready? All right, we're going to try it. And there we have it. Oh my God, the top the, looks so I know, crunchy. and then you broil that in the mm. oven. At, mm. yeah. Oh my God. Very mean mashed potatoes. I, mean, like I love your mashed here. potatoes. I love them. That's what's the same.
Alex Gornishelli. You look really good. Yes. Alex, First of all, really Alex is glowing. What I'm happened? Having a yeah, you, you are, look you have gorgeous. Good hair and you got good. Everything's happening. It's and also, the hamburgers. Even we also want to just say that you're the host of Food Network Supermarket Stakeout, and she's here with a decadent oh, burger. And by decadent, we mean. A big baby. This a is big huge. Burger. So wait, what are we doing here, Alex? What's first step? Well, I'm making a cheese sauce. Would you throw this cheese in Parmesan and like a little cheddar? And what? Okay, I like your style. My <laughs> tip oh. was going to be add your cheese slowly oh, so no. it doesn't clump. Oh, no. I love Alex. you, Alex. Go ahead, add that parmesan nice and slowly, nice. New York yeah. City style. Yes. Dump it in. Okay. And you stir it, a little mustard, a little hot ah. sauce. We just add a little bit to so just a little warm cream. That's I mean, going to be the sauce on top cream. of the burger? Is that what you're talking oh, yeah, about? Yeah, this and is the like, dunky. or a dippy sauce. Dip sauce. Yeah, well, I mean, you could literally make this cheese sauce and then just do put whatever. chips in Potato it. Potato chips yeah. or whatever. Okay, so now the big, the big Mongo moment. burger. The big yeah. moment is we're doing a triple decker burger with the cheese sauce, okay? We're going all out. You really are. What are you doing to us? For summer, but you said I look all yeah, glowy. It's do. all the hamburgers. So this is just a mix. Right, 8515. Mm -hmm. We want short rib and sirloin, those wow. are the good cuts. We form our burgers nice and thin for the triple decker. I like that because like that there's idea? three burgers. Now, so. do you put anything in there other than you the ground just meat? You keep it that. You know what? I'm glad you asked. People are always working their yeah, burgers, yeah. So it gets tough the to meat. Oh. Just make a little patty. Be gentle. But you don't want to add spices in there. You put them out. You just, put just salt just and pepper plain at the meat end. With some salt and pepper. That's it. You're a classic. Yeah, Not exactly. Like and then we just drop them in a hot pan and you just get them cooking. Is there oil on that? Yeah, a little bit. No oil on the burgers themselves, but just pop them right in the pan like this, right? But what's oh. in the pan? Just oil. a little hot canola oil. Oh, okay. That's it. We keep it really simple. You could throw these on the grill. When you're done cooking them and you have these lovely burger juices, that's where we make our onion topping. We go right oh. in the same pan. Ooh, and you pickle use, and pickle juice. Pickle juice. In Why? with the onions because it's like zingy yeah, vinegary. Yeah, I kind of like that. I love this it's idea. Yeah. You're using the meat juice and, and it, some pickle juice. And it's sitting in your fridge in a jar of pickles. You have one lonely pickle. Like, help me. <laughs> Get it. That's yeah. true. That what do you want to do with Dump it? it in there. Salad dressing. you have cramps. You should drink pickle juice. Is that true? I'm not uh, sure. <laughs> um, I think that if you have Memorial Day needs for a yeah. triple decker burger, it's good too. Yeah. Let's throw that in there. Okay, what are we making here? What is so this, we're a side salad? A little topping, oh, topping. Um, with a little oil, vinegar, a little um, wow. lemon, mm -hmm. a little. I feel like that tomato. takes it up a, a notch. Mm -hmm. Well, here's my other little tip is hmm. instead of doing slices that slide all around yeah, with the yeah. tomatoes, we cut them up so yes. they don't fall out. Look, as to put much. a little beautiful salad on your hamburger. So so, yeah. oh, so you toast your butt. So you do, yeah, I toast do my you, butt. Are you a toaster? Yes, of course I yeah, am. Yeah, let's toast it up. Sorry, Hoda. No, you like, you know what, for a hot dog, however, I don't. Because you, you want that. I want that mushy, mushy New York yeah, street yeah, dog yeah. vibe. I, okay, oh, so here's your, the cheese ooh. sauce. So this is how we built. A little Look of those that. pickly onions, a little bit of that cheese sauce, and we just build. Right, that nice mix. And then another patty on top. Yeah, we do that. And oh, then we wow. cheese sauce. Please. Three is yeah. Doctor Cheese is, Sauce. Yes, okay, yes, ma'am. Who's, who's this? Is like humongo. this is America. Yes. This is this is Memorial yes, Day. More, more, yes. one more bun. Less yes. is more. Oh, we gotta try them. Yeah, let's get it. Oops. Oh, so <laughs> love it. Perfect. That, I think three might be too many. Just saying. Yeah. No. You know. You can. Now, can two, you put you can ketchup on this, or you're not for that? You can totally put ketchup. My, this is I don't huge. think mine has cheese sauce. I can't work. Oh, it. that's oh, yours. We're switching. We're switching. Oops. No, give me that. <laughs> and then just a little potato salad to go with that. You could do two of these. Just clean and oil your grill and get it good and hot, and mm -hmm. you will mm -hmm. have great results. Keep Love it simple. Mm. So okay. yummy. <laughs> The last moment of this segment is just people chewing. I think this is a testament to the fact that people have got to get down potato with this. Salad potato is salad is basically has relish in it and mustard. It's no mayo. It's just a little olive oil and mustard uh, to keep it light for the burger. Olive oil and mustard, that's it? But yeah, there's a pickles. Bit of vinegar what are and these juice? pickles? And chopped up pickles and oh, pickle juice. And pickle juice. I put pickle, pickle juice, juice in juice everything. In. Yeah. Tell us about this no-bake pie. We love it. You don't have to put it in the oven. No, you literally just layer stuff that's delicious. Now, we've got a homemade, uh, we've got a store-bought uh, graham cracker crust. Like you that. could use, you could make it homemade. Butter, no, graham no, crackers. No. Okay, good talk. You're going <laughs> to put a little bit of ground cinnamon and salt on the crust itself. Wow, on the crust. To give it a little extra flavor, Ooh, right? I love this. Wow. Right? We're layering Ooh. the flavors in there. And then I have some peanut butter here. Okay. Mm. And I used crunchy. Now I you, like crunchy for now, some little texture, right? You do I you like, like a crunch. So. I do like crunch. Are you a smooth? I, you know what? A crunch in here. You know, I like a crunchy ice cream, a crunchy um, peanut butter on vanilla ice cream, which is what you're giving us. Yes. Yeah, so crunchy peanut butter. I added a little water. I saw just that. To, just to loosen the texture a little bit. 
Because that's what we, that's what we like to do because around here. Because we need to smooth it. Yeah, we're smoothing. Do you want to smooth? I'm smooth. Yeah. I love it how you're like, please smooth. I know. We're now, a good team. Now, when look at that. Look at this. You well, are the cinnamon. Uh, oh no, but boy. I, I can't. Okay. Oh, okay. Yep. Um, um, yep. All right. Talk. All right. I'm pretty. I'm pretty. I'm so pretty. Here we are. Okay. okay. You look good. Look. So you put the layer of peanut butter in the freezer. Right, to get a little Frozen. firmed up. And then we put softened vanilla ice cream on so top here. So how soft does this need to be? It, it's all, You see how it's yeah, almost, almost liquidy? Melted. So you can leave it out while you're doing the other layers. And this is, this. this is a so. peanut butter s'more vibe that we're going for. And then we sprinkle marshmallows on top. How fun is this? This is and amazing. And you can do this with the kids. A little brown sugar. By the way, brown sugar. I don't even yeah, know. I don't even know if the little... marshmallows would make it there, because I would eat all of them. I know. You are actually you're talking with a marshmallow in the most mm -hmm. brilliant way. Mm -hmm. Okay, we freeze that for a while. We let that firm up, and then what? Yeah, yeah. We're adding chocolate on top of this. Yeah, okay, and this then you do that. Now we add chocolate ice cream okay. on top there, and again, it's smooth. Yes. And by the way, you could do just vanilla. Or yeah. just chocolate. Oh, you can kind of sort of choose yes, what you want. Yes, absolutely. You can make this oh. easier and or use harder. any type of ice cream, frankly. And, yeah, and then we, we do a little more. We do some chocolate. Again, you notice we're always adding a little crunch, a little texture. Yes. We yes. didn't turn on our oven, but we're turning on the charm here. You sure are, just by being you, Alex. I and then like some marshmallows. Like someone who cooks without a measuring cup. That's what I love about you. There's yes. no measuring. I it's love just it. Do you ever it. use a measuring cup? Yeah. I really actually do, but in a case like this, uh, it's like, I mean, oh, there was too much chocolate. Yeah. There was too much whipped cream. I hated it. <laughs> That's not going to happen. And then we layer that that whipped cream on top. And you can put this right back in the and freezer. And you know what? And I, and I wonder if you agree. I think it's worth whipping your own cream. You know what? I do. And I like to use unsweetened so that it kind of yeah, counters all the sweetness. And I see what you want to put on top, which is some sea salt. Yes. So and then more chocolate. I like to whip my own cream. Yeah, and you know what? You Please didn't, don't be nasty. Sure, Jan. You Please didn't. Don't sure, Jan. You didn't turn on the oven. You can whip your own cream, and then you have this all on top, and you pop it in the freezer, and then oh my God, look! It's oh magically too. I got this for you for your birthday. Thank you so Happy much. birthday! You better give me more than a pie. <laughs> I will. Don't worry. This is amazing. The peanut butter is delicious. I love it. Is there one question that everybody asks that you're tired of? Never trust a skinny chef. If I have to hear that, I mean, my entire life, first thing out of people's mouth is, how do you stay like that and eat all that pasta? I'm like, I don't eat all the pasta. I eat a couple bites of pasta. I don't eat all of it. I'm Al Roker. Welcome to Cold Cuts. It's where we pile on the meats, cheeses, toppings while we pile on the questions. Today's guest is one of my faves. I have known her since she was about three years old. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Giada De Laurentiis, you know her from the Food Network. You've seen her on the Today Show. She's a producer. She's a director. She's no, a No, I'm not. Yes, you are. I'm just, yeah, go with it. You're... You do it all. Uh, she's a businesswoman, and most importantly, she's a mom, and she is a very nice lady, and has always been. I'm very a nice, nice to lady. Me. First of all, how's your how's your day going? Bright eyed and bushy tailed, and ready to do some eating and making, I guess, sandwiches. Bread, when you're making a sandwich. What I like you? all bread. All bread. I love bread. All bread. We but have we have different kinds here. I know. I mean, my favorites are a focaccia uh -huh. and a rustic, right? Mm -hmm. But I will tell you that my favorite sandwiches belong on a little facelle, like this. A well, little what? Facelle. Facelle? Facelle. I didn't know that's what that was called. Yeah, so it's a kind of a, a mix. It's Italian, but it's also French. The French make their sandwiches on bread like this. Uh -huh. There's not a lot of dough, mm -hmm. a lot of crust, which is my favorite. Mm -hmm. In fact, when I get bread, a lot of times I eat all the crust and leave the inside. That's not easy. So this morning I had a little toast and I ate all of the crust on the outside of the toast and I left the inside. <laughs> So anyway, I like it because it's not very doughy, so I think mm -hmm. it's perfect for sandwiches. Wow. Well, see, something I did not know. Here's something else I did not know. Oh. I did not know that you were actually born in Italy. A lot of people don't know that. I don't know why I keep saying that I'm born in Rome. I moved to the States when I was eight. Because I don't have an accent, mm -hmm. I think that it doesn't stick. How did you end up without an accent? Because a lot of people I know who started in a foreign country and leave. But how old know, were they? Well, I, I know some folks who are fairly young. And I, still, was, I was eight. Maybe that's and I lost it. I Boom, lost all the like Well, because when you go to grade school, grammar school in mm -hmm. the States, you end up assimilating. And so, no. But my parents yeah. still have an accent. Everybody else who came here, I think the, the cutoff age is like 18 to 20. If mm -hmm. you come here between 
Anytime after 18 or 20 years old, the accent sticks. But anything before, they say you can get rid of it. I've done a really good job. You have. At faking that I'm American. Well, no, I just kidding. We see you as American because you, I mean, it seems like ever since the Food Network has been on, you have been part of the Food Network. Well, not that long. I know, but. I'm not as old as some of them. No, but you are. I've been there a long time. Now it's Every probably. Day Italian is, is like a staple. Yeah, it's like, what, 16 something years? Does that, does that seem strange to you that yes. it's been 16 years? Yes, and when I look at. It's been more than. Footage from then to mm -hmm. now, I'm yeah. like. Oh, wow. Did you appreciate just what you had achieved that early on? There was no roadmap at that mm -hmm. time. This, this is all, as you know well, the love of food is and cooking in this way is a whole new adventure. Right. It didn't exist before. You know, people who did what I did for a living, they sort of were in kitchens. Nobody really saw them, sure. right? Yeah. Today, look at, we're making sandwiches yeah. with like ingredients that didn't exist when I moved to the States. There was no mortadella. There was no good prosciutto. There was no good salami. Pancetta did, didn't exist. My parents were importing this stuff. Nowadays, you find a plethora. You find a foie plethora. gras. You find all you sorts of- You get to use words like plethora. And lovely parmigiano that didn't exist either. No. So we've you, come a fact, long way. For the longest time, I always thought parmesan cheese was in that green can that you yeah, should Because for the longest time, that was parmesan cheese until they finally started importing it because people loved Italian food. And I think, I think Italian food is one of those cuisines that I don't think people associate I think they think it's American food. Well, let me ask you, if you weren't doing Italian food, which you are the master of, what cuisine would you be most drawn to? Uh, Asian. Really? Mm -hmm. Well, especially Japanese, because I find that it's it's very pretty. Mm -hmm. I like things that are pretty. They yes. come in pretty packages. They're dainty. They're delicate. And I think that um, it's like eating a little jewel. Like when you eat a piece of sushi, it's like mm. eating a jewel, right? Mm. I mean, think about the way it's wrapped, the way it's cut, all the little specks of different colors inside. The facets. Yeah, it's, it's stunning. And so to me, that would be what I would be doing. I thought you were gonna ask me a different question, but yes. See, you never know. No, That's... I thought you were gonna ask me what I would do if I wasn't cooking, and then I realized okay, it's well, not what he's asking well, me. Well, what would you be doing if you weren't cooking? Something with a lot of adrenaline, like be a spy, Ooh. or be a race car driver. No, wait, let's, <laughs> wait, 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 let's go back to the first. You wanted to, you want to be a spy? I think it's cool. You know what, I could. Living on the edge, knowing all these secrets and the adrenaline rush of it all, it's pretty cool. I could, I could see you as a Come spy. on, Al. I could. You've got that kind of Boris and Natasha thing. I could be your Boris to your Natasha. Biggest culinary influence? So I would say that it's mostly my family. Mm -hmm. Mostly. I mean, obviously, growing up, I watched the Galley Thing go May, Julia Child, all of those people, but I think that my aunt is one of the biggest influences in my life. Mm -hmm. My grandfather, too, but I only spent X amount of time with him, where my aunt, I've spent a lot more time in the, cook, in the kitchen cooking with her and traveling and exploring new foods and coming up with recipes on the spot in these exotic places. And so I think she's sort of my, you know, she never had any children. Mm -hmm. She is 
worked and make movies her whole life. She started when she was 18. And she's made a, you know, she's become uber successful at it. And I feel like she's sort of the person I look up to and the one that I got the most inspiration because she loves food as much as I do. Well, you know, it's interesting you say that, I think, because there's a whole generation that you are the most famous De Laurentiis in America. I'm serious. Yeah, you can't say that too loud. Well, the uh, rest no, of the De Laurentiis will I not like that. that. I understand we that. We try to keep it all in perspective. But I'm telling you, for a wide swath of this country, you are the most famous De Laurentiis. But for those of us of a certain age, and in a knowledge of, of this business, your family is a big Hollywood dynasty. Yes. Was there ever a point where you thought of going into the family business as opposed to, you know, forging your own your own pathway? I did go into the family business before I did this. I, so it's it's a rite of passage mm -hmm. for in my family and everybody does some kind of job in the family business. Before I went to college because for my family college, you know, in Europe at least in the old days, not anymore. College was you know, it was an icing on the cake. It was mm -hmm. not necessary, especially right. if you had a family business. Sure. You just went straight into the family business. And so, me being a female, mm -hmm. you know, my family was like, well, why don't you just work on a movie, figure out what part of a movie, what what, what role you want to play. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, not necessarily, when I say role, I don't mean acting so much as mm -hmm. whatever, what wardrobe, job? props, whatever it producing, might be. Producing, directing. whatever. So I did a couple of different jobs on a couple of different movies. I even did a little, a little acting, and I realized I don't really like it. I really love to cook. I know that doesn't that doesn't sound realistic at the time, mm -hmm. because it were mostly men in kitchens, right? And it was sort of manual labor. And my family was like, "You're little. You're not strong. What the hell are you gonna do? They're gonna eat you alive." It's like, but that's what I like to do. So if I can't do that, then I find something else to do. I didn't like movie business, but I did do it. Mm -hmm. And I realized I was not a good actress, and. I didn't enjoy the hours and I didn't enjoy moving locations all the time and you would think that I wouldn't like to travel even though that's all I do these days. And now all I do is stand in front of a camera. All the things I didn't like that I wanted to do in food because I thought that I could be artistic but be behind mm -hmm. sort of, I didn't end up doing it. I ended up full circle right back where I didn't want to be. But, but in a different yes. milieu. Yes, but with, with all of these things and these things make me feel very comfortable. So mm -hmm. in this vein, I'm very comfortable. And on camera. Yes, but I have this. Between me your, and the camera, there's all of this. Your co-stars. My co-stars are so colorful and quite delightful, and in a moment of panic, I can just put something in my mouth. Food in my mouth. Sorry, I didn't complete the sentence or the thought very well, but I meant any of these pieces of food. What's your favorite meat? Is this mortadella? Yes. Not bologna, mm -hmm. but mortadella. When I was a kid, and I would show up with this, everybody thought it was bologna. Have you ever had just straight mort mortadella? I it's don't the, think I have. Mm, you should try it. It's the first thing I have when I land in Rome. That on white pizza. Now, what are the white specks? Fat. There you go. So usually it's seasoned with mm -hmm. black pepper and pistachios. Mm -hmm. oh, it's wow. quite delicious. Yeah. We're going to do a little bit of pesto. Pesto is sort of like my mayo. Oh, that's interesting. Well, it's a fat. It's a fat, yeah. 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 It's a tangy fat. Here, I'm going to give you some. And then I put a little mortadella on top. I'm a pretty simplistic person mm -hmm. when it comes to sandwiches. And you have to remember that Italians don't eat a ton of sandwiches. We eat panini, but they're usually not even a lunch item. They're sort of a snack. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so then I put a piece of fresh mozzarella, and we have, I'm gonna put a little bit of salt. You know what else you could put is really yummy. Have you ever had fried capers? You know, I'm not a big caper person, but I've never had fried capers. Okay, well, I fry my capers. So we're talking about the meat of your career, or let's let, let's widen. Out. Has there been a, a setback in your life that you know that you, you've had to deal with? Yeah, I think divorce. Yeah. Yeah. I was married for like I don't know 12 years, but I was with Jade's dad for 25. Mm -hmm. So I was 18, and then at 40 something, I'm like, oh, hmm. Now what? Mm -hmm. Now what do I do? And plus, my whole life, I think when you're with some, how long have you been with? Uh, tw it'll be 23 years. Okay, so when you're with somebody for 20 some years, mm -hmm. your identity becomes, you, it's a joint identity in a yeah. way. Maybe not you and Deborah because you have very strong careers on your own, but most couples and all your friends, everything mm, is sure. sort of oh, intertwined. Sure, part, your life yeah. is intertwined. I mean, it's so funny that you say that because, when I, I mean, I was sorry, sorry to hear you, know, you guys. Had, had yeah, I know. Up, but, but it never, it, not for a moment, changed how I 
feel about you, or either professionally or personally. But I'm in a field mm -hmm. that's a lot about family. Right. My whole, my whole career is based on family. Not that being married was the only family. Right, right. But I think for me, what I realized was my identity was intertwined with his. Ah. And I defined myself by certain things. And, and being married or a wife was one of those things. Right. I spent so much time curating that relationship. Now I gotta figure out who I am. And I'm also 25 years older. Yeah, I didn't think of it. That and a way. single mother. Yeah. And I work full time. And I think that society can be tougher on women than men. Yeah. I yeah. think men can come and go and do different things in their life, and I think women, we, we hold them to a different standard. It's, it's actually you. made me more of a, let's say, real human being. Yeah. I am not as perfect as everybody would like to think that I am. Maybe sometimes it takes something like this yeah. to realize how appreciated you are. Probably. And probably I think that's what milestones in our lives are. I think that the other one was my brother's death at a very young age. Mm -hmm. I was already doing Food Network, but it was very early stages. And I remember with him and him dying literally in my arms and my sister's arms and realizing, holy cow, he just turned 30. Life is short. I better get on it. Yeah. And I think that's when I realized, okay, I got to focus my attention, figure out what the hell I'm doing and make sure I do it because it's fleeting. So I think things like that mm -hmm. really change your perspective and they're important. Who are some of the chefs that helped you succeed? When I was looking um, and working on opening Jada in Las Vegas, um, I turned to Bobby Flay a lot yeah. because he'd had a 15 year relationship with them already. And he went through, he just helped me with everything that came down to understanding what this partnership with Caesars Palace would be, what the pitfalls were, what I had to be aware of, sticking to my guns. I'd never done this before. I went from zero restaurants to 275 seat restaurant in the busiest corner in Las Vegas and so I was terrified and so I think for me he was one of the people who guided me mm -hmm. sort of and really helped me day and night gave me his lawyers like really was there to walk me through it mm -hmm. so he was my biggest champion I think in that realm is there one question you you're that everybody asks that you're tired of yes What's that? how could I be so thin and eat so much pasta never trust a skinny chef if I have to hear that I mean my entire life first thing out of people's mouth is, how do you stay like that and eat all that pasta? I'm like, I don't eat all the pasta. I eat a couple bites of pasta, I don't eat all of it. I eat a little bit of chocolate, I eat a little bit of things. I don't eat an entire platter full of anything. But it's like, it, you know, I think that in Europe, we know how to eat yeah. a little bit of everything. Sure. We drink a little bit, like. Well, the, our portions, the portions are so much smaller. Yes, but in America, the portions are ginormous. So no one has learned to eat small amounts of food. Mm -hmm. We've grown up with like giant meat Super size. Everything is all you can eat and super size. Yeah. That's all we know. And that is also part of the culture because all these immigrants came here. And the, a success story in America is the more food you have, yep. the more money you have. Yeah. So the bigger the meatballs, the richer you are. Yeah. And that's what people wanted. And so I didn't grow up like that. So to me, it's not that strange. You know, it's so funny you say that because to my my grandmother, my dad's mother's way of thinking, you were healthy and you were prosperous if you were a little heavier. Of course. And so when but she that was Deborah, the beauty. She's like, oh, Stupid. child, you gotta you gotta gain weight. Gotta, and how many mothers? On your bones. How many mothers say about their sons, hey, if if your husband is super thin, he's certainly not happy. Fat husband is a happy husband. Well, then I should have been really happy. You are.
the difference between mozzarella and burrata? Well, burrata is different because burrata has like a shell on the outside and it's buttery, so it's a different texture on the inside. It's the churning process that makes it different. It's much creamier on the inside. And it's definitely, like for instance, my daughter doesn't want to touch it. Because it's really? just, it's too wet, it's too creamy, it's too milky. You mentioned Jade, who's, who's nine, which is hard to believe. Ten. Jade, ten. is ten years old, double digits. You saw her when she was like an infant on the counter. She was a peanut. I mean, how has she changed your life? I think that Jade makes me enjoy the little things in this life. And I think that all children do that. They see things, they get more excited about things, and you forget. You know, we realize as we get older, we get jaded by experiences. No pun intended. Yes. And I think that kids sort of get excited about things that you forget should excite you. Yeah, secret to your success, what, if, if, there, if you could boil it down. I think that the secret to my success is hard work, mm -hmm. good time, I mean, timing, because I think you could be the most talented person in the world, but if the timing isn't right, it probably won't work out. I think that everybody was ready at the time that I came out to make food at home. 9-11 right. changed all our perspectives on our families, and I came up right after that. And I think after 9-11, people felt like, I want to stay home. Yeah. I want to invite people over. But in order to do that, I need to learn to cook. And so they looked wherever they could to find a way to make it easy for them to entertain at home and bring their loved ones in. And I think it's a combo of all those things. And also because I've streamlined my perspective. Mm -hmm. When you think of me, you think of... Italian. Yeah. yeah. But California Italian. Maybe yeah. a little bit lighter than, than traditional Italian-American yeah. food. And mm -hmm. I think that's the key. The key is to figure out what it is you like to do and really, like, streamline it. Have something that defines you. Yes, and streamline it. You, you've been so instrumental and so generous with your time mentoring other women in this business, especially in the hashtag Me Too era. What, what's a, your advice to, to women who are looking to enter this, this end of the business? A lot has happened, and I think that you, you gotta be strong, and you gotta stick to your guns, and you gotta know who you are, and lean on the people around you that you trust to help you get through any hardships. We're all gonna have them. You can't go through life thinking that you're never gonna encounter a hardship. Mm -hmm. Life is about the ups and the downs, and you have to just learn to dodge them mm -hmm. and do the best you can and really rely on your friends and family to help you through it and to give you advice and guidance. To top it off, we are top three things. Top three Food Network shows other than your own. Oh, what? Oh, other than anything I'm in, right? Okay, beat Bobby Flay. Okay. Barefoot Contessa. Yes. And Chopped. All right, there you go. Good. Now. Oh, finally. Finally. Cheers. Cheers. Okay, tell me if you like it. It's not going to be like a grilled cheese, but. But it's close. It could be good. Mm. Oh, that's crunchy. That's good. What do you have still left you want to accomplish? I'd like to open some restaurants in other parts of the world. Ooh. Outside the U.S. Want to come visit me? I will definitely come visit you. Here yeah. you go. Look for a Jada, a Jada restaurant coming to a country near you anytime soon. That's cold cuts. That's a take. That's a wrap. Mm. Take off the. What is the tie doing? It's on? I thought a, this was it, casual. It, this is sound. casual for me. This is casual because you loosen I'm the not tie wearing, a minute. Exactly. It's it's hip. It's hipster.
So if your go-to dinner night after night after night is pasta, we got some help for you. I think this is help just for me. We have Giada De La Rentas. Nobody cooks pasta like her. She's mm -hmm. been cooking up a storm thanks to her at-home blog, Jotsi. Hi, Giada. Hi, guys. How are you? Look how cute you are in your kitchen. Look at you. Hi. Hi. <laughs> how, how's quarantine life at that house? Um, it's been long. I'll say that. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but actually it hasn't been, it hasn't been bad. You know, I was, I was just saying to a friend the other day that I know more about what my daughter's doing day in and day out every single moment of the day than I ever did before. And I didn't even know it. And so it's, um, homeschooling is interesting. I've sort of tried to perfect my TikTok dances because my daughter's had her 12th birthday during quarantine and that is all she wanted. And she wanted me to get better at it. So I've been doing that. And Obviously, lots of cooking. So lots what have been your meals. favorite meals? What have been your go-tos during this time? Chocolate chip banana bread, which I think everybody has been making a ton of banana bread. Yeah. And um, the special pasta that happens to be Jade's favorite that has um, garlic, olive oil, peas, and prosciutto. So not we, want to get, we, we want to get to the recipe, but I want to ask, I know your family, you have fa some family members in Italy, and I was thinking, I'm wondering how they're doing. So my mom lives in Italy, in Rome, actually, in the center. Um, and it's been, it's been really interesting. It was really rough at the beginning. So we talked to her every day. We would eat meals together over Zoom. I would have oh. breakfast, she would have dinner, because oh. we're so many hours apart. And I think that talking to us regularly, I was, I was noticing, too, that I talked to my mom every single day in a way that I didn't before. I yes. would talk to her once a week. So I, I think it's really helped us con communicate and connect as human beings in a way that maybe we didn't even realize we weren't doing. Yeah, that's yeah. so interesting. I think even though we're far apart, we're still connected. And I think one way that we are trying to connect, or at least I am in this household, is by meals around the table. I think more people are sitting down and eating than before, probably. So will you make this, this delicious pasta for us? <laughs> I want to eat sure. it. So prosciutto, can you see it? Yes. yes. I'll pull it up in a second. I want to throw my pasta, otherwise. You can do whatever pasta you want, obviously. Um, I'm doing a little bit of a, a fusillo, like a little, a large fusilli. But that's my um, pancetta. Can you see it? Yeah, so why do you cook that? Why do you cook that instead of just putting it in? Because, because I want it crispy. It's the topping, it's like the garnish. So I want yeah. it to be nice and crispy, just like crispy bacon, like bacon bits you would put on a salad. You don't want yeah. it to be slim. It's kind of no, not that right. tasty. Right? Definitely <laughs> not that you said it that way. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So you could do it in a pan or you could do it in the oven. Either way works. It just gets okay. all crispy. And it's kind of like bacon. So you could use bacon here if you prefer. And then you just dump a bunch of um, olive oil and garlic. It's so funny mm. doing it this way. By the way, it's um, fascinating. What have, you guys, what have you guys been cooking? Nothing. I've been cooking actually a three pasta a three dish pasta recipe like base they put it on today.com and it's what basically it? a cacio wait cacio y pepe how that Brava! wow said it really nicely i what, did what, what did she say what was that cacio y pepe <laughs> oh wow so um cacio do you know what it is it cacio is pepper and and well pe pepe, pepe is pepper, pepper. what's cacio? <laughs> cheese chicken yes but do you know what oh. kind of cheese Cacio. <laughs> no. What is it? What is it? Um, Par I know, Parmesan. It's pecorino. Oh, pecorino. Okay. Yeah. So we haven't had pecorino. Oh, I just used Parmesan. Okay, so you melt some butter. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> All right, so you just brown the, um, the garlic a little bit, just till oh, it's okay. nice and fragrant. Then you add <laughs> peas, anybody? Peas, yes, peas. peas. Yes. Okay. Can you so use peas? Because peas? that's all we got. Yeah. yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, frozen beef. Just try to defrost them if you can, you know? Otherwise, mm -hmm. put a little bit more water in here, but not really that big a deal. And <laughs> a little bit of red pepper flakes. I don't put a lot because Jade isn't a big fan of red pepper flakes, but a little bit is really nice. It adds a little warmth. And you just kind of warm through the, the peas and the garlic together. Mm. And then you dump the pasta when it's ready. Let's see here. Jada, first of all, as you put that pasta in, I know it's delicious because you made it. You're going to be doing a show from your house 
which I have to say, watching you cook like this is fascinating to me. Yes. You're moving the camera around, doing your own thing. Like this is going to be, is it, where you, where's this show going to, going to live? Food Network. On the it's Food Network. Show, yeah. What's it I called? Can't this shoot, I can't shoot from a studio, so I'm shooting from my house. By awesome. the way, with Jay doing so, the dishes, it should be funny. It's, it's mesmerizing watching yeah, is that you cook like this. cheese you just put in there? <laughs> yes, <laughs> I pre-grated my Parmesan cheese. Okay, myself. she put it in. So basically, for let's see it. No, oh. this is Pagnigiano. Oh, is Pecorino. So just toss it together. That's it, and a little pasta water here. By the way, pasta water is important. Jada, yeah. for this recipe and all of Jada's recipes, go to today.com slash food. Shama Bailey has become one of America's most distinguished chefs. She's working in kitchens from France to right here in New York City, but it was her love of Southern cooking that lured her back to the South. We're going to cook with her in a minute, but first, a look at her culinary journey. All these breakfast items are real improvement. Like, they really kind of boost up the menu in a really good way. And it's so happy. Mashama Bailey has much to be happy about these days. At 48, Chef Bailey's career is booming, a double James Beard award winner, including Outstanding Chef. Her debut restaurant, The Gray, in Savannah, Georgia, is a destination, and she recently opened two more eateries in Austin, Texas. We connected with this city just like we connected with Savannah. Austin was a good fit. A New York City girl who spent her formative years in Georgia. Chef Bailey is a French-trained chef who leans hard into her Southern roots. My mom is Southern and spent a lot of summers there. I've been pretending to be Southern all my life, you know? I just love, I love the camaraderie of the South. I love my family's history and I love how it shines through in food. And it was that time spent in her grandmother's kitchen which made Chef Bailey fall in love with cooking. She could turn something out of nothing. She always had a pot on the stove. It came from so much love, and it didn't really come from like this an abundance of having. It was like what she had, she shared. And I really tried to embody that. After an internship in France and a short stint as a personal chef, she landed a sous chef position in New York City. My most transformative time, me becoming serious about this profession, was my time at Prune. I think working for Gabrielle Hamilton was very eye-opening. Her food was very comforting, very classic. And I thought that I was becoming not only a better chef in that environment, but a better person. And in a male-dominated field, it was mostly women who impacted Chef Bailey's culinary journey until she partnered with Jono Morisano in The Gray. When I met Jono, it was kind of serendipitous. It was like, oh wait, I lived in Savannah as a kid. I want to move to the South. I want to be an executive chef at a restaurant. Okay, let's go see what this is about. But the location Jono chose for their joint venture gave Chef Bailey some pause. I've never seen a Jim Crow era bus station before. It was segregated, it has a dark history, but me standing in the segregated waiting room for colored people, I felt like there was some good vibrations in that space and I felt like I was gonna do good things there and I wanted to try. They chronicled that journey together in their memoir, Black, White and the Gray, the story of an unexpected friendship and a beloved restaurant. Ticket, order fire, meatball, clam, and a fish toast. And that beloved restaurant, featured in Netflix's Chef's Table, continues to delight diners with fresh southern ingredients along with special touches from Chef Bailey's childhood. After the guests have dinner, we clear their plates and we give them a thrill. Locals would come in and be like, what? You know what a thrill is, what? That made me feel good because they understand that I have roots here. 
that's a little part of my history on the plate. Oh my okay. God, we're so excited that you're here. I'm just so in awe of what you've what you've created. Um, it's like roots and wings, man. You have it all. Yep. You said your mom didn't want you to become a chef initially. No, or my father. They yeah. both thought that it was domesticated positions, oh. and they just felt like I was going to be broke for the rest of my life. So, <laughs> so now, <laughs> now, what do they think? They think uh, they they're very proud. Oh. Very proud. You know, I, I, what I love is that you're what. First of all, you brought us these thrills, yeah. which we want, yep, but yep, you yep. learned all of. Your your love of cooking from your grandma. Yeah. Yeah, because it was you know we didn't mm. have much oh and we um, well let me tell you what a thrill. Well, is. Yes, tell us. So a thrill is something that women from the neighborhoods in Savannah mm. would make for the children of the neighborhoods in Savannah and usually made of very inexpensive ingredients like Kool Aid, sugar, water, yeah. maybe like. If you spent 25 cent on a thrill instead of 10 cent, mm -hmm. then you would have fruit cocktail in it or something uh -huh. like a nice surprise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But it was, I mean, the Savannah summers are brutal yeah. and they last forever. And so it's really nice mm -hmm. in the summertime when mm -hmm. the humidity is high and the heat is high that you can actually have something to cool so you what, off. What's in this one? That's a grapefruit, pink grapefruit it's thrill. Delicious. So it's delicious. Um, some grapefruit juice, and um, this is not, we don't do Kool Aid at the restaurant, <laughs> just done. to clarify. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, we had a feeling you did. You're a James Bond wedding chef. So it's just grapefruit juice, a little bit of syrup, uh, simple syrup, sugar and water, and um, some ginger. <laughs> food from oh boys to beignets and every single thing in between. Yeah, and of course one of the most legendary restaurants here is Commander's Palace. This woman right here, Meg Bickford, is the executive chef who is not only creating unforgettable food, but lasting memories. Take a look. <laughs> only in New Orleans is your meal accompanied by a three-piece band and a second line through the restaurant. Or at least that's the tradition at world famous Commander's Palace. Opened in 1893, it's a New Orleans institution. Chefs from Paul Prudhomme to Imre Lagasse have created staples in the kitchen. But now there's a new top chef at the helm. That's Stephanie Chandelier, Eggs Benedict. Meg Bickford made history in 2020 when she was named the first female executive chef of Commander's after starting her culinary journey back there in 2008. I started as a garmage cook. Um, I was working hot apps and salads um, straight out of culinary school. And food has always been her biggest motivation. I grew up in a big South Louisiana family. My family, we grieved over food, we celebrated over food. I just knew that that needed to be a big part of my life. So beautiful. Her culinary style is inspired by the rich culture around her. Louisiana is a sportsman's paradise, right? So what we have access to, produce and seafood and game, is kind of unmatched. We in this industry are so lucky to be here because the city celebrates what we do just so wholeheartedly. 
the same way that the city celebrates music. Set her aside on this pickup. Every day, Chef Meg brings her leadership skills to the table. This restaurant is a place of learning. Hey, hey Chef, what can I do for you? Chef Meg has this kind of grit in her hustle. She listens to her team. She celebrates their, their accomplishments. But if she sees a deficiency, she's going to nurture that. She's really one of the best role models that I could have ever asked for. Um, she's always encouraging me to uh, try new things and to just do better. And it really is a recipe for success. I want to create a memory for someone that when they think about it or they smell bread pudding, it brings them here. They could just be in this moment and be here and let us worry about everything else. And you just sit and enjoy. Um, can we just toast? Royalty! Can we toast? It's about time. The first <laughs> female chef of gotta Commanders. Do you made this cocktail for us. I what did. Is, what is this called, This Meg? is the Tequila Mockingbird number two, right? Okay. So oh. super simple but fantastic. We like that pun. And great for this kind of weather. Cheers to you. Mm. Thank mm. you, ladies. Oh my God, Tequila, Meg. Tequila, limoncello, a little Ooh. Angostura bitters. Oh. Come on. Let's put this down so you know, can get to like work. You know I like my big girl cocktails, right? That's a big I girl do, cocktail. I do, I do. All right, what are you cooking up for us, Meg? So we're going to do uh, Louis Armstrong eggs. So okay. this is one of my all-time favorites brunch dishes at Commander's. Looks like you put the Trinity in there. Is we that put right? Trinity in there, of right. course. All great things start with that. Um, we're going in with some garlic. That's a lot. Get it in, is. Girl. Going in with jalapeno, a lot again. And we're going to cook all this down until it's opaque, right? So okay. a little translucent. Okay. Then we're going to add one of my favorite ingredients to our red beans. What? Pickled pork. Ooh, How do you so pickle it? We don't know what pickled pork <laughs> means. So it's kind of like salted pork, okay? okay? So it's going to season a lot of this pot. So we're not going to actually season our beans until they're nice and tender. I'll help you stir. Thank you. Into that go our red beans. So you, those are uncooked. You just plop them in. Right? You I soaked them overnight. Yeah, exactly so right. Done. So they don't take, you know, all day to cook. What's but going they will on with that broth? What is that? Ooh. That's some chicken stock, chicken right? Stock. So we're building lots of flavors Look here with our oh. trinity, with our garlic, with our jalapenos, our chicken stock, our pickled pork. We're going to let this cook for hours and hours and hours. Hours. Right? Okay. So okay. we're moving on. Bye. So we so have. Here. What's in there? This is a dirty rice cake. So we've got Trinity, again, lots of garlic, house made smoked on Dewey sausage, and our po Louisiana popcorn rice. Okay? Yes. Form that into a cake. We're going to go over here. Wait, what, what are you putting that? on there? This is our red beans. Oh. We pureed them super, super look at that. smooth. Amazing. Right? So look they're nice and it. velvety. Wait, look what's happening. Yes. Look at right? that, Jenny. Yes. Are yes. you seeing it? And this is rice. taking too long, so we're going to move on. Okay. We've got our beautiful crispy rice cake Ooh. here. Now, you said there's an egg. What's happening? There's the poached egg. So you poached it. It's brunch, honey. We're all about the Girl. eggs. Now, Same what's this delicious sauce on top? Yeah. So over here, we have mm, um, that. Hollandaise. hollandaise. Look, look, look. Our hollandaise is studded with smoky house-made mm. tasso. Mm. Here, we'll share. You want to share? Yeah, let's share. And we're going to do some... Wait, is there more? Beautiful green onions right Come on, on top. Meg. Come on. Meg, this is Meg. delicious. Good, right? Meg. Mm. Oh my God. I'm mm. so glad y'all mm. enjoy it. I mean, mm. that is amazing. Oh my. The best part about brunch at Commanders, yeah. outside of the food and the cocktails and the service and all the environment, is the second line. But you can't do it without your own second line umbrella. Oh my Wait, gosh. No. What? Wait. So, no, you didn't. Jenna! Uh -huh. Oh my God. I've always wanted Wait. one of these. Come on. Thank you, Meg. Oda. Are you kidding? <laughs> Oh my God! Personal. Line we style. love you, man. Thank you, Meg. We and to love get you. These delicious recipes. Head to day.com/slash food. Okay, you know that in that moment, Hoda, where you take a bite of mm, something mm -hmm, so delicious, mm. you can actually taste the love that went into it. Well, that is the kind of food that Harlem chef Tammy Treadwell makes, and her cooking is just part of what draws the crowds in. Take a look. That's love. Wait till you taste that. Right in the heart of Harlem in a 15 square foot food truck. I got four po boys here. Yes, that's me. You'll find po boys, shrimp and grits, and a whole lot of good vibes. I tell people all the time on my corner on 125th Street, there's nothing but love. Love and Harlem are two things that are part of Chef Tammy Treadwell's DNA. In this neighborhood that's in every part of who you are. We are sitting in the Harlem Rose Garden. This is like so surreal because I've often said I'm that flower or that rose that will break through the concrete. No matter what you pour on me, I'm gonna emerge stronger and stronger. 
Throughout Tammy's sometimes challenging life, food has been what she calls her love language. I cannot talk about food without talking about my grandmother because her spirit is with me everywhere I go. I got my love of cooking from hanging around in the kitchen with her, not wanting to go outside because she was cooking and I wanted to be first in line to get the plate. There was a lot of people in my house. After surviving cancer and getting laid off from her job, Tammy felt a calling to feed people. I'm taking care of all the flavors. In 2016, she broke through the male-dominated food truck industry and opened Harlem Seafood Soul. The idea that you had, like, all the things you had to overcome in your life. At your core, are you an optimist? Unbelievably. We live in a world of possibilities. I'll show you it can be done. Then in March of 2020, the unthinkable happened. Tammy was forced to shut her truck down. Then her husband, Greg, passed away from COVID. What did you lose that day? I lost my best friend. We had 38 amazing years mm -hmm. together. One thing I know for sure is that man loved me. I have never had a doubt that his love is real. There's a period in between fetal position mm -hmm. and standing up. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And there's mm -hmm. something that happens in that moment where it changes. What made you say, it's time to get out from under these covers? Mm -hmm. I started seeing the faces of the people in my family. They were looking at me for the first time like they were very concerned. Every time I would hit a wall emotionally, or I felt like, you know, I'm, today, I, did, today's not the day, I'm gonna lay back down today. Mm -hmm. And my granddaughter would say to me, Grandma, when are you going to cook for the people again? This time I looked at her like, hmm, you know, that's a good question. You know what we love about you is that you're not only sharing your love through your food, you're also sharing your love through helping others. Mm -hmm. That was the only motivation I had to cook, was to do something for someone else. I had to put my grief on the mm -hmm. side and move forward, mm. and that's what I did. When when the doors opened, <laughs> and did you wonder, are they gonna remember me? Yeah, I stood there for a little while like, okay, <laughs> I know y'all smell me. <laughs> <laughs> I literally turned around um, to, I guess, stir the grits or do something, and when I turned back around, there was a line yeah. here. Mm. There was a line, oh. and there had to be, you know, at least a dozen people standing yes. in line, and they were waiting for me, <laughs> and they were smiling, and they were like, where you been? Oh. And we're glad to see you back here. Harlem is a village. That's how I was always raised to believe. There's a lot of love in this life. Mm. Just wait till you get the experience. We let's go. All right. Yes, let's go. Today, just shy of 60 and after a lifetime of hardship, Chef Tammy says she's in her prime and she'll remain on that corner as long as the community allows her to stay. Jenna, I'm gonna give you a little tip. Thank you. Okay, ready? I have worked so hard for so many years and now I get to do what makes me happy. Is she, she's amazing. We love her so much.
Is it difficult to, to make this walk? One block is over three years of work and grace. This moment for Martha Gilreath has been years in the making. Where did you live? Uh, right on that side, right by these columns is where I'd usually stay. So this was your roof? It's dark and it's kind of chilly and it's, it's dismal. After years of addiction and homelessness, Martha is finding gratitude in this second chance. It's surreal. A lot of it was really, really rough and ugly, and it just gets more beautiful every day now. My childhood was unbelievable, and I have five siblings. My parents have been married 43 years. We always had fun, and there was so much love. Someone hearing that would wonder, what happened? I thought people that were alcoholics or addicts came from a certain background. Girls like me who went to Cotillion and went to a good high school don't end up like that, and the truth is, this thing that I have, it, it doesn't care. It started, someone had some cocaine in a party, and I thought, well, this, this is fun, and it was scary, and it was exciting. Eventually, that progression looks like for me going to harder drugs and violence and homelessness and jails and hospitals. I was in active addiction for 16 years. And at some point, you wake up and it, living under the bridge. It's the scariest, because you're never safe. When did you make that decision where I'm willing to put in that work? I'm gonna turn it around. I think that the willingness to put in the work and then a moment of grace have to align. I called my friend, Jesse, and I asked her if I could come home. I cannot live like this anymore. In December of 2019, Martha entered into a recovery center in Charleston, South Carolina, and that's where everything changed. Food for so long for a lot of us is survival and so when people start to get sober and they start to enjoy food again there was a kid there turning 21 in rehab someone had told me that he loved cheesecake loved cheesecake so like, i'll make a cheesecake you know I, I can figure that out and then i see him with his new friends and he is smiling after watching this kid enjoy the cake i I'd never had any direction. I'd never followed anything through. And I said, I'm going to go to culinary school. So Martha returned to New Orleans in September of 2020 and received a scholarship to Noki, the New Orleans Culinary and Hospitality Institute, just one block from where she once lived underneath the bridge. It was very scary, but also it required all of the same things that sobriety requires of me, following direction, patience, taking your time, doing it someone else's way. And it was through baking where Martha thrived. Defying all odds, she graduated as valedictorian of her class. When you look at, at who she's become, in the kitchen and out, what do you think? Pride. I'm really, really proud of her and really excited for her and not too surprised, honestly. It's everything that's inside of her that, that's come <laughs> out. In the years since graduation, Martha has become an executive chef at a local restaurant and has started her own pop-up bakery called Nolita. We're gonna do a play on a morning roll. Yeah. Beautiful color, oh, and it's really goodness. fragrant. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's amazing. And one of the chefs that has always inspired Martha is restaurateur and Food Network host, Guy Fieri. He's about bringing joy. Mm -hmm. He wants to make people's experiences and lives better all around food. And Guy had a special message for Martha. Chef Martha, your buddy Guy Fietti here. You are a warrior. You have been through it all. And to just think that I make you happy and I make you smile, that you love food and enjoy it the way I do. Well, my sister from another mister, I look forward to meeting you. I make it through New Orleans. I'm coming to Nolita. I'll be looking for you. Whoo. <laughs> A lot of surreal things have happened to me lately, but that's at the top of the list. <laughs> Whew. Thank you for that. What's next for you? I don't know. And I think that's the exciting part. I, you know, one day, I hope Nolita becomes brick and mortar. What food does for us is its service to making memories. And so if someone could come in Nolita and then 10 years from then say, oh, that's where my dad used to take me. I just want keep being hopeful and grateful. If there are any parents watching, I just want them to know that their babies can still come home. There is always hope.
It's a sisterhood of restaurants with a purpose, run by young women finding inspiration in their own stories. Chef Zyla Cadillo taps into her Mexican heritage to create her cuisine. My restaurant is Etheria. It is a mezcal bar with vegan-inspired Mexican dishes. Chef Shanari Freeman leans into her southern roots for recipes. My restaurant is called Caden. It is southern soul food, plant-based focus. And Chef Amara Garib, daughter of an Ecuadorian mother and an Egyptian father, gets her inspiration from her father, who operated a pizza parlor. My restaurant is called Soda Club. It's a wine bar, and it's a plant-based uh, Italian fresh pasta. Did you catch this detail? All three skipped the animal products, but not the flavor. Look, I have to say, when you hear Italian food, when you hear Mexican food, when you hear soul food, I mean, there's a lot of cheese in those. There's a lot of meat in those. I'm Mexican. I grew up with my mom making Mexican food. How is it to make these particular types of food plant-based? For soul food, one thing you have to definitely focus on is the flavor profile. So just playing around with textures a lot, uh, different flavors, cooking techniques. I think the Italian food, you just stick with fresh pasta, you can't go wrong. Mexican people are indigenous people, and a lot of the food is from nature and from the ground. So I feel like it easily translated to being vegan. Raise your hand if you're a vegan. Okay, so Amira, you're not. What was this process like? I mean, were you like missing the cheese at all on top of a pasta or no? It's really easy to just cover something in cheese and it's delicious. <laughs> and then it tastes good. <laughs> yeah. It was more challenging because I was just trying to find substitutes to make it more traditional, but not traditional at the same time. We yeah. also have a group chat where one of us will be like, this is a whack cheese, don't use it, or this yeah. is a really good one, you should try it out, <laughs> stuff like that. You're all under 30 and you have the titles of executive chef at restaurants in New York City. I mean, how cool is that? It's pretty cool. <laughs> <Same>. <laughs> How's this been to go through together? Better than going alone. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's true. Because we're able to learn a lot from each other mm -hmm. um, and also learn a lot about ourselves, how we cook, and how to run restaurants. Their boss had full faith they could do just that. Ravi DeRossi, founder and CEO of Overthrow Hospitality, who owns all the restaurants, decided to give them a shot at starting their own culinary concepts when they were working at the company in different positions. Was it this purposeful decision to give three women of color this opportunity to be executive chefs of New York City restaurants? I think subconsciously intentional, mm. if that makes sense. Mm. They were already in the company and the best suited for these positions. Over 65% of our 300 some odd employees were women and people of color. So we made the very clear decision to put more people of color in places of authority. So as they're hiring, they see through the lens of their selves. Of course, a taste test had to be part of this assignment to see how they stand up to the real thing. First, plant-based Italian from the Soda Club. So where should I start? Definitely with the ravioli. With the ravioli, okay. That's my favorite, yeah. That is amazing. You good? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm having a moment. Next, vegan-inspired Mexican food from Eteria. The mango salsa looks delicious. It was so good. Oh my goodness. And finally, I had to try a dish getting rave reviews. Fried lasagna, a soul food favorite at Cadence. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm blown away.